Welcome everyone! Uh, the second Final Fantasy run that replaces FF8 on this stream is Final Fantasy XIII. I'm Kayarun and I have two commentators right now. Hello, I'm the Sparrow. Mm. I'm Knockfrost, you've probably seen me like <laughs> 10 minutes ago. <laughs> and uh, uh, Mr. Swansea, who just did the run before, will uh, swap in after he has dinner because he's eating right now. Yeah. Alright, um, uh, check the settings. Yeah, we're... we're yeah, uh, the only important setting is having the... The target selection on uh, from list instead of no, it's fire cursor. Yeah, from yeah, fire cursor instead of from list. Again. Yeah, yeah, I have everything. Okay. Because it makes so actually selecting enemies faster, which is pivotal <laughs> for some strats. Yeah, yeah we go uh, deeper into that during the run. Okay, we're yeah. ready. Yeah. yeah. So three, two, one, go. Yeah, so we're running this game on normal mode. The uh, PC version has an easy mode, which is also included in the Japanese console version for some reason, but not in the uh, Western release. Yeah. The easy percent run is fundamentally different and not really very popular. Everyone just runs on normal instead. Yeah. So 13, the, uh, kind of like 5, also uses the ATV system. The differences are you can only see the ATV bar for your leader, even though everyone has one, including the enemies. And um, each like the ATV bar is divided into certain segments, and as you progress through the plot, you gain more segments. So each action that you can use with your characters costs a certain amount of segments. So attack costs one if you... Input auto battle, lightning will queue in two attacks. You can also manually input two attacks on your abilities on your abilities command. And for example, blitz uh, blitz costs two segments. And this this combined with a feature that we're gonna go into later at actually um, allows you to have a lot of customization. What you want your party leader to do in a, in a fight. So this is Manosvin Warmack, it's the first fight in the run, it's not really that interesting. It's basically a <laughs> tutorial fight that teaches you, hey, you can press X to use auto battle, isn't that great? Yeah, and everyone just falls into a trap of only using auto battle, <laughs> even though auto battle sucks. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what you also just saw is uh, you can also just use segments of your ATB, you don't have to always wait until it's fully full. If you have attack, which only uses one ATB, you can also just instantly use this once one ATB bar segment is full. Sure we can get here. Yeah. yeah, and something interesting I'm doing already right at the beginning of the run is something we call the camera trick. Uh, I purposely aim the camera to the ground because that changes how some enemies will behave before I enter their specific battle zone. And for these enemies, it just lets them move over to the left side, so we have a pretty free dodge on the right side. Yeah, so this in this game, we don't have random encounters. Every single encounter is displayed on the overworld and fight o and the fight only starts on contact with uh, the party leader. Yeah, and there's set zones where these enemies can move in. You can look at the minimap, it has a certain different view once you're inside the battle zone and once you exit it, it's back to blue. That uh, essentially indicates when enemies are aggroed onto you or not. Um, so... In, the, um, in terms of the speedrun, it's obvious we obviously do not want to fight anything that we don't have to. So we are just going to try and dodge as many of these encounters as possible. Chapter one is very <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's one failed dodge already. So chapter one is very infamous because at this point you don't really have an easy way of dealing with these enemies. So we just it's a very heavy reset point. Um, just because of how many encounters there are and how easily, how oh easily they can catch you, just like that. Yeah, so what yeah that was unlucky. Yeah, these dogs are very fast, or these pantherons are very fast, but uh, the lucky thing is in FF13 you can retry fights, and if you actually pass the battle zone like we were here, you just reappear, like, at the last point where you were not inside the battle zone, and yeah. the dog basically caught us, like, at the edge of the battle zone, and we were already technically out of the battle zone, so we just get, got to skip past it. Yeah, and the reason I retry the fights is just because it's significantly quicker to, like... On some fights. Um, in Chapter 1, I might fight a few, depending on which encounter I fail, but for the most part, throughout the entire game, retrying is way faster than fighting. Yeah. Yeah, so the game gives you a tutorial on how to use uh, items. We're not. I don't think we're gonna use an item here even. No. 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 The game tells no, you to potion, yeah, but we don't potion. Yeah, the game tells you to potion on this tutorial, even though you are full HP, which makes no sense. Yeah. But 
<laughs> it's one of the many things in 13 that don't make sense. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of that. Not just gameplay-wise, but especially the it's, story. Especially plot-wise. Um, 13 also has a somewhat uh, unique mechanic that uh, hasn't existed before this game, which is called uh, the stagger bar. Yeah. Which is we can talk about it with more oh, yeah, of the, the broader the, fight. Yeah, this is also great. Uh, Sass, uh, one of the characters can like your characters cannot walk through each other. They have hitboxes. Yeah, and they can just and block you. Yeah, this 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 situation is thanks Sass. Yeah. So you can see the stagger bar for the Psycho Marauder on the top right corner of the screen, and every action will increase the stagger bar. Depending on what you're doing, it will increase more or less. Right now, because we can only use attack and blitz, they don't increase by much. Um, and uh, once an enemy is staggered, it's, uh, the stagger bar basically indicates how much damage you deal to an enemy. So right now, Kaya is dealing 207% more damage than he would normally would. A staggered enemy, um, when you um, fill the stagger bar, the, the enemy will instantly um, increase the stagger by 100. So staggering an enemy will will essentially allow you to deal a lot more damage and a staggered enemy is also much easier to interrupt. So in, mo in many, many fights we actually want to stagger enemies before we try to deal damage, but this isn't a necessity. It's just very useful in a couple of fights. There are some enemies that are so difficult to stagger that we, we, and we can just kill them without staggering them. Yeah, what you also may have, may have noticed in that fight or may not, because it's actually like really hard to see, is um, Kaya specifically did uh, like cut his strings, like his ATB strings short, um, because your uh, party attacks at different times than you do, and uh, you can basically like constantly interrupt enemies when they're staggered if you just hit them like alternatively. So that uh, boss, which is like that mini boss kind of thing that we just fought with Sass and Lightning, uh, if you just hit him at different times, he will like always stop in his tracks before he actually attacks you, because he does actually deal quite a bunch of damage. Yeah, it's very rare, but you can die to that fight. Yeah, and no one wants to ever actually potion on that fight. It's a matter of pride. Yeah. yeah. In a marathon, I very likely would still potion in that, but... So the fight that Kaya just had to clear, we call it the legendary dodge. It's one of the hardest dodges in Chapter 1 to get. In fact, it's one of the hardest dodges in the game to get, so... If you can't get it on the first try, you're not gonna get it on subsequent try, so you're just gonna have to fight it. It's not even that difficult. Yeah, so some of the enemy positions actually change on retry. So some of the dodges just become really hard or basically impossible. On retries. Um, yeah, and like Legendary Dodge, there are runners that have run this game like over 100 or 200 times and they've gotten do. the dodge like maybe twice. So yeah. this fight is also very interesting because your character moves like you can see that Snow like dodges backwards after his attack string and we're gonna abuse that here. Because even if this is a game where it's like basically ATB based, enemies can still miss you. Yeah. It's very rare, but uh, in this fight, you can either do what Kaya did, which is use a potion to face tank the second swipe, or you can manipulate Snow's jump backwards. So he... He jumps back just as the B of a yeah, swipe, so, swipe, so it swipe. misses you. Yeah, that's a general thing a lot of the characters do. After they finish their strings, they usually jump back in uh, a different looking way for the majority of them, but they usually all jump back. Yeah. You, you typically, uh, what, what uh, happens when you just potion it, your characters don't do the like flinching animation that they just did, but instead you have the potion animation, and that's actually a bit shorter. Plus yeah, no. you get back health, so. Yeah, the, the throwing an item during the fight um, roots your character to the ground more so than anything else in the game. So we actually use the potion animation in order to tank a couple of hits without having the characters flinch backwards. Yeah. Th this is another one of those fights where you're just kind of hoping he switches targets at some point. Yeah, which he's not doing right yeah. now. It's pretty um, rare. He will usually just 
go ham on Saz. It's yeah. important that you don't miss attacks here, so I will cut my strings short when I think I would miss, because it's better to cut your strings short and don't miss than to miss and don't do it. Yeah. So the important part in this is actually to hit all of your attacks. But as you can see, even here, we uh, shortly interrupted him when he charged towards Saz, because Saz hit him with an attack after he got staggered. That was so, a good fight. Yeah. That was... So far, it's been pretty, pretty clean, honestly. Yeah, and now the hardest dodge in chapter 1 after the legendary. Yeah, so in this one, you can either camera trick or not, it doesn't really matter. The thing is, it's two dogs which are fast and three aerial soldiers who are also faster than you. So you're kind of just hoping that none of them spot you until you are um, at a safe distance that you can actually run away from all of them. That looks very good. Oh, okay, well, never mind. It's never mind. <laughs> by the panther rot. <laughs> yeah, th this is also one of the fights where it's just faster to fight them than to retry it. You can retry like twice, I think, and then you would tie the fight, but even the retries are very random, so... Yeah. yeah. If you fill it, you fill it twice, it's just easier to just So fight right it. before the fight, um, Kaya picked up a chest with the um, Vital Circle, which is a weapon for Snow that... Um, um, gives him just a little bit more strength. You're only going to use it for chapter for these two chapters, chapter one and two, and because it's actually worth quite a quite a bit of money, we're gonna just sell it. Yeah. Also, you can see probably that's a lot of wow. drops. Yeah. Well, that's nice. Drops are nice because we can sell like a few extra oh, Phoenix Downs for go. like upgrades and whatnot. Or well, also nice to just have Phoenix Downs in yeah. general when you're doing a yeah. reset. It's true. Uh, yeah, I, I've been in a situation where I needed to uh, sell Phoenix Downs. Yeah, yeah Phoenix Downs for the majority of the run are usually used as backups because characters shouldn't really die when the strats go like they should. Um, or in rare cases for money, but the current money route is pretty good, so I usually don't need to sell any for money. Which is the reason I usually also don't really grab any, except for two. Yeah. But, yeah. So yeah, that was the final fight of Chapter 1. Yeah. We're just gonna keep skip a few cutscenes, which unfortunately introduce Hope and Vanille, <laughs> and oh. then we're gonna go to the, the, the next chapter. Yes. Yeah, terrible. Terrible characters. Terrible characters. No one likes these two. I mean, I know some people that like Vanille, but I have yet to meet someone who likes Hope. And I like 13 too, Hope. Does that count? Is it even in 13 too? <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, that's chapter one, yeah. and now it's chapter two, which the opens with a very easy fight. Yeah, you just use four attacks, and the, and the dog done. is dead. It's done. And then there's something interesting that I guess you guys can explain. Yeah, so in, um, in chat, like, there are cool items in this game called uh, Forty Souls, Deceptor Souls, and uh, I forgot what the other one is. Aether Souls. The Aether group Souls. in general is called Shrouds. Yeah. And. Um, a Deceptor Soul is an item that makes us like basically invisible for enemies, so unless we actually run into them, uh, we can just basically get a free dodge. And because in this game, if you retry a fight, you get all your items back, what we can do is we can run out of the battle zone on the other side, and uh, when we get back into it, we're basically past the battle zone, but we have our Deceptor Soul back. Yeah, we do that later uh, in Chapter 3. Yeah. Yeah, right um, now we're just farming these shrouds. Yes. So in chap in this game is very generous to new players. Essentially what it does is it looks at your battle score at the end of each fight and if it's low, uh, or the lower it is, the higher your chances are of getting a shroud. This only starts on chapter 2, this is why we never get the shrouds on chapter 1. Uh, but from chapter 2 onwards, every single fight has a chance of getting you a shroud. This chance is, the base chance is the highest on chapter 2, I think the base chance is like 16%. And for every star that you don't get, it's doubled. Yeah, so yeah it's 12% 12, it's 12 base and oh, yeah. up to 96 for 0 stars. Yeah. Yeah, so on, on these fights right now, it's a bit different, these are an exception in the first area. These have a 50% base chance, so I just need 2 stars to max it out to 100%. Yeah. yeah. So, like, what we're also gonna do in this chapter is, like, set the battle speed to low, because if we don't do that, um, it's not that the full battle is actually slower, it's just your ATB fills up slower, but, uh, that's actually bad. Yeah, because generally. Hope, even if you don't do anything, Hope kills them too fast on his own. Yeah, so we, you would get, like, three or four stars, even if you don't do anything, but we need to one star and two star some of these fights to actually have a high percent to drop a shroud. 
And we need more than just Deceptor Souls. We also need some uh, Fort Souls. We also need some Fort Souls. Yeah, Summer Runners, or like the usual route, goes for three Deceptor Souls and two Fort no, Souls. But there have been recent developments where you can ch exchange the second fixed Fort Soul for a chest in Chapter 7 in case of you not getting a bonus shroud. Because there are some shrouds that we don't have routed in that we call bonus shrouds. Um, I do the route where you gamble on getting one of those as a Fortisol. And if I don't get them, I just grab an extra chest in Chapter 7. Yeah. The chest is rather slow, but on average it's actually faster to go for that chest and to take the very slow fight in uh, this chapter. Yeah. yeah, don't take the slow. And the, the reason why we even need that many Fortisol, uh, Deceptor Souls, even when we could just in theory get them back, there are some fights that we need to preempt. And to, yeah. to basically make it easy. And um, they are impossible to preempt manually. Well, not impossible. But extremely difficult. Yeah. So what I just did there was another case of the camera trick that I explained at the start of Chapter 1. Uh, in this case, the dogs just didn't notice my presence and just ran past me. So that's something you can also do for some of them. Yeah, how the camera trick basically works, it works best on enemies that have to move from point A to point B. So it's enemies that aren't actually inside their battle zones when uh, you walk towards them. But because you are camera tricking, their AI doesn't really trigger that they need to move forward to their own battle zone until you are already either well past it or almost about to cross it. So because they only start moving once the player, the camera, looks at them. But because you're camera you're looking at the floor, that part of their AI script just doesn't trigger. Oh. So uh, we, right, we did not get 4 percent here. Nice. <laughs> nice. So this is the only chance um, where, we, we talked about it earlier, you have a 96% chance to get the shroud, so you have a 4% chance to miss it. We call that 4%. Um, if it happens, it's usually either a reset or an extra shroud farm. In yeah. the marathon, we would have obviously yeah. farmed the shroud, but yeah. I don't have to. So. On any percent, you only have one chance of getting one bonus shroud. In any of the other long categories, there's way more chances of you not getting that bonus shroud, and it's really annoying when that happens. Yeah. Well, the 4% is in general very annoying when that happens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we haven't touched up upon the story yet. Uh, I think we, we <laughs> I think we can do that un un until you get to the dodge. Yeah. Oh um, yeah, sure. <laughs> yeah, it's so here we're just uh, mainly dodging enemies again because these are annoying to fight and the little zergs just die really quickly, so they're like nice to do the shroud things on. Um, Where do we even start, though? <laughs> <laughs> the, the the premise of the story is um, we're in a place called Cocoon. And uh, at the very, very start, uh, we see lightning on like a train that uh, takes them inside this thing uh, because she had contact with a so-called uh, falsy from Pulse. <laughs> and basically, Cocoon does not want that and wants to purge. You, you can think about it this way. Cocoon is the moon and Pulse is the planet. It's not really that not the it's not one for well, it's not really true cocoon isn't a moon but you can think about it like that yeah and uh basically the moon is uh, for some reason there's people on it yeah the um, moon is hollow and people live inside of it yeah and the majority of the game is also placed there like later on we'll actually go to the real planet for a bit yeah but that's very late yeah yeah but yeah, so, so basically like uh yeah th there's these entities called Falsi, and they can put a purpose on you, which benefits either Cocoon or Pulse, typically, in the long uh, scheme. But uh, since Cocoon does not kind of like Pulse, uh, and some uh, Pulse Falsi is actually here, uh, they're, for, some reason. for some reason they're collecting everyone that potentially had contact. Oh my god, these dogs. Yeah, that <laughs> happens like half the time pretty much on yeah. PC. On console, they make space more yeah, often. Yeah. On PC, they don't really for a lot of the turns. Yeah, um, yeah they, they just uh, try to isolate, uh, in quotation marks, everyone who had, had potential contact. Yeah. The story is that they would grab all the people who potentially had contact with the Pulse Falsy and send them to Pulse, but they're actually just gonna route them all out and shot them dead. Yeah. They're killing them. Yeah. 
Alright, we're coming up on a pretty specific dodge after this fight that we were mentioning earlier. Yeah. Um, that has a very neat technique nowadays. Like, oh, back, in, back in the day, we were just like trying to YOLO dodge it on the left side whenever he's swiping, but now we actually have a setup you got for a that. Bonus. And I got the Fortis also, we can nice. skip the chest later on. Cool. Nice. Um. Yeah, this is not um, even the dodge I meant, I meant the double... Uh... Oh yeah, but this one is also specific, yeah. um, but it's very easy to explain, because when you enter battle zones on the opposite direction of where the enemies face you, they, or like these enemies, like different enemies do it different, but these enemies will just back off in a straight line. And I use that to my advantage to make space. So I yeah, just so lure this guy out, then exit the battle zone on the left side in this case. Come on. There, exit it on the left side, and now he should move straight backwards. You can see the little red dot on the mini yeah. map. And when he does that, we have a free pass. Yeah. It used to be a very RNG dodge. But because when we when he Rooster swipes with yeah, when he swipes with the left hand, you, you can sometimes can, dodge under it. Yeah, you can sometimes yeah. dodge under it, but it's a very specific timing. And this is the one that knocked his mend, which has two of these guys. <laughs> yeah, this is. Uh... This dodge is terrible. This is the worst dodge on chapter two. Yeah, and I, th I this think this is just oh the worst god. dodging game. Oh, oh that my was god, that's, so that was good. super lucky. <laughs> that's god RNG, honestly. Yeah. So we we use uh, shards typically on elevators because we can't move anyway, and uh, and we have basically the first like actual boss that can kill us coming up. It's not even that unlikely to die here as well. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Like um. new players will typically die because they they play very aggressively. Um, which is also what happened to me when I played this casually, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> but uh, typically you, you used to, oh, I, I can do damage, I can do damage, and then you run in and suddenly mm -hmm. you're dead. Yeah, so, yeah. Anima, so Anima does counter-attacks, essentially. Whenever, she, whenever it gets attacked, it just swipes, and uh, the swipe is not only very powerful, it also knocks your character backwards. So, exactly like that. So we are going to try and um, time our blitzes in coordination with Snow's attacks. Because most of the time it will counter Snow's attacks. So Snow attacks, it counter attacks and we blitz in and we don't get hit by the counter. This is the bad thing about this strat, that sometimes you can just get hit on the knockback by the, by the manipulator. And then you have to adapt. Or it you can just... really troll. Yeah. yeah. I, I just push a lot. It's fine. Yeah. So after the left manipulator is dead, we can just you can just manually kill the left, and now we can just cut, uh, work on Anima while it's regenerating its manipulators. So I also activated the Fortisol in this fight. Like we explained this earlier, but the Fortisol gives me offensive buffs, and the Age of Soul later on will give me defensive buffs. And uh, we need the offensive buffs for this uh, guy because it's a fight in which I don't really have many resources, so that just speeds it up by a lot. Yeah, yeah. we we only like the true game only unlocks on chapter three so far. So far, this has been Hallway Simulator and Auto Battle Simulator. <laughs> but from this point forward, the game the game the gameplay gets a lot more depth. I'll also quickly save here in case we get a crash. Mm. Please don't. <laughs> Please behave, 13. You're the best of the trilogy, don't yeah, do so us dirty. This introduces paradigm system very poorly. Um, now you have like these little uh, letters next to our character's name, Comrade Rav, which are different roles we can take on where we can actually do magic because we have now become uh, Falsy because we've been like basically cursed by the... Uh, no, we've become Lassie. We've, because we've been cursed by the Pulse Falsy, so which right, we just killed. Yeah, the right now the party, the, the entire party are Pulse Lassie. Lassie gain a focus. So right now the characters have a job that the um, Falsy wants them to do. Their job, that job is to destroy Cocoon. They don't know <laughs> that yet. <though. laughs> they will learn like right now. Um, and because they have this focus, in order to complete it, the Falsies also ga give them the ability to use magic. Um, so with ma with the unlocking magic, we gain access to paradigms and we access to roles. So each character has access to a couple of um, primary roles. We are going to unlock secondaries later, but they're really not too important for this run. Um, the pri we have right now we have access to Commando, Ravager, Medic, and Sentinel. Commando and Ravager are going to be way more important on this chapter. We are going to use Sentinel for just one fight. So, c 
Commandos, they deal a lot of non-elemental damage, Ravager, and don't chain a lot. They don't increase the stagger bar a lot. Um, Ravagers don't deal a lot of damage, they deal elemental damage, and they increase the stagger bar by a lot. But you need both, because uh, you could also see every time we fight something, the stagger bar is slowly trickling down. And if we just use Ravager to get the stagger bar really quickly, it will deplete really quickly as well. So we need yeah. both yeah. attacks. You need to find a balance like between getting duration for it that it doesn't deplete quickly and increasing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah, uh, yeah sure, you can go for it. Anonymous donated $15. Thank you. Thank you, Anonymous. <laughs> um, but yeah. Uh, th this just gradually explains like some of the um, mechanics that we got, um, but uh, technically, like other than Common Wrath, we have Sentinel, which is basically our tank, which will pull aggro and uh, provoke enemies, and just defend. Yeah, uh, to, c Sentinel also takes reduced damage. Yeah, that's dodges also. Hmm. We call this guy Gandalf yeah. because you shall not pass. Yeah, yeah. He, he used to be a lot harder. I think. Yeah. And then Nedic is the healer. They, they just heal both HP and the status elements. And then you have two more roles that are going to be explored later on. Right now we do not have access to them at all. We have Synergies, which buff party members, and we have Saboteur, which debuff enemies. Uh, what's important to mention before the next fight, because it's the first uh, instance in which I actually use it, is that we have a mechanic that we call ATB Refresh. Um, there's a mechanic in the game that for the first paradigm shift in every fight and then after that every 12 seconds when you shift the paradigm the next time you'll get an entire refill of all of your ATB segments. And the speedrun makes heavy use of that because that speeds up the fight significantly. Uh, that is also the reason why I now have two aggression paradigms for damage and later on we'll also use two of the same type a lot. Um, because it also works from like... Wow, wow. that dog wanted a piece of you. <laughs> from like uh, the same paradigm into the same one. So if I go from an aggression to another aggression, it works as well. Yeah. Oh, so just another instance where it's just quickly uh, to fight them. Because they also can drop a bonus shred, I think. They can drop these can, yeah. Zolls. Yeah. Um, but yeah. The thing about the paradigm is also a uh, paradigm is just a set of like roles that we have in our party since we can only come uh, control our main party leader. Uh, we set the other two to different roles, and the paradigm is just the like combination of the three roles or how many characters we have in a party. Yeah, we can set up up to six different paradigms. We call that the paradigm deck. Right now, we only need four, so we only set up four, but. The rule is to just use all six of them most of the time with duplicates so we can do to can abuse the ATB refreshes to deal as much damage as possible. Alright, so this is Manas bin Warmak, the comeback, the vengeance. He's pissed at us, we destroyed half of it. Uh, he's way more dangerous now. He has an attack called Crystal Rain. If we don't if we let our party leader get hit by this, they will it will just kill us. So what we're going to do is we're going to wait a little bit for it, and we're going to stagger cancel it. Yeah, because if you stagger it exactly when it's supposed to happen, it won't do it. And we also used a thing called Ribra at the very start of the fight. And this is where it's actually important that your uh, selection is uh, via cursor, enemy selection. Because you can use triangle to target enemies faster. And if you don't do that here, your time is uh, very tight yeah. to actually use the Libra. Libra reveals the weakness of enemies, yeah. so your uh, Ravager will automatically use the best spell against them. And this is also a fight in which I, after Stag, I briefly went into the Solidarity Paradigm where Snow is a Sentinel that provokes uh, the boss onto him. And this guy will not change target again, so I knew that everyone else is safe once he targets Snow. Yeah, if, if Snow doesn't provoke, his default target is going to be the party leader, but once Snow provokes, he just doesn't change targets anymore. Yeah. Also, what you saw like sh right before we entered this fight was uh, we were walking backwards. Uh, this is because the cutscene trigger <laughs> in this is actually uh, closer if you just walk backwards and then you can skip it faster and then you're still at the point where you're supposed to be after cutscene. Yeah, so right now Snow left the party because Sarah is just kind of there and he wants to save her even though he really can't do it on their own and the rest of us is like, okay, fine, we don't like you either. We're gonna go on our own. 
Yeah, um, no one in this party likes each other at this point. Yeah, uh, at this they, point they all kind of hate each other. Yeah. Also right now you can uh, read some donations if there are any, because there's just a bit of dodging at the moment. Yeah. Niji Bashira donated $10. Hey Kaya, good luck on the run. Can we expect a blindfolded fight? OPOP. <laughs> <laughs> hey Niji, thank you. Um, if we have time after the run and the tech allows that, I could do that. Um, but during the run, I don't know, because we have no official incentive. I yeah. mean, what we can just do is um, we m we can make it an incentive if the donation ticker in total reaches 36k during this run. Yeah, uh, that sounds fair. Yeah, we're at the well, uh, yeah, we're about uh, 1,500 under that right now, and uh, the donation of stream one and two are combined. So, if we reach that, I think that's a good point to do. Sounds good. If like everyone agrees. <laughs> You have to be the one <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I did it not that long oh ago, so I still know oh how yeah, to do so the fight. So most runners will do this dodge with, with the Decept is all, but Kai is just a pro gamer, so he can just walk right past the... the, the well, the, it's like a 50-50, right? Yeah. So. The, the worst <laughs> bit about this is you can get caught even with a Decept is all because the frogs yeah. just move so erratically. Yeah, that's the main reason I try one time without. If I get uh -huh. caught, I use the Decept is all on the second try, because even the Decept is all is not completely safe because of just how many there are. So when Snow left, we got Saz in our party instead, and uh, Kaya set up two uh, double paradigms. We have two tri disasters right now with two ra with three ravagers and two relentless assaults. Right now, um, you, we have access to a medic which is vanilla, but Saz it can only be a ravager. Lightning can be a commando or a ravager, so she's the one that is going to pull the most weight on this fight. The Alpha Behemoth is weak to water, and light. And um, Vanille right now has access to both water and arrow, and that's why we use Libra at the beginning of the fight. So she knows that she has to use only waters against this guy. That's also the reason why we. Well, also another reason why we use uh, Libra on Manuzvin Warmak, because every single commando that starts with commando as a role has access to both ruin and attack. Ruin being the physical non elemental, the ruin being the magic non elemental attack, and attack being just being the physical non elemental attack. And they have different resistances for and magic and physical. Exactly. So. so, while a character doesn't know, or rather, while the AI doesn't know if there are specific resistances or not to magic or physical, he will just do uh, one attack with the weakest stat that character has and then go move on to the strongest. We really don't want Snow to be throwing ruins because they don't do anything <laughs> against Manusvin, so that's why we leave her on that fight. Yeah, now we get more and more stuff that we can use. Um, in Chapter 4 there's a lot of magic usage because we have a huge segment that we play Saz and Vanille in who both cannot physically attack at yeah. that part. Oh, these drones are annoying. Yeah. These drones are really fast. Yeah, this this one for the watch drones we can just juke around them, but there are a couple more um, drone fights coming right up that we really can't juke around them because we don't have enough room. I mean, so we are just gonna use the decept for them. You could. <laughs> yeah, you can, but it takes way too long usually. On shroudless, like we have a shroudless category that, as the name says, doesn't use any of the shrouds, and it's compared to any percent pretty painful on a lot of the dodges. <laughs> Just because you're not allowed to use these. Yeah, like shroudless is fine if you could still use decepts. Like all of the other shrouds are fine to avoid, um, but the decept assaults are what really hurts. Yeah, so again, we use it in midair to just not lose any time when we're selecting it. In the Japanese version, you can actually still run while you're in the menu, which is kind of unfair. Yeah, that is only possible in the first uh, console version, though. Yeah. Like there's the initial a lot console of, version. There's a lot of things that are allowed and that are just unfair <laughs> that they're not allowed anymore on the first version. Yeah. So I would kill to be able to preemptive the Neo Chu. Yeah. But yeah, now I can see what Pharaoh said earlier. I think Pharaoh was it. Um, yeah, it was that, right. like, when we're past the battle zone. It was her. Or, it okay. Me. It doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'm focusing on the run, so. Yeah. Um, but that we, when we're past the battle zone and then re-enter the fight, we get put out of that side as well. So I just dodged those guys for like around 10 seconds of item yeah. usage. And because the game allows you to keep everything you've used, we just get the Deceptors all back. 
Yeah. yeah. And that's how we, with three Deceptor Salts, get through the entire run. Later on they are used for preemptive strikes when we don't need them anymore, but in early and mid-game they are used for dodges that are way too inconsistent. Yeah, you can be really, really, really unlucky with some of the dodges and uh, what can happen, this Decept runs out after a certain amount of time. And uh, if you don't enter a battle zone and retry the fight during that time, you're gonna have a bad time because you lose your Decept. Yeah. This behemoth will just charge forward and then hopefully not catch us. Yeah. yeah. That behemoth is very tame. These guys are a little scarier because if they see you instantly, they will <laughs> catch you. Yeah. Are you gonna jump down the stairs or.? Uh, no, I, t I take the safe way. Like, you, can have, you have two options here. You can go down the right side or you can just jump down. If you jump down, you have an extra encounter that you avoid for free when you run down here. And I, I mean, think. Uh, you can dodge it. Well, it's, but it's faster. I don't know who it was, but someone even tested it. And like, depending on how you need to dodge it, the stairs are faster. So <laughs> it's like very, very minimal. I always did the jump. But yeah, I, I think we also have some time for yeah, donations you can do right donation. now. Like for Fullarius91 donated $20. GL Kaya, and don't forget to pet the knight less than three. Thank you. Black Pants donated $5. I'm Snow, Snow, bad at Final Fantasy 13, so it's great to see someone complete it as fast as lightning. <laughs> good luck team, and let's raise a ton of money. That was a good one. Yeah, I tried to be fast. Diazzy donated $10. Good luck Kaya, glad to see you run again. Thank you. Alright, next boss fight now. Um, this guy yeah. has two phases. First phase is very easy, second phase is also still pretty easy, but you have to pay a bit of attention to who he is interrupting. Um, yeah, because the that changes phase my is stride. A, yeah, the, f the second phase is a little technical, the first phase is very straightforward. We are going to use Commando to gain a little bit of duration, Libre it, and then stagger and kill it. Yeah, Libra here because this is like the fast phase, so we don't have to Libra in the second phase again because it remembers the information. Yeah, and uh, the the usage is free because we don't really have anything else to do with the TP, so we might as well just Libra here. Yeah, so you have like this TP bar on the bottom right, which says Ray. Libra <laughs> uses, I think, one. Um, yeah, he only uses we, one. We also just grabbed the chest that uh, had three Libra scopes in them, which are just items that do Libra, but you don't use TP. Yeah, the Libra scopes use Libra on every single enemy on the fight, and they don't use TP, so they are very, very useful. Uh, so the the purpose of this fight is just to try and stay after getting duration with the attack and the ruin. We just want to stagger it without getting interrupted, and also guaranteeing two things that we are going to be able to skip the stagger slowdown animation um, by doing so on a... Oh, we got it actually. Yeah, well. But but doing uh, so on a uh, paradigm shift and uh, getting him close enough to us that we can just attack to our heart's content and gain a little bit of time because Lightning doesn't actually have to run forward to to get him. Yeah, this is also the, the paradigm uh, ATB refresh we were talking about. You saw uh, he was waiting in the menu for the paradigm shift and just swapped to the same paradigm he was at anyway. Yeah. Um, and that yeah. also that also allows um, Saz to start attacking immediately once the paradigm shift because because we got the ATB refresh, so Saz gets his ATB back already immediately. So he doesn't even do a ready animation. He just instantly attacks. So this fight is a bit uh, dumb. If you kill these soldiers too slow there will be more soldiers spawning and it's like t nine of them or something total <laughs> but if you kill them before another one runs in then uh, it's just three of them fun fact one of them respawns also when you kill them too fast oh. like we have a strat that is a tiny bit faster and that also has a chance that one of them will respawn yes yeah, so, this, this is very is weird the first idol in fight in this fight the goal isn't to win it's to fill the gestalt bar to max depending on the character there are different conditions to fill the gestalt bar for Snow in particular, it is to uh, increase the chain gauge with the combination of getting duration and getting um, actual stagger using Ravager, and also using the Sentinel Paradigm to block certain abilities, which always only happen after Shiva uses ATB charge. So we really want to see another ATB charge, but most of the time they just don't cooperate, and we're stuck here <laughs> using Frost Strikes until yeah. <laughs> until we feel this is stalled far. Yeah, you, you also can't die in this fight because the other Shiva sister heals you. 
Yeah, the, the second ATB shot should happen roughly now. If it doesn't happen now, then it's a bad timing. Well, there oh, it wow, is. Nice. A bit late, but yeah. It's should fine. still get a little bit. Oh back yeah, definitely. From it. Yeah. So, just so blocking now. just fills it up a lot quicker. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, you also saw a number ticking down above our head. That's the Doom Timer. Uh, there's a few fights that apply Doom Timer right away. If you're playing casually, you will probably encounter a uh, Doom Timer somewhere else. <laughs> yeah. um, but generally, we will only see them in fights where it's like forced from the start. Yeah, all the Eidolon fights force Eidolon immediately. Since we are s the we Doom is never an issue in the speedrun, if you are going to die to an Eidolon fight, it's because the Eidolon is straight up going to kill you. Yeah. But uh, I think the Doom Timer is like... Uh, on on Eidolon fights, it's three minutes. In other fights uh, that we see later on, uh, there's a doom timer that starts ticking after I think 20 minutes of the fight. Yeah. If you're yeah. seeing that, uh, yeah, you're gonna have a bad time. <laughs> and this this will happen to players playing casually on some of the fights. Oh um, wow, we also got the scepter sword. Oh nice. Yeah, uh, yeah, it was on the behemoth fight. I did not notice. I did. Okay, so we have two bonus rounds. Also, this is uh, chapter four, by far the least liked chapter for like no the majority of speedruns. No one likes and this speed chapter. Uh, um, the reason for that is that the RNG in this is <laughs> significantly <laughs> increased compared to before. <laughs> okay, should yeah, have gone yeah. to the middle. It, it's not even like the fight RNG; it's just the dodge and preempt RNG because there's some fights mandatory that you need to do at the end of the chapter, but most of the dodges you need to do early on are like these doggos. Yeah, <laughs> like. <laughs> there are two groups of enemies that are infamous in this game. It's dogs and birds. And chapter 4 is as littered with dogs and birds. And it's not even only the dogs. Like, some of the fights are also just up to a lot of RNG. Yeah. yeah. But, but the fights are okay, usually. I mean, for the fights, you, you can do, like, just slow variations of it. But the dodges are just... The you, you, yeah, the dodges yeah. on this on this chapter are just obnoxious. And for some cases, not even the Decept is always going to save you. So we want to get past both of these groups of enemies because they both have watch drones. And then we can just deactivate the shroud on this and retry the fight. Yeah, the reason I'm not running past this guy is that these are so slow that it's very easy to even dodge them again yeah. normally. Like as you can see he's like not doing anything. Yeah. yeah. We like these guys. These are the only guys we like in this entire yeah. chapter. <laughs> Why do you not like Dreadnought? He's so cute. Dreadnought is long. Yeah. Dreadnought is a long fight. But Dreadnought isn't a dodge. Yeah, no. But he's a good boy. He is a good yeah. boy. We're about to do our first fight in Chapter 4 with Sazen Vinyl, as I teased in Chapter 3. Um, and Sazen Vinyl have a very hard time to maintain stagger duration or like chain duration. It, it's because, uh, um, like we said, uh, Ravager doesn't really do stagger duration. So yeah, so we... all of the duration is our saboteur. Yeah. Chapter 4 unlo finally unlocks the final two roles, Sab Saboteur and Synergist. And Vanille has access to the Saboteur role and Saz has access to the Synergist role. And Saz right now uh, has access to Faith, which is a an ability that, uh, doubles your, that doubles your magic damage, while Vanille has access to D-Shell, which um, also further increases the magic damage you're going to deal by decreasing the enemy's magic resistance. Yeah. What can be a problem in this fight is uh, the following. You can see that the Watch Drones are fighting the Pulse Work Soldier, and uh, if they kill him, you're not getting XP from the Pulse Work Soldier. Yeah, but this is going out uh, yeah. well. Like, now Sash should kill him. Yeah, yeah. that was perfect. That, that was, was a pretty, pretty good, good fight, yeah. yeah. Um, but yeah, buffs and debuffs. Um, Farah explained a bit of that, but like we have Faith and Bravery, which are magical and physical strength buffs, or like strength and magic buffs. Both of them are increasing the magic and the strength by 40%. Um, then we have debuffs. Deep Protect and D Shell are decreasing the enemy's resistance magically or physically by 89%. No idea why 89%, but Square thought that was a good number, I guess. It is a lot. Um, but that is almost twice the damage. Yeah. Uh, and then we have Imperil later on, which uh, makes enemies one like um, level weaker than they used to be. So enemies who are not weak to anything get weak to anything. And enemies who are already weak to some elements 
on that it doesn't really matter too much, I think. Yeah, we should specify um, that it is weakness to elements. And weakness not, to elements, yeah. yes. And uh, I have ways to buff my damage to an elemental type later on, so if I have Imperil on an enemy and then get an element on myself as well on top of that, it's another 100% yeah. yeah, damage because, increase. Yeah, because even though Commando is non-elemental damage, they can still gain elemental properties by using end buffs. So for example, Saz has end fire. If he buffs himself with end fire and then goes to a Commando role, he is going to deal fire elemental damage. I love this threat, by the way. Yeah. This, this is the most complicated strat for a 20 seconds fight, just yeah. to save two seconds. Yeah. It's pretty funny. Compared oh. to what we did before. Yeah, also what you uh, sometimes see, when we preempt the fight, uh, the stagger bar is basically almost filled up, so it fills up with like one uh, attack, but it also depletes really quickly, so if you're not attacking an enemy or you're in a group fight, um, the stagger bar can just drop to zero, which is really annoying. But Pre with this, it's just preemptive fun. strikes are ex are incredibly powerful in the right circumstances. All right, and now we approach the bird dodge segment. We have seven bird dodges now. One of them is pretty free, to be fair, but the other six can catch me. Um, if I get caught by one of them, I usually use a deceptor soul for the rest of them because we don't want to yolo with like all of yeah, them. Yeah, birds yeah. are ex um, because birds run so much faster than any one of your characters. <laughs> they will always just catch you if they want to. That, that yeah. and they do really like unpredictive movements almost. Like, like we have some slight ways of telling how they move nowadays, but it's still RNG technically. So like the next one, for example, uh, if he faces me, I dodge him on the left side. If he doesn't face me, I usually dodge him on the right side. Um, but that's still no guarantee that it works. So birds are just RNG, pretty much. Yeah. Yeah, the bird can actually catch you here midair, which happened to me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, here yeah. as well. Um, like, and that bird was just run. Yeah, yep, sometimes that happens. That almost caught me. And this is the next funny one. Uh, Going really yeah. smooth so far. Oh wow, my god. That one was close. <laughs> But yeah, I guess you guys can see the bird dodges are not that fun normally. And but it's we also not the last time we'll see that. We got past the first yeah. three big ones. Uh, there are three more later after the fight. But yeah, going yeah. smooth so far. Yeah, so right now we are going to gain lightning <coughs> back. That means we finally have a commando. And we are going to give Sal's bravery. We also have to pass through vigilance, which, eh, but vigilance is also useful. Uh, we are going to give an Ildi Protect, so we have the, the combination that we had for Magic with Faith and Dishal, we are also going to get it for Physical Moves with Bravery and um, with bravery and Ildi Protect. Um, setting up Paradigms to make sure we maximize like we can maximize Lightning's uh, potential damage. And then just develop everybody to give Lightning Power Chain, which instantly increases duration to max as, soon, as long as she... Uh, hits an enemy with uh, an empty chain and um, give Vanille, give Vanille Deprotect and give Saz bravery. Oops, that was too fast. And I also equipped Hope already with a Silver Bangle which gives him more HP that I don't have to do that later. Because later on Hope will be in the second Eidolon fight and he needs a bit more HP for that. Yeah. So I already do it here to not have an extra menu later. Yeah, Snow is the only one who gets a solo Eidolon fight because uh, one of the Shiva sisters just heals him. For all of the others, you have to manage at least two characters. Yeah. Also, you can see we fight some fights here. It's uh, kind of required because some of them guard chests we want and uh, these particularly guard buttons that we need to press. And you cannot press them because the button is in a combat zone and as long as you have enemies like following you uh, you can't interact with things okay you should die that's also a good fight like fights are going really well so far mm -hmm. yeah yeah on that fight we maximize the time that vanille stays on uh, on uh, saboteur to make sure that she can try to set debuffs on as many enemies as she can because unfortunately debuffs on this game are entirely rng so we are at vanille's mercy for more for most than half of the run whether <laughs> she lands debuffs on time or not yeah that's why you'll typically hear like runners complain like vanille oh wow yeah all right we got all bird dodges that's, yeah so uh, far impressive. it's been a really good chapter four <laughs> other than the dogs yeah uh, the the section earlier with like the lots of dogs that kept jumping back and forth is also known as the RN gutter. Yeah, <laughs> RNG gutter. Yeah. All right, yeah. red knot. Um, this fight is very complicated. It's the first fight where we are actually really going to abuse buffs and uh, the interaction between buffs and debuffs. 
so we start by getting some chain duration on this guy with the Neil Saboteur because we don't start on the commander roll, we have to do this with the Saboteur. We are going to work on uh, getting the stagger gauge up, um, getting the buffs on, uh, getting buffs on lightning, um, getting information on the dreadnought so she doesn't use ruins later on on the fight, making sure we also get D shells just for the extra damage, uh, make sure we survive. <laughs> he's <laughs> the first attack he's gonna do once he's staggered, and then working on killing him. Yeah, so he does. Uh he does a few attacks that you really want to stagger cancel, and if you don't line it up, you just die. Which happens to a lot of like new runners. Yeah, the second phase is very, very scripted, but um, you want to stagger cancel his move. That's a mechanic that we didn't really touch upon earlier, I think. No, we did. No, we did. Um, stagger canceling. Yeah, okay. During Manas win. It's very, yeah. very important that you stagger cancel on this fight because it would kill me with the setup that I have right now. We had previously setups that wouldn't really kill all the time, but can kill depending on how your HP was. But now it's a lot of the times a kill when you get hit by it. Yeah, so on this fight we use Power Chain because the duration is set to max immediately. We can just sit on Ravager forever without losing the progress on the stagger bar that we have. Uh, on the first fight we only do Bravery on Lightning. On this one we are going to Faith, Saz and Vanille because she needs the extra damage. Uh, we set the chain to a very specific point before going into Smart Bomb to do the debuffs. Yeah, and then we want to debuff it at the same time as we stagger it. Yeah, now he should do Wrecking Ball in like 3 seconds. And there it is. And that's Interrupt. Yeah. yeah. Wrecking Ball will just straight up kill him. Yeah. It's extremely powerful. And now he uses Steam Clean. Steam Clean is an attack that only these enemies have. It will. It takes a long time to charge, and all it does is clear one of these debuffs that we are just going to immediately reapply. All right, and the rest of the fight is just clean up yeah, with like refreshes yeah. for Lightning, who's the main DPS. While well, Sensei you just do some damage and increase the chain. Yeah. If we don't had, if we didn't have D Shell in Faith, Lightning on her own wouldn't be able to kill him. That's how tight this fight can be. Yeah, because as like if he drops uh, down his stagger bar to zero, you will go back to doing normal damage. Yeah, and well, you just lose way too much damage. Yeah, and then he will do wrecking ball again. <laughs> yeah, this <laughs> just destroy you. Yeah. All right, uh, quickly explaining the next fight because then we have some time for a donation. But uh, in the next fight, I fight five soldiers. It's a very dangerous fight, and I hope that they are very grouped up because then the majority of them will get constantly interrupted by lightning. If they are spread out and target lightning, it can get very dangerous. So I have to pay attention to my HP. Yeah, we um, basically want to blitz as many people as possible. Yeah, and get protected at the start of the fight too. Yeah, yeah, you can read the donation if you want. So we get protect, Come on, light. and now hopefully hit the majority of them with every yeah, single Yeah, we bits. want. Yeah, we want to kill the tracker first because the tracker has access to cure. So we will heal the others, which we obviously don't want. We want us to be healed. We don't want the enemies to to be alive more, for more time than needed. Uh, uh, like this. Oh, oh that was very close. Yeah, I didn't kill the tracker early. That was my mistake. Okay, nice. All right. All right, now we have time for the donation. Yeah. <clears throat> so yeah, um, at this point in the story, Lightning and uh, Hope got separated from Saz and Vanille, so for a good chunk of the game now, the party is going to be divided into these two groups. So we have Hope and uh, Lightning on one hand, and then Saz and Vanille on the other. Um, and really both groups have their strengths and weaknesses, but the most awkward one of the two to use I'd say is Lightning and Hope because you do not have access to buffs and debuffs with these two. You have two medics, a decent commando, and like you have a Hope, which is just not a great character unfortunately. <laughs> because uh, Hope and Saz are the two synergists we have access to, but Hope is the defensive synergist while Saz is the offensive synergist. And we want to go fast. We want to glass cannon through this entire game. Protect doesn't do anything for us on that regard. 
a uh, fun fact about that, like a lot of the strategies were way more defensive in the past few years and we just cut a lot of the defensive options, including protect on some of the fights to make them faster. No yeah. risk, no fun. <laughs> Um, gotta, gotta risk it for the risk it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's not not like it increases the RNG by a lot, it just increases the, like... The uh, likelihood that you die if things yeah, go like badly. Yeah, if, if, if you make mistakes, you're just getting punished, like, more often. Or if you're unlucky and your enemies just target the, s the same character also. Like, the fights are still consistent for the most part, even without the defensive options, it's just that you have less backups. Yeah, there's a cool minigame here where you're on a Dreadnought and you're supposed to... We get to, to hear the cool music! Yeah, yeah skip the cutscene to slow. <laughs> Um, you're supposed to kill a bunch of these, and uh, depending on how many you kill, you get uh, different bonus items at the end, which is actually important, because what we get are upgrade materials, and uh, if you don't kill enough of these, you need to buy extra, and you don't really have that money, so... Uh, we have to kill 25 at least to get the drops I want to have, uh, because this also affects the drops that we get. Yeah. Um after this and if i didn't miscount i should have like gotten 25 i don't know maybe i've miscounted yeah and the really <laughs> the real weird thing about this minigame is that you can't really replay it so i mean if i don't get it we just do backups okay got it okay. Uh, i would have gotten 10 or 12 sturdy bones um i would have gotten some sturdy bones if i sturdy didn't bones get bones aren't bad they're yeah. just a little awkward to use. They're less good right now because yeah. i don't get the multiplayer two times three yet for the upgrading that we explain a bit later um, but yeah, that's, this is basically necessary for the upgrading I will do. Yeah. And now these soldier dodges can be very awkward, especially this one. <laughs> yeah, the positioning was awkward. The retry usually works first try, so let's see. <laughs> usually. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, because yeah, you just get a free pass normally. Like, sometimes not, but usually it looks like that. This, uh, there are some dodges, uh, depending on if you learn console version or PC version, are different. Yeah. We're just gonna set up for the next uh, Eidolon fight, which is the Odin fight. We are going to keep the Gladius on Lightning, but we gave her the Doctor's Code instead of the Power Wristband. The Doctor's Code was dropped by Anima like way back in Chapter 2, and what it does is increase the effectiveness of potions. The Doctor's Code is very bro is a very broken accessory, <laughs> either in your hands or, dis or dismantled later on, but for now we're just going to use it for uh, the potions benefit, which is very, very important. The, the Doctor's Code is so good at... Um, effect at um, boosting the effectiveness of potions that we are just not gonna have to use medics at all until yeah. like the three hour mark. We'll see in this fight specifically because I have like less than 600 HP I think and like one potion heals for 300 so <laughs> Yeah and the strong. potions heal both characters which is even which is even more broken. Yeah so it didn't control you a bit actually. Um, like now you can see it if you pay attention to like the green numbers it heals a lot. 300. Usually they just heal for 150, so... Yeah. And like 300 HP in this game is a lot of HP for a very long time. Mm. Yeah, well well in other FF games you would use like a white mage or a medic or something very early on. In this game you spam potions because other than healing you, like we said earlier, they fixate your position so you can just face time some stuff. Yeah, Odin's fight can target either lightning or hope. He will go for hope most of the time, but he can just go for lightning and make things a little cumbersome because he launches a lot. That's a good fight though. Yeah, that was a pretty nice. good fight. 51. Yep. <laughs> Not 54 though. Reset. And now we're also going to use Odin in the first fight that we <laughs> just do after we got him, which is pretty funny. Yeah, because um, Odin is the best way of dealing with these guys, basically. We have to fight two Unlans. They are very... they are too tanky for us to deal with it in an effective manner, so we just use Odin. So, um, the Eidolons also are also summons. They use 3 TP in order to be summoned, so that's our second TP, uh, technical ability. And uh, all the summons have something called the Gestalt mode. So a normal summon will just function as a second party character, that you have to sacrifice your party members in order to bring out the summon. Uh, Odin in particular will um, aggro every single enemy that he um, attacks and then he just uses a variety of 
kind of weak attacks, but they're, they're useful. Afterwards, you can um, use the Gestalt mode for, for, a, for any summon. And the Gestalt mode gives you a few options. The really broken thing about Gestalt mode is that you're completely immune while you are in Gestalt mode and, enemies, and the enemy's ATB is frozen, so they can't really do anything. Uh, every single summon has a specific finisher. For Odin, it's Zantetsuken, because it's always Zantetsuken. <laughs> and it works like Zantetsuken in the other Final Fantasies in the sense that under certain conditions, it's a instant kill move. In terms of uh, 13's Odin, um, it will instantly kill an enemy based on the HP that the enemy has left combined with how high the stagger bar is. So the higher the stagger bar is, and the lower the HP is, uh, the more likely you are to get the 100% condition. Um, and in the right circumstances, it's always guaranteed. You either, like, right, putting it another way, you either get it or you don't. And we know exactly what are the um, conditions that we need in order to always get it. You actually use the septic. And I messed it up. I should have gone to the right side, but I, tr I, tr I didn't trust the, the ground there because sometimes you can bonk on that and then you get pulled into the enemy. Yeah. So these bombs um, are notoriously yeah. annoying. Yeah. Should have done right side there and then I would have been passed. Probably. Yeah. But yeah, you can use the Scepter Souls for whatever dodges you don't want to do normally. And this looked like a very bad pattern, so I just tried it. Yeah, that was really good though. This dodge this is good. usually way worse than the bombs. And yeah, now I'm going to do my first upgrading. Um, and upgrading is a bit weird in this game because it's very, very strong, very, very useful, and very, very poorly explained. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> this game does not explain upgrades at all. This game does not um, explain a lot of mechanics at but, all. But basically, you have two types of components that you can use. One type of them increases your multiplier that is maxed out at three times the experience that you normally would give. And the other type is not really increasing the multiplayer, but gives you massive experience, and you just need to do a combination of both to efficiently upgrade. Yeah, the efficient um, upgrades are basically composed of you want to use organics first in order to increase your multiplier to three times, and then you want to dump uh, as many mechanical components as possible in order to um, um, get as much experience as possible. So we're gonna, we already have the organic components from drops and from the thickened hides we got from the Dreadnought minigame, and we, we just bought a whole bunch of uh, mechanical components, the polymer emulsions, and we're gonna use them to max out this power wristband and gain an extra level on the Magician's Mark. So our damage just mm -hmm. essentially doubled just from this upgrade <laughs> menu. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, and now is something that has been found by 01337 last year, which is very complicated and not a lot of runners do that. But we can use the camera trick to our advantage to get preemptive strikes very fast in the next four fights if I don't mess it up. All right, so... Um, the, the way it works, to quickly start it off, is I need to camera trick at a specific part here, and then based on how far the soldiers are progressed with their movements, camera trick again at specific times. So now I look at all of those enemies, and depending on how far the one soldier has progressed, which was pretty far for some reason, uh, I have to camera trick very early again. Sometimes you have to camera trick very late. Um, it just is something you have to improvise on. Oh boy, time to die. Yeah, uh, I'm <laughs> notorious for dying on this. <laughs> so these two bombs will always try to explode as soon as possible. Um, and if both bombs explode on top of Saz, he just dies. But uh, they, yeah, yeah they didn't they explode. Good. Nice. All right, we didn't die. You also uh, don't the self destruct one shots me. Yeah. Not from full HP, but I don't have full HP, so like from 280, I will get one shot by a bomb. Also, you don't gain the XP if uh, they self destruct. Yeah. All right. So second so preempt. Yeah. Self destruct will always um, deal the damage that the bombs have left directly onto your character. I look a bit to the right side there to like have the soldiers on the other side already move a bit because that's needed for the next one um, while I do this fight. Yeah, so a lot of these fights, are, except for the first one, are going to be basically the same um, a script. You use deep, you use Bravery on Saz, have Vanille be on Saboteur in order for it to debuff the enemies and then you just kill them with more attacks. You should die to that normally. Yeah, nice. If you don't get preemptive strikes on these fights, they are also beatable, and it's usually better to fight them without a preemptive strike because it loses around 20 seconds per fight. Uh, and the positions on the retries are not always optimal. 
So it's usually better to still fight them even when you don't get the preempt. Yeah, so wait the a tiny bit here. Uh, the fight the fights become slower because you have to stagger the pulse work soldiers manually and they're just kind of slow to do so. This is the worst fight that you uh, have when you don't get the preemptors. I think this is actually the fight that I wouldn't fight without the preempt. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the other three you can do without it. Yeah, once you stagger both of them, it's just a matter of cleaning up house here. That was a very good fight. Ah, oh, sad. Oh. Missed the damage roll. That's a damage <laughs> roll with the strat. But it's not bad. Yeah, the, like in many JRPGs, the damage you do isn't actually fixed. It, there's damage ranges that all your characters do, and sometimes you just miss those ranges. In this game, it's notoriously uh, rare to miss certain damage ranges, though. Alright, got all preempt. That's mm. good. Yeah. yeah. This over with. And the reason why you have to fight all of these is because every single one of these four fights are guarding a button that you have to press. And like we said before, you can't interact with anything if you're inside a battle zone. So you actually have to clear the enemies in order to be able to clear the battle zone. Yeah. The reason why no one likes this chapter is uh, you can lose a lot of time, not just to the failed dodges earlier in the chapter, but also to the sprints not working out fully. And it's just a I mean, mix of RNG that you can't really do much about. Yeah. Very important that we remove these accessories because yeah. you cannot interact with uh, equipment that is on a character that's not on an active party. So we are going to change chapter now. We are going to lose control of Cezanne Vanilla. We're going to go back to Lightning and Hope. Uh, we really want this max to um, power fun. respawn on back on Lightning. Yeah, I just want to touch upon something before I hand over to Zwanzig while we're heading into chapter five. In chapter five, you your party leader is actually Hope, and he has a, the annoying thing where every character runs at the same speed. Except for Hope, who runs slower. <laughs> for some reason that no one knows. And yeah. Like, even though Hope's legs are almost as long as Vanille's legs are, for example, Hope runs slower while Vanille runs exactly as fast as the other f uh, four characters. Yeah, and, and th the other thing is, depending on your party leader, your, like, actual hitbox is bigger or smaller. Like, Hope has a pretty small hitbox, but Vanille, because she flails her arms so much, <laughs> yeah, her, her hitbox, hitbox is huge. huge. It's so bad. Yeah, so here's yeah. just a bunch of cutscenes. Yeah. We call this the walk of shame walk of because shame. You're, you're watching your timer go red when you do this after you're done with chapter All right. four. Um, <laughs> if there are any donations, they can be read now and Noctis and Swanzig will swap yeah. because there's like some downtime now. Thanks for having me on and I hope you enjoyed the rest of this run and the rest of the marathon. And as a reminder, there's going to be FF8 tomorrow with great donations and donation incentives. So please donate towards that blindfolded menu and the fights. And there will be a blindfolded fight here as well if we reach 36k before the fight. So look forward to that. Abel Pi donated $5. Abel Tokeo, I'm really proud of you. Doing great showing the most intente and fun Mario Kart. By the way, you can still play this game online and have some fun via Weem Fee. Alright. Hello, Swansea. Hello again, Swansea. Hi. How was dinner? Um, took a little while. Bad uh, <laughs> max RNG. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, chapter 5 is... Honestly, I like chapter 5 almost as little as chapter 4 nowadays. Uh, really? Um, chapter 5 is my favorite chapter because the no. aesthetic. <laughs> no, but I like um, the trees and the colors. Look at that. Like, you almost caught me. But yeah. Um, <laughs> this thought is so consistent, though. <laughs> but yeah, um... Chapter 5, very short one, with the by far hardest early and mid-game boss. So that's something to look forward to. Yeah, this is the first um, real wall, that, like the second wall, because a lot of people also get wall.dreadnought, but this is the first real wall in the run. This is an extremely complicated fight. In the rest of the chapter, there's actually not that much happening. Like, there are a bunch of dodges. A lot of them I don't like, as I just said. <laughs> um, and the fights are fairly short and easy to understand, so... Yeah, a lot of these dodges are just dogs, and we have already tucked upon dogs like <laughs> that, for example. That only happens at the end of the battle zone, by the way. Like, like normally the dogs will swipe. If they do these jumps, then you know that you're past the battle zone. Normally. So, yeah. I don't know why they do that. 
but I it's, also it's have no consistent way to you. dodging them then. It's to do that final leap to catch the runner and make them lose time. But yeah, yeah. Uh, there's a lot of downtime in Chapter 5, because there are a lot of dodges. Do you want to talk about the lore, um, Zwanzi? You can the talk lore? about the lore. What lore? <laughs> <laughs> this, uh, this game has a story? This game has a story. According to Rooster, the story of the trilogy is so some pe someone says ah da da before they <laughs> skip, before you can skip the cutscene. But yeah, before you go to the lore, I can quickly explain the menu because I'm about to do a menu. That's something we do. Um, Menuing in this yeah. game, you don't say. Yeah, and um, this menu will also auto generate paradigms because it's faster to do that than to manually paradigm. Uh, there are a bunch of places where we use that. Um, that's a fairly recent change as well. We used to just manually paradigm everything in the entire run, but then like some Japanese runners found out that auto-generating, even though it usually gives you bad paradigms, sometimes gives you the paradigms that we want to. Pretty much and mostly <laughs> just if you choose <laughs> yeah. offensive. Yeah, and, and that's why in some cases we now use these generates. And then I get some Crystallium for Hope and Lightning and put the Power Spend and Magician's Mark on them that I just unequipped from Vanille and Sass. Yeah, we are. And we yeah. basically did two double paradigms for to optimize ATB refreshes. And uh, we give we develop Lightning, we give her a few abilities and a few stats. And But most importantly, we give Hope water because he's going to need it on the... Basically, mo for most of the fights in this chapter, not all of them, but when it's used, it's actually really important because Water yeah. is a weakness that we want to hit. That's also why we give um, Spark Strike and Water Strike to uh, to Lightning because so she, she can hit not only weakness but also with a physical attribute. Because both Ravager and Commando roles have both magic and physical type of abilities. Yeah, and we've invested more into physical damage at this point with that upgrade um, at the end of Chapter Four, leveling up the Power Wristband. Yeah. The downside is it makes the majority of Chapter 5 actually harder than it used to be because we had space to equip a Doctor's Code for Chapter 5 as well and give Hope more HP, which both is not the case now. Well, we, um, were, we were never using the Doctor's Code on Lightning until Proto. Well, yeah, yeah. but uh, it's still not used there, so... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It definitely makes that harder. Um, yep. Chapter 5 is faster by a good bit, but it's also a bit harder than it used to be with previous routes. But we gotta go fast, right? You gotta go fast. So this fight we're gonna fight two Silver Lobos. The big goal on this fight is getting both Stagger Slowdown scopes. Uh, to do so on the first one we are gonna do it on an, AT on an ATB refresh and the second one we are gonna do it by hovering over a potion. Because when you are, the Stagger Slowdown scope happens whenever the enemy isn't highlighted and this happens both when you are on a paradigm shift but also when you are hovering over an item because at that, uh, in that situation the HP bar that gets highlighted is the character that you are hovering the item over and not the enemy. Yeah, I got the first one. Now I will do only two fires and hope I will not get delayed. Okay, that might be close now. Okay, yeah. got it. And sometimes you can combine this with uh, an ATP refresh, but it's really rare. Yeah, on the PC version, ATB refreshes are actually a bit tighter than on the console versions because the in-game battle timer is responsible for these 12 seconds that we talked about earlier. And uh, it's not the real time. And the real time runs a bit, or like the in-game battle time runs a bit slower on PC for a reason that we also don't know, but it, <laughs> it runs around three seconds slower per minute. So it makes an ATB refresh also happen a tiny bit later than 12 seconds real time. Wait, so isn't on it PC, the other that way? is pretty. Isn't it the other way around? Where no, like, like, like the, the battle time runs slower on PC, um, and because of that... Yeah, no, I guess you're right. <laughs> so this fight is super trivial, these guys aren't intimidating or threatening in any way, but only because there's four of them. We're gonna go back to these guys in a while. <laughs> yeah, and now it's boss fight time. Yeah, this is sort of, kind of, sort of a mini boss. Um, this guy is weak to water, but... There's something called conditional stagger modifiers, which is something very complicated that I don't, I'm not really qualified to explain properly. All you have to know is by alternating elements, even though an enemy might not be weak to that particular element, you will generate more stagger than you if you would just do um, the, the, the attribute he's weak to. That's why we start this chain with arrow. Because it actually generates more stagger than if you do water, water, water. And uh, once the Feral Behemoth is staggered and you can interrupt it freely, you just uh, alternate, coordinate lightning and um, 
hope until uh, with ATB refreshes until this guy dies. We also did a little subtle technique there called a uh, roll buffer. I don't know if you guys no, have talked about this. No, we actually didn't. Go ahead. Yeah. yeah. So um, the various rolls have passive bonuses that are affected by how high level the roll is. Um, the most notable ones uh, for, for our offensive um, rolls, for instance, is that Commando gets an automatic damage boost by being in the roll, and Ravage, uh, Ravager gets a chain increase boost. So uh, you can queue up a, a, an attack in one roll and then switch to the other roll while it's executing, and as long as the switch occurs before the attack hits, um, you will get the modifier of the role that you switched into. This fight is kind of dangerous, by this the way. This fight is yep. very dangerous, because the first fight against Crawlers, it's four. This one's our ten. Yeah, this is safe, though, now. Good um, job, Lightning. Th that was a fight <laughs> really which, good job. in which Hope previously had way more HP than he has nowadays. Yeah. So to, to um. finish explaining the role buffer, the, uh, what we did there, for example, was uh, role buffer an Aqua Strike into Commando. The Aqua Strike, uh, the Feral Behemoth is weak to, so it's doing double damage from that. And then you get the uh, double damage uh, modifier from being in a commando role, so we get one uh, Aqua Strike that does extra damage by doing it that way. You can go for a donation right now if you yeah, want we to. Yeah, we have a bunch of time. Madelan donated $54. Good luck on the run, Kaya. I'm also really enjoying the commentary from Dasfero and Noctis. Thank you, Madelon. Thank you very much, Madelon. Uh, 54, I'd like to explain that briefly. 54 <laughs> is a community-wide meme in our community. Um, that's why that's a pretty funny donation. Is it, though? <laughs> <laughs> is it a funny meme? Well, I mean, you can explain the origin of that because I don't know that in detail, but uh, there's a runner, like a, a top runner, Logic Dolphin, previously Loot Dolphin, who is like the origin of that pretty much in one of his runs it wasn't in a run it, it was wasn't while in he was a run wasn't in practice okay but no he was no it was, he was something was... completely different I can explain that <laughs> but he was trying to get a 54 second adam and toys fight it was essentially like wasn't a challenge a... like an il kind of thing like okay. single wasn't it fight a 55 he was looking for and then he suddenly just skipped to 54 and that's why he was so surprised but uh, it's definitely a meme that's very old but it was before my time so i don't know the origin <laughs> He was just uh, very yeah. excited about getting a 54. That's that's yeah, essentially it. Basically. <laughs> All right, so this is the second fight against the Feral Behemoth, who is exactly the same thing as the first one. The difference is we are in control of Lightning this time. So yeah, we I'm can doing actually... a safe strat here. Like, you can do a riskier strat as well, uh, but I'm doing a safe strat now. Yeah, the, the real uh, advantage you have of being able to control Lightning here is that you can just manually control the arc Aqua Strikes. Yeah. Because of the whole conditional modifier mumbo jumbo thing, uh, the AI will generally try to alternate skill uh, alternate skills in Ravager because it increases the chain slightly faster. But we would much rather just only do Aqua Strikes because our strength is so much higher than our magic. Yeah. Yeah, the yep. strategy I normally do here only gets one single attack at the start of the fight instead of three, but uh, we explained earlier that like each attack gives you duration for the chain, so it's just a bit safer to get a few extra attacks at the start to not have it drop. <clears throat> there, we're approaching the end of this chapter right uh, now. Still a little bit left. So you could maybe already explain a few of Proto's mechanics. <laughs> um, like the final boss of this chapter, to briefly touch upon that a bit so we don't have to do that later is that he can be weak to four elements like to all four elements and i don't want to see fire and i don't want to see ice because those are the either slowest or hardest fights on the fight <laughs> uh fire being the slowest because i have no way of killing in it ice i theoretically have a way of killing it but i probably will not go for it either if i get it here because it's just way too tight yeah, the, the reason um, for this is Lightning currently has no skills whatsoever uh, that have an ice element. So if he's fire, then he's weak to ice. So we can, Lightning can't really hit that. Um, if he goes into ice, Lightning does have the fire spell, but no fire strike. So she can't use her stronger uh, strength stat. Yeah, because we're a strength spec right now and the fires don't really do enough damage. 
It's possible to kill in Exo Ice, and I, I think you will go tied. for it. No, 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 I'm not going for it. Okay, you're not going for it today. Okay. It's like, I don't know if it's FPS dependent or not as mm -hmm. well. Like, it might also be a thing that on the PC port works better on 60 FPS than when you get a few frame drops. And in a marathon, I wouldn't not risk it either. Yeah. Um, because stalling one of these Exos loses you around 30 seconds. If I get Ice and then followed by Fire, that's very unfortunate, and it has 8% chance of happening. Um, so because we yeah. use an extra, we have an extra decept. Kai, you're gonna use it on this fight. Yeah, yeah. We just use it on this fight to make it a lot, a lot faster. Yeah, it speeds up the fight a decent amount, and also otherwise we would have had to cancel the decept we were using for dodges. Yeah. So. So we just summon on this fight because it's faster to just use Zantet skin to kill all these big repel again than it is to just kill them kill them all manually. It's also a bit safer chain than usual. Like usually, it should kill at 476, but I went for more, uh, one hit more, and then it should everything die. Nice. Yeah. Until next so time. newer runners will usually use a f an ether soul here to get back five TP uh, in order to be able to use both Libra and the summon for Proto. Yeah, if you learn this game, do that. <laughs> don't don't do what Kai is doing. <laughs> yeah, that's also something pretty recent, to be honest. Uh, but yeah, uh, we we can use the TP normally to have Odin as a backup if stuff goes wrong. I don't have any backups now, so if stuff goes wrong, I probably have to retry. Yeah, Odin is used as a backup <coughs> in case something goes wrong, but it's also used as a way to kill, just be able to kill Exoice. Yeah. Even though you get it, you can just chain high enough and with all its HP down enough that Santetsuken will just kill it. Alright, so this boss is very hard and I probably don't say anything when let you guys take over. Alright, so since we really, really need all the damage we can get, we don't have a Doctor's Code equipped for this fight, so its um, its attacks can do a lot of damage and we have to deal with like a, the regular potion amount of healing, which makes this first part a little bit tricky because we're sometimes having to toss multiple potions. Yeah, Hope is extremely weak and we need to keep him alive because we do need him to chain and for damage. Yeah, we also can't afford Hope dying and having to revive him or anything because our auto buffs from the Fortisol we used will not be will restored. Will not be there. And he really needs both haste and faith. So Proto has a very specific pattern. He will use two stomp moves and then he will use a seed move, which deals oh, on... Yeah, water is really good. Um, after he chooses, after he uses the seed, he might just um, continue using seeds or just stomping until he decides to use the second exo proof or the first exo proof. After the exo proof, he always goes for a flourishes, and now we st now it we would go back to the same pattern, but because we stagger it, and everything hope uh, Proto does can be staggered cancelled. So we are just going to alternate. Hope and Lightning's attacks, weave them in together in order to maintain the stagger lock on Proto. And this is why maintaining haste is so important, because without haste, this stagger lock just is not possible. And also, every time we do an ATB refresh here, we make sure to uh, animation cancel Hope. So you'll see here, he does three thunders, and then we switch, and he immediately so continues doing more thunders. Yeah, that looks very good. Like, yeah. I have a lot of stagger left. There's another com buffer for some extra damage and, and easy. Fight. That was a really good proto yeah. fight. Super smooth. Like this fight can go out of hand very, very quickly. Like you probably saw the damage that he does. And Menu. if you don't kill, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> um, if you don't kill in that stagger, he's going like super sane basically for a few seconds and launches you into the air, dunks you on the ground. And that does a lot of damage. Yeah, yeah af I've, after um, a certain HP threshold, Proto changes his entire patterns and also gains a few more attacks that are just instant kill. Also, this is now a tilde assisted speedrun. Well, yeah. <laughs> Maybe my muscle memory would have done the menu too. Did you just call yourself a tool? Logic did that the first time. <laughs> because I, I think it was this exact menu too. I just said in chat, do the menu. It's like, this is now a tool assisted speedrun. <laughs> But that was a very good proto. Happy about that. And now welcome to chapter 6, which is, in my opinion, the most chill chapter. Um, because this is, consists of only dodges and a single fight that I do. 
Then it's a fight um, with a pretty chill here. music because it has this theme that yeah, plays the, during it. The current background music is also pretty good. Yeah. But yeah, this is usually a chapter after you fought Proto. The game wants you to like calm down a bit again. Um, and then chapter seven picks up pace again. Yeah. It's interesting because when I'm, whenever I'm de-roasting this, like Proto never gives me an issue, but the fight on this chapter gives me a lot of issues. It's not easy. <laughs> no. I think the strat that I have nowadays, or like the zero mate and I do, um, is honestly easier than the strat that we used to do. But I Might think that's be, also yeah. personal preference. But it's just like it is. Like, like I'm the only one that stubbornly hangs on to the old it's, ways. It, you, you basically do exactly <laughs> the same inputs for the entire fight every single time. Like it. Like, it's, it's a very scripted fight, unless you miss a debuff. Like, if you miss D-Protect in any of the phases, then you have to adjust a bit. I mean, you but. are playing with the Neil, <laughs> so missing debuffs is like... <laughs> <laughs> also, we're getting the Neil's best weapon now in a chest. Uh, unfortunately, I will not keep that for long, because it sells for a lot, and we need the money in this run. Yeah. In other runs, like you buy it back later on, but we yeah, don't do that no in any percent. Yeah, no run will ever keep this Belladonna one. They will always sell it, and if they need it, they will just buy it back when, when money isn't an issue anymore. Wow. Optimal menuing. <clears throat> Alright, and now it's the first instance in which I actually get my multiplayer 2 times 3 with 36 sturdy bonds on Saz's weapon. We aren't going to max the Vegas yet because we can't really afford to, but we are going to put them strong enough that they will just carry us throughout the rest of mid game, basically. Yeah, that upgrade just gave Saz 80 more strength points, which is like probably like double of what he has. So we just set up the paradigm deck for the <laughs> e and e, for the Enlil and Anakin fight. We are looking to get um, to get Vanille to the to get poison, which is going to be very important for this fight and then for a couple more fights later on. We're just going to develop her medic for pure raw stats and a little bit more HP, which is the most important stat we want. Uh, for Saz, we also gained a little more HP, but the most important thing we want is this in this synergist role. We want both and water and and thunder. We already talked a little bit about how end spells work. This is the first fight that you, you that actually utilizes them because you have these two spells and water and and thunder, which gives thunder and water properties to non-elemental attacks and we have to fight two bosses in which one of them is weak to thunder and one of them is weak to water <laughs> like yeah as if this the game is knew. good this is good game design as if the game knew <laughs> i mean they definitely did it, yeah, it's, not, it's not a coincidence did. of course they knew but um it, they could have done the same thing to proto we right could, <laughs> we could quickly touch just, upon the the um the like leveling that I do on while we're on that, I guess, because like even though I dodge basically every single fight that is optional except like one fight later on, um, we have enough Crystarium points to be able to afford every ability that we need, even uh, without fighting everything. Yeah. Um, that is because like the Crystarium was very very well routed in my opinion, and yeah, it's possible. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of stuff that only just barely works in the current route. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Like, doing a mistake could lead to missing it, uh, especially, like, uh, the full ATB ability of Saz later cough, on. Cough, so I have to blood. pay a bit of attention there to not mess up the menu. Um, but in general, we get everything that we need before we need it. Right before um, we need it. Which is pretty cool. So, hey, the game just told you uh, that you can, in fact, dodge enemies. <laughs> so, if you didn't know that, <laughs> it's selling it to you here because it, it, it throws these scale beasts at you, which are actually, like, really yeah. tough. Yeah. They're, the, they're the strongest regular enemies the game has come up with yet. So there is a category called dodgeless in which we have to fight every single thing. We are equipped to fight the scale beasts, but only with a preemptive strike. That's how strong they are. Yeah, you're not supposed to fight them at this point, because even square tiles, you don't do that. Um, but then just, just put them there. I mean, you can do it. You can fight them, it's just you need to know <laughs> what you're doing in order to be able to kill them without getting killed yourself. <laughs> but yeah, as you can see, there's like nothing really big happening right now. Uh, failing dodges in Chapter 6 is also usually upsetting because most of these dodges are also very easy. What he means to say is if you um, fail a dodge, the dodge in Chapter 6, you're a pleb. 
I am Aria. a very big pleb. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, my, my record is failing four dodges in this. And it's not even that long ago. It was, I think, in one of my relay preparation runs. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, normally these dodges, if you pay attention and don't YOLO them, they should always work. Uh, in these cutscenes, we basically find out that... Uh, we talked a little bit about the Falsies and Lucies and all of that stuff that's complicated and doesn't make a lot of sense. We basically find out that Sez's child is a cocoon Lucie. So his task is basically to try to identify and find Pulse Lucies. Our entire party is Pulse Lucies, including Saz himself. So he's like fighting his four-year-old son, which is very tragic. Okay, yeah, that was a close one, actually. Um, but yeah, we're pretty close to the bot. Okay. Well then. Uh, yeah, I said it's unlikely, but it's not impossible. Pleb. I'm sorry, Kaya. You're pleb. Pleb. confirmed. <laughs> okay, I actually have no idea how they are positioned on the retry, so I have to watch it a little bit. Okay, nice, easy. Um, but yeah, that can happen. I was too close to them. I should have actually been like one step more through the right, and it would have worked. Like I would have taken um. that too, to be honest. That uh, that yellow frog is just snipe. <laughs> You can go for a donation if you want now. Yeah, but the boss fight is like 30 seconds. <clears throat> so we can do it either before or after. Yeah, it's fine. We have time. <clears throat> I, I'd like to say that this is a chill game, but I would be lying. So, <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I, I can quickly explain a bit of the boss. For the beginning, like I will go into a paradigm that is called symbiosis, which puts Vanille into a medic and Saz into a synergist. And Saz's AI, because Vanille is in a medic, will not buff her. Um, it will prioritize Saz himself. So Saz will always only buff himself first and then buffs Vanille. But I make use of that because I only want buffs on Saz. Uh, because Vanille is our healing and debuff bot in this, while Saz does the damage. Yeah, so um. basically, the synergist AI works in a very specific queue. Um, it will always prioritize uh, team members, unless that team member is a medic. In that case, it will prioritize a synergist. And there's, that's really all we have to work with um, in order to manipulate the synergist AI. So there are a couple of fights where it's going to be awkward. Uh, this is also the reason why we are just going to lead Saz for most of the game. So to make sure that we are optimal with our buffing. Yeah. Okay, got deep protect. That's the strat good. here is a, is a slight trade off because you are just sitting there with Vanille, not really doing anything except healing for the first few turns, but at least you get done with the buffs really quickly that way. Ooh, Ooh so close. That's fine. And once again, really important to keep them interrupted here for this fight, also because once they are uh, down a little bit of HP, uh, they will start doing their move called Bella, which powers them up, but more importantly, it gets rid of their debuffs, which we want to keep. So, keeping the interruption here, make sure that they just don't get it off. Uh, poison is actually really handy for this, uh, because Poison has a strange property where it interrupts the enemy twice, uh, once when it hits and once when the status actually inflicts. Uh, since debuff infliction uh, percentage uh, raises with chain, we are pretty much guaranteed to get the inflictions during stagger, so that way we can consistently keep them interrupted by utilizing that property of poison. That was a very good fight. Like, now it's dead. Like, cannot lose at this point. Yeah. <clears throat> I just do it bone last ATV refresh, make sure yeah. Sal starts attacking immediately without doing the ready animation. And uh, that's the fight. And the Vanille there really isn't contributing to the uh, the damage pretty much at all. It's it's really all Saz with the, the upgraded power wristband and his upgraded weapon. He's just rolling out numbers. Yeah, there are two strats for this fight. Both of them are equivalent, but this one is way more consistent. The one that I go for, which is a double tight turner, has Vanille as Saboteur instead of Medic, so Saz will buff her even though she's not really contributing to damage before he buffs himself. The advantage of this strat is that you gain a lot more chain because during the time while Saz is doing buffs, you are chaining with Vanille's debuffs, so you just spend a lot less time actually staggering them and then... and 
because you're also one saboteur for way more often you're also guaranteed the buffs way easier because on this strat if you miss the protect on your first two strings you just cry because you need to continue <laughs> you're going fishing for that to protect yeah, before but to, you can actually try to kill him to, to be fair like you do on on Enki with this strat now you do six D protects and each missed debuff cast increases the chance that the next one will hit so it's extremely unlikely to miss it after all six. But you um, can still miss it. You can still miss it, but it hasn't happened Total to me yet. Total tie turner, you can still miss it. <laughs> but yeah, welcome to chapter seven. This is the home of hope. Uh, it's looking pretty cool in my opinion, even though we will not really use hope. <laughs> and unfortunately, he's not really welcome back yeah. home, so we have to sneak in through a little, little yeah. sneaky pipe back here. Missing this dodge is very awkward because it also messes up the setup for the next dodge. I haven't dodge. missed that one in a while, actually. I've kept missing this one in my runs recently. Just go for the pipe. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's the coward's way out. Okay, so for those who don't know that, there's a pipe on the left side that takes like seven seconds longer than the dodge, but makes the dodge very free. It just, yeah. Um, but usually, like, I get the dodge like, I don't know, 18 out of 20 times, if I would guess, like 9 out of 10. So it's not not <laughs> simplify not your fractions, Kaya. <laughs> <laughs> not it's worth to uh, to take the pipe usually, but if you fail the dodge, it's a bit annoying because then you're like, why didn't I go to the pipe? But yeah. Yeah, this this chapter is kind of like chapter four, where there's a bunch of really obnoxious dodges, but combined with way harder fights than the ones on chapter four. The dodges are not hard. Chapter four is. It's really hard dodges, most of them are something possible. On this fight, they're really just obnoxious. Sometimes they will just catch you without really nothing you could have done about it. They're like, eh, fine, I'll just decept past this, whatever. Yes. Yeah, totally. MacGyver125 donated $5. That's the amazing couch. GL Kaya and awesome comments, Pharaoh and 20. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, we also have time for more if there are more. We are almost reaching the cutoff or the, the Haka fight. Well, Do it mid run. <laughs> do it mid run. Do it. <laughs> Depends on how I'm there, I guess. I will, I will do this. It'll be fine. That's how you do a blindfolded fight, right? Just the hands in front of your eyes. I mean, it's still like three hours. I yeah, we are definitely going it's to three, do like, the blindfold. It's still like three hours until there, so we have time. <laughs> um, but yeah, keep donating <laughs> if you want to see that, and if you want to uh, support Save the Children, and want to also see Edelnil going bald again. Oh, yeah. Um, if at 150,000, which is stream 1 and stream 2 combined. Yeah. But If yeah. we reach 150,000, Edelnil will shave his head again, so <laughs> please donate for that. Oh, it's going to happen. This is important. It, he will do that on stream, so... Yeah, I think at the end of the event. Yeah. I, I have no idea why. Or like, I don't know, either at the end of the event or once or it's soon reached. soon it happens. But be he cool. will do that on stream, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, we are approaching a pretty cool fight that I will probably do the safe strat for on this because I haven't like tested the fast way yet. And the fast way requires full 60 FPS throughout the entire fight. If you get a frame drop, you will miss the kill. Um, so I'm not sure if I should do that. Just do the um, old strat, that's the one we know. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a, it's a summon fight where we leap Snow and Snow has Shiva as the summon, so we fight with Shiva. This is an obnoxious dodge. I hate this dodge. It happens. Yeah. Because they flail their arms all around, sometimes just bop. These are my favorite enemies to fight, though, because you, you just keep hitting them and then the you get yeah. the wee 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 wee, -wee, 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 -wee <laughs> yeah, for have, like, oh, these fight, fight these, dice, these fights in Dodgeless, the, the, the chat's a riot doing these fights <laughs> on Dodgeless. But yeah, um, the summon fight is a fight that when I played this game casually, I didn't know that you can actually kill this with one summon, and I don't know if Square intended it to be killable with one summon. But if you don't ever lose chain you and chain high enough, you can kill it without like going out of the summit. Yeah, there are a few um. fights where the game just puts you instantly on just alt mode. And this is one of them. And uh, all of them can be finished while you are on just alt mode. 
All right, so let's see. That's a specific input pattern, which is different on console, because on console, for some reason, each of the wheelies that I'm going to do will hit two times, whereas on PC it only hits once. Um, so on PC you have to always fill in something else after one wheelie, which is like this move usually, to like increase the chain, which is not needed on console. I love this chat on console, you just mash circle, <laughs> you can go to sleep. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, I was told that back in the day, uh, Sharky used to take a toilet break during this by yeah. just going to the toilet and mashing, <laughs> uh, mashing the button. Hey, I did that too. <laughs> Once I was running PS3. Yeah, he died. Okay, so this is how it should go. Uh, you can cut out one of the inputs at the end when you have entire 60 FPS. But for safety, I didn't do that. And I got an incentive, incentive chip. chip is nice. Really nice. That's 2,500 gil. I need at least two incentive chips by mid chapter 9 for my menu. Um, so it's very good if I already got one here. Yeah, it's pretty unlikely to get it here, but uh, yeah, it's nice to have it early. But we have backups in case I'm short on money, so it's not too bad. It loses a bit of time in the run. But uh, the way the gil is routed, like you usually can never die by being short. Do you uh, need the fort chest here? Nope. No, he doesn't. I got he a decept and a fort. Very nice. At this um, at the end of this corridor, there's a little detour you can take to grab a fortisol. You can um, maybe see it from here. If you don't have a bonus, then you uh, get it here. There's a chest at the end, behind these guys. Yeah, then you can just activate a decept, because like in most situations, the enemies actually guard chests. The chest itself is inside the battle zone, so you have to fight those enemies in order to be able to access that chest but that one in particular is just outside the battle zone so you can actually just decept past them open the chest and cancel the decept on the encounter on the other side again and you just walk away with the free fort you lost 30 seconds but the fort is way more important than those yeah. 30 seconds so this is a fun dodge no one likes oh this my dodge. god i tried the other way this time and it also didn't work yeah these guys with the lances are really fast yeah, they are based on proximity, so, so uh, they don't charge immediately at you when you enter the battle zone, but they start charging after a certain amount of, like, uh, yeah, basically when you're close enough to them. The problem is they are that fast that, uh, depending on your position, they just catch you before you pass them. Uh, the third time it works, so... Yeah. Uh, this one is pretty much just YOLO it and hope that he's not catching you. Because we need to go into that very tight door there. Um... Uh, so you can say hi to Fang, the sixth party member that um, we are going to use. We're just going to use it, use it for these three dodges. They're extremely difficult dodges. You just hug the the right, the left wall. Very hard dodges. And now you can say bye to Fang because <laughs> we're not going to see her for the next ten minutes. Yeah, normally you're supposed to fight three fights there. Uh, to get to know Fang's playstyle, but we already know that, so why would we fight them? <laughs> um, so we just run past the enemies. There's nothing. A state of emergency has been declared. Hope and Snow are a very weird team to use, just like kind of like um, uh, Lightning and Hope, but at least Lightning has Blitz. Snow does not have. I mean, I. Don't no snow's blitz is on stage eight, right? It's super. I mean, we late. definitely don't get it during any. Yeah, I think it's I think it's super late in development, so you don't even have access to that. So you have to fight all these guys with snow, just punching them one by one while hope flings spells. All of these fights are really awkward and also really slow because you don't have AOE at all. Yeah, it's a bit of a bit of a tedious section when you yeah. do the fight. Hey, and then some runners thought it's a good idea to cut out an item for snow that gave him 20 extra strength. Um, to save time in chapter 2. <laughs> because we previously got another power wristband that oh, Snow yeah. would have here, uh, which gave him 20 extra strength. But for the fight, like, the fight is really decided by, like, how long Shiva stays out and not by how strong Snow is. Yeah, basically. So it doesn't really matter too much if he's a bit weaker or not. Um, like, it's nice to have that power wristband if you can afford to grab it, which all the longer categories grab it for reasons that have nothing to do with this chapter. <laughs> But um, it's completely so irrelevant if really you don't need it, just don't use it. This is a really interesting section. You can 
um, move backwards with snow and start to camera trick, and you can just hug the left wall and none of these enemies will catch you. Yeah, if you don't miss the timing. Like, you can still be caught if you're, like, a bit late. Um, but normally they don't catch you when you're fast enough. Time's a and we're also approaching some of the hardest dodges in this chapter, in which I will use Deceptor Souls. So yeah. they're not hard. They're not hard, well, it's just they impossible. they are hard because we have to use Deceptor Souls. <laughs> sure, yeah. Ba basically, <laughs> any basically any time the game makes us dodge these uh, big floating bikes, we're going to decept them because they are just way, 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 way too fast. Yeah. Did we? Did we? Oh, we oh did. wow! Nice. Yeah, nice. Nice. Okay, we hit 36k, so I have to do the blindfold of pause. That's during going to the be run. Fun. I can do it during the run. Or I can give it like three tiles during the run, and then if I yeah. don't get it, thank do you it for 36,000, everyone. Yeah, thank you. I guess three times during the run is a good shot. Yeah. It's usually working first try, but sometimes, uh, yeah. Oh shoot! <laughs> I might do input. I might do input mistakes that can happen. Um. Leave this to me. We'll see. So we just activated the septisol here because bike dodges so are wrong. literally impossible that was very unless early. <laughs> bike dodges are literally impossible unless you're a wizard and you want to run shroudless for some reason. There have been runners who did shroudless, but that's a fun thing about shroudless. Like earlier, we were mentioning that like the lack of deceptisols is the main problem in shroudless. Um, yeah, you have and to the do these dodges without shrouds, and I'm not sure I, I if the backup, if you get caught, is to fight them or it's, just try it, yeah, again. It's, 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 it's basically fight fighting these oh, things, okay. which makes it really insulting because there's a, there was a chest back there that you can only pick up if you kill the enemies. <laughs> and guess what that chest has? It has <laughs> a Deceptisol. So the only <laughs> category where we can actually pick up that chest <laughs> is, the, is the one where we can't use it. No, no, no. Dodgeless picks up that chest. Okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> true. Okay, sure. Dodgeless yeah. picks up that chest. Sure. But yeah, what I wanted to say about Shroudless is, and that's something funny with like how quote unquote annoying the, the category is probably that like almost all of the runners who tried Shroudless runs did one run and then <laughs> never, never again. again. <laughs> um, that's the correct way it, to do except it. Except for Rooster, I think. Rooster tried multiple ones. But all of the others have like one finished run and then they never played it again. <laughs> yeah, but Rooster is a wizard, so... Okay, menu time, I need to focus a bit. Uh... Yeah, we are going to sell a bunch of things here for just for money purposes. We are also going to, for the first time, empty our components. Uh, the components that we picked up for um, on all these fights. Most of these don't sell for that much, but it's, it's nice to get the bit of extra and to just clean out your inventory because... Yeah. That's the main reason, I yeah. guess. Uh, and we, with uh, all this, this money, we buy components and we are looking to upgrade two weapons in particular. We want to upgrade the Wild Bear for snow and we want to upgrade the Bliss Fire Saber for lightning. Um, just to give them a little extra, um, a little extra strength on uh, both of them. Yeah, it used to be the Blaze Fire on level 20 and Snow's weapon on level 21. Uh, some runners have been shifting that around to Lightning's weapon level 21 and Snow's weapon level 20, which I've been doing as well. Uh, that has the advantage that like the fights you do with Snow right now, and until you're in Chapter 11 where you max his weapon out normally, are not really mattering a lot, honestly, whereas Lightning you play in a lot of the fights, and yep. she actually matters, so yep. it's way better to have her be stronger than Snow at this point. Yeah, from here and until the point where you start really using Snow, you have like three fights where his strength doesn't really matter, so... Yeah, he's either in the fight as long uh, as well as Lightning is, so like they're in the same fight, or like Snow is in a fight alone, which does like depend on different things usually than his own strength. Now you'll notice that Hope's HP here is still incredibly low because we've barely been leveling him. That's actually on purpose, but it doesn't really matter for this fight because we're not really going to use Hope for too long here. Uh, in a second, we're going to use a summon and use that as our real secondary party member for this fight because it's just better than hope. Yeah, we're waiting for Tailhammer, and this guy hates using Tailhammer. <laughs> yep. Like, that is a bit RNG. Like, we know roughly from which point onwards he can do it, but when he actually does it is RNG. Yeah, and we try, we try to use the summon animation to skip getting launched by it. Oh, wow, that was good. That was really good. He had yeah. only one and didn't launch snow. After Overdrive, he will always do... Tail hammer again. It can target either of the Shiver sisters or Snow. If it misses Snow, it's actually really good. 
Yeah, this is a fight that's just super safe now because Shiva will stay out for a long time. If if the enemy would have hit both of these Shiva sisters with his tail hammer, they would lose twice the summon points and would be dismissed way earlier. But he only hit one of them, so they stay for quite a while. Yeah, this is basically the perfect Wushu fight. Well, I might get a long animation now when they leave. Oh yeah, <laughs> no. Yeah. So when yeah, a summon bad. gets dismissed at the same time that an enemy dies, you have to wait for the summon to be replaced by the party member that they replaced themselves for the fight to be over. Which is a little time loss, but it's also really rare to happen. I mean, usually they, the fight is just slower and they leave before you get... Um, before the yeah. fight ends anyway. Yeah, normally you have like to do like two or three strings with Shiva being gone. Yeah. The fact that she stays until the end is very rare. But it's also very good when it happens. <laughs> because the summons will auto heal you, so I don't have to worry about my HP as long as Shiva's out. Oh, wow. Yeah, this, this guy, guy sometimes, sometimes. Do that, does that. It's another obnoxious dodge. I hate this dodge. I mean, there are a lot of dodges that are not the, the nicest, so... <laughs> but there's also nothing better you can do than just, like, go on the left and pray that he's not doing that. <laughs> <laughs> This usually works, but... <laughs> yeah, like, there's a lot of things on 13 that's like, this usually works. Right. All right, try three. Third try is the charm. Yay! Ay. Okay. Like, the worst one is usually the next one with two of them. Yeah, but this dodge with two Orions can be kind of sort of manipulated. Yeah, but it doesn't always work still yeah. for some reason. It works for the majority of the times. Yeah. So there are two things you can do on this dodge on console and on a specific PC setup. You can just camera trick and go and they will not care about you and you don't care about them either. And on um, PC normally you have to manipulate where they look. They will slowly turn like that and that delays when they actually start going towards you. And then it's just a matter of can you reach the end of the battle zone before they can reach you. Yeah, that was flawless. Yeah, that was really good. Like, when you put them behind you with that setup, uh, they take a while until they actually charge again, and then you usually have enough time to make it to the end. I've had that once. It just... They ran all the way in front of Fang and blocked exactly the way where I was going. Like, okay, oh, wow. game, thanks. <laughs> All right, we're about to do something very recent. Uh, or like, I'm doing something very recent. Oh my god. Failing <laughs> the dodges, this dodge is very recent. <laughs> the dodge is in this chapter today. Yeah, this um, has not been a great chapter seven. <laughs> the run so far has been really, really great, but this chapter is like... Yeah, eesh. this is by far the roughest chapter so far. But yeah, uh, there's something for this next menu. Uh, we talked about generating paradigms earlier. This used to be a menu that we didn't generate on, but oh, you can do that thing. Okay, yeah, you I can do a hybrid now about. that, like Left Bishop, one of the Japanese runners does, where you generate the first half of the paradigm and then manually input the second half of the paradigm deck, which is actually a bit faster. That's and, janky. <laughs> and saves an extra menu that would have happened between the next two fights. Yeah. All right. Hope solo. Let's go. You can do it, Hope. Believe. Okay, let's protect this. Yeah, 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 we just to... protect it. Oh my god, I was oh, too no. slow. Oh no, oh. we're dead. I tried. Uh, yeah, no, this, I is tried. A, this is debated. We... <laughs> <laughs> there are two ways to finish that All fight. Right. One of them is by um, doing 5% damage, I think. And the second I, one I is I think it might dying. just be 1%. It's not, it's not that much. Yeah. But, and the um, second one is just dying. Yeah, this is actually the reason why we've purposefully kept Hope's HP low so that he dies to only two attacks there. Why is it bully? <laughs> yeah, that looks good now. So, this next fight is the true Ushum Gal, the second Ushum Gal fight. This one, yeah, you have fight, you fight this guy three times with Snow Lead, with Hope Lead, with Lamau, and with <laughs> Fang Lead. <laughs> and this is the real fight. This is one of the longest fights in the entire game. And the whole reason why this fight is so long is because you cannot actually use shrouds in this fight. If you try to use a shroud before you hit this trigger, you are going to use that shroud on hope and not on the real fight. Yeah, it's real unfortunate. Most of these uh, early game fights where we don't have access to the uh, offensive buffs and debuffs that Saz and Vanille provide are uh, prime candidates for Fortisols, but yeah, we just can't do it here because of the little hope fight beforehand. Alright, so for this fight, we want to actually gain duration by spamming slow because 
that gives you duration that chains a little bit and also slows down this guy's attack speeds because he's pretty relentless if you don't do not have slow. After he has slow and you hope puts protect on everybody, that's actually important on this fight. We are going to work on uh, starting chaining. We want to stagger this guy and then this guy is susceptible to launch. It's the first time we are going to launch it to launch an enemy. Uh, and this oh, positioning, yeah, this yeah. positioning is really bad. Sometimes yeah, when you get into this positioning where he's targeting lightning and he turns sideways towards Fang, uh, when when he's in the air, the the wing kind of pushes you out of the way and you miss hits. Uh, this is probably going to be a slow fight because of that. Yeah. Okay. I, I, so I waited okay, a bit then. to make him turn. But yeah. Okay. It worked this out. is good now. So we want to keep him juggling him in the air as much as possible, uh, so he's not a, so he doesn't attack us. Afterwards, we are going to combo for a combo for a Thandara and continue uh, hovering him for as much as possible. And the reason why we want to do this is to make sure that we can do oh my God, smite the at the end. <laughs> yeah. That That's attack actually good. helped. <laughs> that attack actually helped. So that uh, ability smite there, if you are attacking an enemy right before they're about to recover from stagger and they're in the air, uh, you'll do that move there, which is like... Uh, three or four times a regular attack. Yeah, it's an insanely high damage multiplier. So here we are going to actually use a Fang as a Sentinel. We want her to be targeted instead of the other two because she can actually tank really well this guy's attacks while the other two really can't. After that we sta we stagger counts we staggered it again and now it's just to uh, just keep him in the air so he doesn't do anything until he dies. Yeah, essentially, that should, be, should be safe now. So, uh, previous fight. This is a very recent strat. Uh, what everyone is basically still doing is doing two relentless assaults. Meanwhile, Kaya is ATB refreshing with a smart bomb because you, even though you are getting an ATB refresh when you shift from relentless to another relentless, you still want oh, to wait a little bit while to for Rishu to be in the air before you can attack, so you can keep the juggle going. And since you have to wait, you can ATB refresh in Smart Bomb and go immediately into back into Relentless Assault. That will give you enough time that you can keep the juggle. And also free up um, a Paradigm, which allows you to use Double Aggression, which is what we want on Hope's House and then later on uh, the Sky Tank fight. Yeah, previously when we had two Relentlesses, I would have done an extra menu just to change the second Relentless into a, an Aggression after this fight, before the next fight. <laughs> But mm -hmm. now that I did it before the boss, we can, don't yeah, we have to don't, do that. You, don't, you still need to open the menu in order to rearrange um, the accessories that Fang and Lightning have. But we don't need to actually go to Paradigms anymore. So here's Hope's House 1. Uh, probably, on average, the, the most disliked fight in the entire run. Nobody likes this fight. And if you think you do, you're wrong. Um, it's a it's a pain because there's several enemies. They're all kind of spread out, and we're trying to get some chain duration on all of them so that uh, Odin's summon finisher can kill them all at the same time. Uh, this that is, should be fine. This should be fine. Yeah. Yeah, you have a lot of a lot of assault points. You just put it on the knight. Two are staggered already. <laughs> the knight needs to go to sleep. Yeah, that that's killing. I took it a bit safe and did a lot of blitzes there, but like, like failing this fight is not nice because you actually have a realistic chance to die if an aerial soldier survives. So you definitely have to make sure that both of those die. Uh, if a ground soldier survives, it's not too bad. Um, but yeah, if an aerial survives, it's very scary. Alright, so this fight is not nearly as scary. There is, um... The guy in the back does have a uh, bazooka, the bombardier. He's pretty scary, but so as long as we focus on him and make sure that he can't get his uh, big attack off, it's not really a problem. I love the strat, by the way. <laughs> like, this is a strat from one of the Japanese runners, Hoishin, which uh, previously used to be a different strat. Um, but, like, the way that we do it now, it's, like, very easy. Unfortunately, I missed the kill here. Oh, nice! Oh, that one's really good. I unfortunately have to use that on bar 2. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it on PC1. Well... If you really want to. I was just memeing a bit. <laughs> but yeah. 
So yeah, we want to use a Fortisol here for the Sky Tank fight. Because uh, the Sky Tank fight without a Fortisol is just miserable. <laughs> um, we develop Lightning in order to get her second accessory slot. Um, shift uh, shift the physical accessories for to lightning and give Fang the mag the magician's mark. And the reason for this is because lightning uses a gun blade, but we actually haven't seen the gun part of her gun blade a lot. And witness this, this is amazing. She uses the gun, and it it's is, super fast. Yeah, the gun is super OP. This is by far the fastest you can ever attack in the entire game. Like. She just rapid fires her entire string in one go. Yeah. If we could actually uh, force Lightning to use this, th she would be a strong contender to be the the party leader for the entire run, but we can. She will always use the blade instead of the gun, so it's really not worth using her. Note that the game never actually tells you you can do this, and even if you use auto battle, yeah. it will actually use, use ruins, ruins here, which is bizarre to me. They yes. put this specific like little extra animation in just for this one fight because the enemy's really far away, and then they most people probably don't even know this is a thing you can do. Yeah. Um, the reason we use the summon there, by the way, is not really to do any of the damage is just because the summon is really good at keeping the heat off of lightning and since lightning is just doing so much damage it's, her own. It, it's just better to have uh, to just make sure she doesn't get interrupted we had a way more passive paradigm deck before we used Odin as well but now it's basically just two aggression paradigms and just go for it once you've killed all the little main parts the main cannon opens up you can actually stagger sky tank and then just Tear and it apart. Then just tear it apart. And try to you try to uh, time it here so that you don't get interrupted when he does the big main cannon. And that was a very nice fight. Yeah, very clean. Very At least something in chapter seven went well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, that's we chapter seven. Two also went well. That's true. That's chapter seven. Uh, now I do a save again. And now we're in chapter 8, which is another very chill chapter in comparison, but unfortunately, unlike chapter 6, there's a lot of RNG in it on both of the boss fights. So I'm curious to see what we'll get. So Saz and Vanille have essentially just decided to peace out and go to a theme park. Physically. So the first couple of minutes of the chapter, aside from this uh, menu here, are just kind of running around there. Yeah, on this menu we grab Blitz, which is the most broken ability ever. <laughs> uh, so, uh, Saz has guns, and Saz on his normal attack shoots two bullets, on Blitz he, sh he shoots seven bullets. The um, multiplier is applied to each one of these bullets, and of course for Blitz it's lower than for his attack, and even on attack, the multiplier for those two bullets is a little lower than a m normal multiplier for attack. The thing is, because Blitz fires seven bullets in a cone in front of Saz, if the enemy is big enough and or close enough to you, um, if like I think you need to hit five of those bullets, it will deal more damage than literally anybody else in the game with a single action. Uh, which is another reason why Saz is so good as a party leader, because you really just want him to use Blitz. But if he's controlled by AI, he will almost never use this ability, especially if you are going against a single enemy, even yeah. if it's a big enemy. The, the idea of Blitz is that it's a, an AoE move, so for most of the characters it's just a single... Um, a single strike that hits in a larger area, but Saz is, is a bunch of individual bullets that can all hit the same enemy if the enemy is big or close. But more important than that, sometimes Blitz bullets can hit more than one enemy. Yeah, they even pierce the enemy Yeah, they as well. even pierce. Yeah. Like, Blitz is very stupid. We'll see it in action very soon, actually. Yeah. yeah. Basically, after we get Blitz, we almost never use a Saz's com for anything other than Blitz's. Yeah, no. regular attacks are almost never used with yeah. Sazby on this point. Yeah, there's one exception later on because we but want to keep an enemy launched, but that's yeah, it. Yeah, it's not... A, it's like you use attacks for timing purposes instead of for damage purposes. Yeah. So this is the city of the um, other than that, we just uh, adjust the equipment. We put the 
shield talisman on Taz, which has them start the fight with Protect, and I think it lasts for a minute. I'm not entirely sure what the timing on that is. Base duration is a minute. Yeah, it's a minute. Uh, we also give him another item that gives him a little bit of survivability, and we give uh, an accessory to Vanille for her to have a little more HP. Unfortunately, we don't have the opportunity after the Sky Tank fight to take the... Uh offensive equipment off of lightning otherwise we could use it here to do more damage but yeah. it's fine the way it is it's this not like enough damage yeah, yeah because for lightning it's pivotal that she, she has those accessories but because lightning and Van oh, saz and vanilla at this point have access to the protect bravery and uh, access to an end spell that will affect weakness against both of these enemies having offensive equipment on saz isn't as important as it is for lightning because we are working with a lot of more multipliers with Saz. And 13 is a game of multipliers. Multipliers <laughs> stack on top of each other and multiply each other even more. Which is why the normal damage cap in um, 13 is five, num five digits instead of four digits. Yeah, and uh, that's something that I forgot to explain earlier while I said like how buffs and debuffs, like how strong they are. Um, if you have all buffs and debuffs applied later on, you will get a damage boost of like five times the damage roughly, like a bit more than five times the damage of uh, what you would normally do just by having all buffs and debuffs applied. Yeah, and all of that um, stagger stacks on top of the stagger bar yeah, that, that, and that, on top that, of your strength that and means on top when of I have, everything. That means when I have like 999% chain and all buffs and debuffs on some enemies, I do basically damage as if I would have like 4500% chain, which is really, really strong. <laughs> Um, and that is because the buffs and debuffs are multiplicative in this game instead of additive. So all of the, the buffs and debuffs just like multiply their buffs instead of just adding them up. And that will, will be multiplied with the chain as well. Yeah, and all of these factors combined are the reason why we do so much damage with so little development. And also why we meme a lot that <laughs> stats don't matter in this game, because sometimes, most of the time, they really don't. As long as you have the right abilities and the right synergies between the characters and the, the elemental weaknesses that you're trying to go for, your stats only really helps you so much. I mean, like, I, I, I'd like to see the people who say stats don't matter do, like, a no-upgrade run or something. <laughs> <laughs> also, here we see Blitz in action, because I wait for this guy to come closer because he has a small hitbox, but now that he's that close... Okay, uh -oh. that well, was Well, this happens sometimes. <laughs> Usually at one shot. <laughs> yeah. I had, like, one Blitz bullet whiff or something. Um, if all Blitz bullets hit him, he's dying immediately. Yeah, for this next couple of uh, dodges, they can be manipulated in a way. For this one, we just run straight past these two soldiers, and for the next one, we wait until the um, the, like, the, the little um, droid is facing away from Sal. Yeah, we had a just good pattern. Strap, had a good pattern, so I just him. went. Yeah. Alright, uh, bless RNG now. Uh, Zwanzig, please. this is your strat. Do you want to talk about it? Um, yeah. yeah, this is the first uh, fight where we're really having to deal with uh, debuff RNG in a major way because he's fairly resistant to it. Um, we try to get as many uh, debuff casts off early, and I, uh, in, in this specific strat, the idea is to raise the chain uh, very early. Uh, then start doing the buffs on Saz so that Vanille gets more uh, debuffs in at a higher percent chain since debuff infliction chance, once again, it scales with um, chain percentage, so you're a little bit more likely to get it early. Nice, you got Some, something. something in clear. Oh, oh my god. Wow, okay. that's very nice. All right. Yeah. So, yeah, the important thing is to get D protect ideally before you stagger so that you can do all these blitzes during stagger with max damage. Best case is I also get poison now too. So if you're very unlucky nice. on this, well. okay, that's good. <laughs> if you're very unlucky on this fight, it is not at all guaranteed that you'll actually kill him in one stagger. But with this uh, luck, it should easily be possible. Yeah, poison assists on the damage. Like without poison, it sometimes gets very, very tired, depending on when they protect inflicts. But now that I have poison, it's pretty much guaranteed to be a good kill. Like one more, and he's dead. Oh, stagger might run out, but mm, nah, nah, you're good. I was very lucky. Yeah, I don't know if I didn't have enough stagger duration or if that was just in general like pretty low chain. Yeah, but I feel like it shouldn't have been that close, huh? <laughs> yeah, usually you should kill with a bit more stagger when you have poison. Yeah. Alright, uh, we do this fight and then after that we have time for some donations again. 
Yeah, for so. now you're just gonna do Sazu's Eidolon fight. This is Brynhildr, it's an original Eidolon specifically made for Saz in this game. This, uh, she... this fight makes use of some really, like, obscure yeah. mechanical wizardry to work. So <laughs> the, <laughs> the way it works is if you alternate abilities, then you get a conditional modifier depending on certain things. Um, if you're specifically if you're hitting the weakness of an enemy, um, so we use end fire here, and by using specifically the attack blitz combination, um, that conditional modifier will activate, uh, and it's a flat modifier on every single bullet that hits of the blitz. So we can raise the guest halt really quickly by doing this. I don't like if she spams like that though. Yeah, unfortunately, it does mean it is very dependent on whether Brynhildr decides to get close to us, because if she stays far away like this, not as yeah. many of the Blitz bullets are hitting. Oh, wow, oh, we're wow. really getting up there with the donations right now. Thank you all so much. Gotta make you the null shave as well. Oh, okay. uh, she's a little too late. Yeah, no, you're fine. fine. Yeah. I was trying to cancel that with a potion, but a little bit too late on that. And now she's really close, so this should yeah, end that, really that fast now. Alright, now we have time for the donation. Knock Frost donated $5. <laughs> Dear FF13 people, please explain the story to us. <laughs> also, at what threshold will Kaya sing my hands? Donation goes to Runner's Choice. I don't know if my hands is copyrighted or not, to be honest. I, I think I think it is. It's <laughs> so I don't know if you should risk this on ESA stream. Shh. Just risk it, it's fine. <laughs> As for the story, yeah. uh, we are currently on the Lindblom. Uh, this is an airship, and uh, now we're off it. Yay. <laughs> this is always, That's all you need to know. This is always my favorite part as someone formerly having run FF9 because in FF9 uh, there's a city called Lindblom and you go there four times and you spend like 20 minutes or so there each time. Uh, on this, uh, In this game we go to an airship called the Lindblom and we're there for about 20 seconds and then never come back. It's very good. <laughs> on this fight you're really hoping for Odin to get the duration back on the infiltrator and then you just... Uh... Thunderfall everybody until they're staggered and they just all die to Zaltet's pin. It's kind of a similar uh, fight as the, the Hope's House won earlier, but it's only way much more consistent. Much more and consistent. now I have to pay attention to drops because now this matters um, for the next shot because I need a specific kill threshold to know if I need to do the backup or not. So we want to see incentive chips in the next two fights. Until next time. Um, okay, that it. Nice. should do it, I guess. Because I already had like almost 4k left. All right, and this is something that changes yep. among runners. Um, Kaya is going to, you are going to summon, right? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I have so. to sort the order out. Okay, now we have it. <laughs> <laughs> Messed this up a bit. That's the problem of like auto-generated paradigms. Yeah, that so was an ether soul. Yeah. Yes. He oh, is wait, going that, to summon. Oh, sorry. Okay. Yes. <laughs> no, that's correct. Okay. So you can sorry. either summon or not summon. For some reason, I have Deceptisol in my head here, but that makes no and sense. The, and the. Um, the idea is exactly the same. You just hit Sandara, have Odin gain back duration if he's not the Actually, dummy. Actually, this is... Ah. Yeah. Now, now this is uh, a <laughs> lost chain because Odin only hit one attack, so we have to do standard falls until we are staggering. Yeah, and now you just stagger everybody again. And, and he's them with like heads. doing the turning as well. Uh, that's actually bad. <laughs> uh... Okay, got it. <laughs> There's one guy who isn't staggered. Well, the others don't, don't need to be. Yeah, uh, only okay. this one. This yes. is the only one that matters. But you normally are supposed to stagger him with one Thunderfall, and not with like all of them. But I lost chain because Odin was only hitting one attack on the <laughs> the raider. Yeah. Odin is trying his best. Yeah. You got another incentive chip, so you should definitely be good on money. Yep. Yeah. The the using the summon there is a relatively new strat. This is why uh, we cut out the backup summon pos uh, potential on, uh, on Proto. Proto earlier is to be able to use summon on both of those fights. Yeah, the summon gives d d multiple advantages. Like on Proto, it doesn't really lose time uh, unless you would have to do the backup and then just die. Um, but it makes Proto on Ice harder and on Fire Ice also harder than usual because you just don't have the summon. Um, but 
it lets us also delay the entire Crystarium and menu until the next boss fight, which then means I can do a lot of extra notes compared to what you normally can do. Um, so it, in, in the end it's like around 20 seconds faster overall to do this if you like don't die on the proto fight. And don't get as bad luck as I got on that fight because I lost like 10 seconds. So we only save 10 seconds now instead of 20. But yeah. yeah. This is a very specific dodge. He's going to camera trick and then do a very certain specific movement in order to be able to get walk right across these two guys. That allows us to use a single Deceptizol for the next three dodges, which is pretty insane. Because these are almost impossible to get without the Deceptizol. Yeah, you can on the retry, but we don't want to do it on the retry. We want to do it on the first try. And on the first try, it's too inconsistent to go for. Yeah. <clears throat> and this this one is the worst one by far. Yeah. Like on the very old version of the notes that I used to learn the category, there was nothing there that indicated I could use a decept to go through them. So I just so stubbornly there for like half an hour trying to get across it. This is impossible. I never <laughs> I never even crossed my mind that I could use a decept there. Yeah, and it lasts until here, and for these guys I just run into them from the front instead of from the back, because if I would to do it from the back, it would be way too close with the Deceptazole because of how long I already had it in use. Yeah, and these... And these guys are very easy to dodge. Sometimes. So, I don't know, I haven't failed that, and like for these, for some reason they don't notice you. Yeah, you just these go guys, between these guys, them. they don't care about you. They're on, yeah. they're on break, they're having a smoke break. But the first dodge, sometimes the guy that is right to your left can just do... A yeah, 90 but, degree turn and go straight I mean, into the, lightning. There are some weird shenanigans with like dodges and like fails that normally shouldn't happen that we already saw in this run. So, <laughs> but as far as I remember, like I got lucky so far on that one. Yeah. On that oh, one, that almost. was really <laughs> close. <laughs> yeah, but, but I mean on these guys, like on these guys on the next one as well, I'm honestly a bit prepared for them to being super aggro. Like they can also be very aggressive. Um. You don't want that to happen, but you have to always pay attention. Like dodges, for the most part in this game, have the similar have a similar approach with how you like want to do them, but like the detail is different. Like mm -hmm. they have specific patterns that they could do with how they move, yeah, but you don't know in advance what they will do exactly. Yeah, and it's important that you adapt to what <laughs> they're doing at any given point, because sometimes they will just do something that you're not expecting, and you either change directions on the flyer is just gonna get caught and lose 10 seconds yeah so we're gonna just do something completely different now and just gonna use Saz and Vanille again again <laughs> but this time with actually being good if like they were they were <laughs> on the theme park they fought as Eidolon and now they're on the same ship as Lightning and the rest of the guys because of reasons well, really, the other uh, party members only came here to rescue Ben. Yeah, that's true. Saz and Vanille I'm, I'm and the, the... The story so, is that they got captured at the end of the previous chapter, and the rest of the party is here to rescue them. But they're also just busting out on their own, so... Yeah. Because Saz's Chocobo is just that OP. It's literally Saz's Chocobo that busts them out. <laughs> <laughs> Aw. I tried that one because I didn't know how the other one was looking. Yeah, you can do this fight with a preemptive or not. Obviously, with the preemptive is way faster, but you can do it without the preemptive. They're just a little more obnoxious that way. Oh wow, Vanilla! <laughs> wow, she landed all three of them. The old man's lead. Let's see what she does on the other one. So the Flanitor is harmless. The Flanborg can be very scary because it, during this time he's charging an attack. If he actually gets that attack off, it one shot Saz. But he got lucky, yeah, that unfortunately. That was pretty good. Yeah. Like 30 seconds is totally fine for a no preempt fight. It's around like 10 seconds faster, maybe 15 in some cases, when you get the preemptive. But it's like not the end of the world to not get it. Also, I don't want this guy to. Okay. He's just not doing anything. <laughs> Yeah. They always have to make these things more complicated than yeah, but that th those are the only ones we have to fight because they're the only ones who are guarding the button. These guys we don't care about. Just gonna run this past them. And <sighs> we are done with Thousand Vanille. Yeah, luckily. <laughs> no, it's it's fine. I always like the Saz and Vanille sections, personally. I, really, I like the Saz and Vanille sections more than music. I like the Lightning and Hope sections. Yeah, they have chill music. 
Um, but I like the three party member sections more than the two party member sections in general. And is Hope really a party member, though? Yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> like, this, is, this is like the Fang and Lightning show, and Hope's just kind of well, there. Maybe the 2.5 party member parties then. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. But yeah. Okay, this dodge that's coming now is also another one that's very random. I hope that I will not be seen by them very early, because if I see them early, that's like improvisation time, and this looks bad. Okay. This looks very bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I had like no choice then to go for it because he was like on the wall. Normally you want to run behind them. Um that they didn't really see you. Okay. That should work. Ooh. It worked. It worked. Uh, uh, it really seemed like it touched you there, but <laughs> hitboxes. Yeah. Hitboxes. We'll take those. Mm -hmm. Any day. <laughs> yeah, the story now we are Everybody is on this ship, and Lightning Fang and Hope and Snow, but you don't really use Snow here, are looking for Sazen Vanille, so they're basically just trying to find each other, and they're gonna, that's gonna happen real soon. And it's very interesting that as soon as the entire party is together for the first time, that you are effectively allowed to change party members as you want, as you like. You cannot change party leader yet for plot reasons, but uh, soon after that, you can fully optimize, fully customize the party as you want. That dodge there is a very tricky one, by the way. You have yeah, to like lure him out and then have him turn. We had a slower way back then where we tried to lure him out completely and then like made him back out of the battle zone, but now we do yeah. it faster and it's a bit harder that since then. Yeah, it works because the tip of his tail isn't actually a part of its hitbox. You nice can just step on his tail and uh, you don't enter the fight. He's targeting Vanille, which is very good. Okay, now we got enough duration if he targets her again. We got to the early deprotect on the Vespid soldier, which uh, which uh, allows nice. us to kill it on um, two blitzes, and we want deprotect on the Thermodon because it also because um, gains, it gives you duration and also allows you to kill him faster. So we just stagger it with deprotect. We have Vanilla as medic here because we want the Thermodon to come in closer, so more blitz blitz hit and you just. Hail a hail of uh, um, do, do a rain of bullets on him. Yeah, okay. as you can see, Blitz is very strong if you combine it with buffs and debuffs. That was a very clean fight. 105 was really good. Yeah. Um. And that fight can go very wrong very fast too. It can be very scary. I think I saved before this menu just in case. <laughs> Don't sell the Uranian Knight. Because this is a menu in which you can actually kind of mess you up the majority of the rest of the run. <laughs> yeah, I've killed plenty of run on this menu. Really? Yeah. yeah, I did. Just take it safe. This is the menu where I've lost the most runs too, including several all missions runs. You upgrade a strength accessory that you need in late game as well. So if I mess it up here, we are like under strength later on as well. Pretty much. And saving is like three seconds or something, so... It's PC. <laughs> Oops, not yet. Yeah, so we basically want to sell everything that we got for Gil and um, use that money to buy to buy more components for uh, what we mm. uh, for what we need to to upgrade. In this case, we're going to buy a bunch of crankshafts, which are very expensive. We are going to buy a few sturdy bones as well. I don't want cranks this time because my Gil is good. Oh, okay. Uh, if your guild is good, you can do weak fangs, which is faster. So, yeah. at the end of Chapter 7, we picked up a Brawler's Wristband, which is the better version of the Power Wristband. Unupgraded, it's actually a little bit weaker than the upgraded Power Wristband, but right now we're going to turbocharge that bad boy. Yep. So, at base, right now it's 50 strength, and then with this upgrade, it goes all the way up to 120, and then catalyzing it into a Warrior's Wristband catapults it all the way up to 156 strength. Which is a lot. Which is a lot at this point of the game. And now we do the cross that I haven't done before. <laughs> and a bit more, because we delayed it until this point, so I got more points to use than I would have at the start of the chapter. 
<clears throat> Which is like one of the big advantages. Yeah, for this in particular, we are just going. We are just looking for developing Lightning's Commando. We are going to gain her another role level, which effectively increases the the the, the passive bonus that the Commando role has. We are also going to develop Fang a little bit in order to give her um, Curse, which is a debuff that is going to be used right on the next fight. Yeah, I also have to still get the accessory slot oh, yeah, because the I delayed, accessory slot. delayed the menu until here. Like normally we would have gotten this accessory slot at the start of the chapter, but not now because of the routing change. All right, uh, wait, lightning first. Yeah, and again we swap the magic and the um, physical uh, uh, accessories. Might... We put physical on Fang and magic on lightning because. Lightning isn't going to use the her gun anymore, so it's just better off have her respect for magic and fang spec for right. physical. Now we're doing like one of my favorite fights nowadays, uh, which is Kalavinka Striker. It's not a two-part fight, it's technically a two-part fight, but it's two different enemies actually. It's two different enemies um, that look exactly the same. Yeah, the first one very weak, the second one very strong. But yeah. So the first fight is pretty straightforward. You gain duration by using Fang Saboteur. You really, really, really want to hit slow and curse as soon as possible. And then you just stagger it with um, Relentless Assault and kill it on aggression by using Ruins. The really good thing about curse is that it keeps this guy interrupted even if he's not staggered. Yeah, and here's a stun lock that Zero found out, like 01337, which is if I do one rune here, then four runes after Fang, and then three runes after Hope, he's never breaking out. Which is a very cool stun lock. Unfortunately, it doesn't work on phase two. <laughs> but on this phase, it does work. <clears throat> and that's the first one. <clears throat> and now the second one is a bit harder. <laughs> Yeah, so the f the second phase he gains a new attack, he's a lot stronger, he has this um, um, lightning strike attack that does a lot of damage. If he targets lightning or hope, you have to potion after every single one. If he targets oh, wow. fang, you can um, uh, actually ha have her eat two of them before you have to heal. This is very early curse and slow, which is very, very nice. You cannot interrupt the lightning strikes, but you can interrupt everything else that he wants to do. We are really looking forward to stagger cancelling a particular move that he's going to do, which is called Health from Bolt. This is also the reason why Kai is potioning Lightning, because if he cannot stagger cancel this, he is going to target the character with the lowest HP, which is Hope in this yeah. phase. A bit too late. Yeah. So we didn't get it, so we're just going to prepare a Phoenix down to revive Hope, and now that he is alive, we're just going to kill this thing. We used to use a Sentinel in this fight, uh, specifically to make sure that that attack hit Fang, but we didn't know at the time that it always just targets the character with the least HP, which we can very easily, by healing, just manipulate to be Hope, because he has the lowest max HP, and then we just revive him and go on with our day. Uh, even if he targets Hope again after you revive him, at that point you don't really need him anymore. You can win the fight with just Fang and Lightning. Yeah. <clears throat> And uh, now that the entire these two cutscenes that we skipped just reunite the entire party, and now you finally <laughs> have access to battle team formation. You can actually choose. Except for the leader. Except for the leader still, <laughs> but you can actually choose who you want Lightning's buddies to be, and you have to get used to Saz and Snow because they are going to be part of your BFFs forever now. <laughs> We're just gonna the, the main the um, late game party is going to be Saz, Snow, and Vanilla, and we will touch upon them later on. The only reason why we aren't leading Saz right now is one, Lightning is still kind of convenient to use, and two, we are forced to use Lightning, so we're just gonna we're just gonna go with her. <clears throat> On this menu, we are developing um, Snow's Ravager. There is a very specific ability we want him to have before the next fight. <coughs> we put all physical strength on the Lightning with a Doctor's Code in order to be able to survive the onslaught that this boss is going to do towards us. 
we put the rest of our strength equipment on snow and we spec sass for magic uh, because his ruins are uh, um, more convenient for us timing-wise than his normal attacks, because we know he's not going to use Blitz. Oh, I didn't get haste. These enemies oh, got, can... Haste. These enemies deal a fair amount of damage, but once you start hitting them, they start just wasting a lot of their time trying to heal each other. Yeah, which so. is why we also don't really need to heal once we have the one guy staggered here, because Lightning keeps him interrupted and the others don't really do anything. Yeah. Um, before you stagger them, it's a bit more dangerous. Before you stagger them, they can just kill you. Yeah. Alright, and then there's going to be one more fight here that we actually need to do. This um, should normally be a series of four fights, at least, that you do here in order to uh, be able to activate these switches, to activate the bridges, um, so you can get down to the bottom. Um, but after this fight, we're going to do a little bit of a tricksy do. Uh, this fight is going to be another summon fight. The main target here is the Psychom Reaver. Everything else will pretty much just die incidentally. Um, this is the first instance of us using Quake, which uh, instantly maxes chain duration on every single enemy in the fight. I don't think it maxes it. Um, it's pretty it, it gives high, you a, a ton of chain it duration. It gives you a ton of duration. Yeah. Like, uh, Quake basically guarantees that I'm not running out of duration even without Commando and Saboteur usage. Um, and since I start this in Triple Ravager, I would lose Chain very quickly without Quake. Yeah. That's why I did the Quake before. So right now we want to use Untet to kill everybody, but the enemy with the highest HP is the Reaver, so as long as the Reaver has high enough Chain, everybody else just also instantly dies. Okay, now let's try this. Put it off to the side after. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not in Swansea's reach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So okay, we got money. Nice drops. Now what he's going to do is he's going to activate this bridge, go down a little ways, and then run back. Uh, once he's run down far enough, the first encounter that we just fought will have respawned. Uh, then we're going to run into that encounter, and then the next encounter is going to suddenly be gone. So why does this work? We, we are using this technique uh, to skip both of the last two fights that we're supposed to do. Now, the way this works is each uh, enemy encounter in the game has a spawn and despawn line um, that if you cross those, they'll either spawn or despawn. Um, so the what we do there is uh, Conveniently, both the spawn and despawn lines for that uh, for the encounter that is normally on this platform that we're now running to uh, are located in the battle zone of that encounter we just ran back to. So what happens, we're going to do it again here, so I'll, I'll explain it as we do it. Uh, we, again, run down far enough to respawn another encounter. Uh, we run back into that zone, cross the despawn line for the next uh, fight so that uh, they disappear, then run into the actual fight, retry it, and when we retry, we get placed back just outside of the battle zone. Now, this means that we, through this transition that is happening right now, are effectively crossing the spawn line without actually crossing it, and in that way, the trigger for the enemies respawning is never hit. So they are just gone now because we despawned them and then didn't spawn them again. It was a random viewer who told Logic that this was possible. Yeah, yeah someone just came into the Discord and was like, hey guys. Uh, it wasn't a stream, I think, but it was I a random guy um, that knew that despawning is possible here. The way that we do it now was like for, uh, found by Rooster, who actually looked more into it. Yeah, the exact... Um, yeah, because, the, the because exact after finding yeah. out that this was possible, like, the route suffered so many different iterations. Yeah. <laughs> Until we found that this was possible and actually optimal. Yeah, there was a little while while we were, where we were only um, despawning the second one, but yeah, this is the, the simplest and best way to, to do it. And yeah, getting a bunch of stats, and then we have, like, my favorite boss fight in the run. <laughs> Uh, so I hope I will not mess up the strat. Yeah, this is an extremely technical fight, which also has a little bit of RNG involved. But the goal, the end goal for this fight is 
a little bit like Proto, you want to keep a stagger lock on these on this enemy. The thing is, the window for you to keep the stagger lock is way tighter. And you have an entire first phase before you can actually do this stun lock, so this guy is really not a, tri a trivial fight. And it's also the main villain in this game, which is the Falsy Barthandolus, the head of the Cocoon Falsies. We fight him three times, and all three fights are pretty difficult. Yes, for <laughs> Casually different end reasons. In the speed run. For different reasons, but all of them are very hard. So I really love um, the strap for the first part of this fight. So there's the, the four heads here. <laughs> um, you've got to take these out before you can really damage the main head. They're all weak to different elements. So the way we're set up right now, we've got a Fortisol, so most of the buffs that we care about are already on our uh, party. We use a Libra Scope to reveal all these different weaknesses, and now Saz starts buffing all the characters with different end spells. Now the reason it's like this is because we uh, are utilizing a property of the commando role in which uh, different commandos will always target different uh, enemies. So in that way, uh, we are now all targeting and hitting different heads. And since, as, uh, s since we don't just all do one head, then all do the next head, etc., etc., um, we don't have to recast the buffs that much because we just focus on one each with the appropriate end spell. And then, you know, once uh, two of them die, we reposition a little bit. Lightning's now going to be finishing off the head that Saz was targeting earlier. Saz doesn't do nearly as much damage as Snow and Lightning, so she has to finish this one off. Meanwhile, Snow's getting to work on the last one, and now Snow and Lightning can finish the last one off together. Yeah, you hover over the last really hat to the main hat to make sure that Snow targets the hat that oh. is weak to Lightning. That potion didn't go off. All right, He's now not, not looking at lightning. That's fine. We are on the main part of the fight. Uh, the goal now is to stagger him quickly and get him into a stun lock before he uses that Thanatosian smile attack again, ideally. Um, and the main uh, problem that can happen here is if he. Uh, if he's taken enough damage, I think, he uh, starts using a move called Destrudo. Uh, we really don't want to see Destrudo, uh, because what it does is, well, it's, it's, it's a big attack, but more importantly, when he starts charging it, it resets his chain. So that just kind of undoes a lot of our progress. So right now we're starting the stun lock, ideally. And this is Should looking like it. a good setup. Yep. Yeah, this is looking like a good setup. Yeah, I have him. So this is all about getting the strings of the three different party members to line up well with each other to bridge the gaps. And this way we can kill him in one stagger without having to see Destrudo. And that was it. And without really dying too. <laughs> very, very nice bar one fight. That went good. Alright, so the ship that we were on to save Saz and Vanille crash landed because we defeated Bart 1, uh, because we defeated Bart and uh, we get transported into an unknown location which is known as the 10th Arc. 5th Arc? 10th Arc. 5th, I think. 5th fifth, fifth Arc. It says uh, it right there. Yes. <laughs> um, on the, like, we know that the Arcs are a Pulse Legend where they prepare pulse falsies for uh, pulseless seas to war against cocoon so we are basically on a pulse armory that is somewhere on cocoon um and we need to find our way out essentially that's the gist of chapter 10 we need to find our way out of this place we have no idea where we are Um, at this point, well, I guess it's after this fight, right? Af after this fight, we get the ability to actually change uh, our party leader, but we're going to stick with Lightning for this chapter, because her specific skill set is just more useful than Vanille, who we're going to be using uh, instead of her later on. I have been corrected many times over this. You can already change party leaders okay. before this fight. This fight <laughs> unlocks secondaries only. Right, okay. Yeah, I can never problem. remember exactly how that works. <laughs> All right. I'll take your word for it. Like, we, we talked a lot about primary roles, so each character has three primary roles uh, assigned to them. Some of them take longer to get their primary roles than others, like Saz only starts on Ravager and then 
and only later gets access to Commando and Synergist, but those are his three primaries. Um, every other role that the characters don't have at start, they're called the secondary roles. Secondary roles are extremely expensive to, unlo to unlock each node, but they offer you a lot of versatility and also the role bonus for that particular role because it gets stacked on top of the other, so you have a lot more ease to use a Cerberus role, for example, with three commandos, even though if you're using Hope, if you want to unlock Hope's commando, then you can just use him on a Cerberus role, which allows him to do a lot more damage than if he was stuck on the Ravager role for aggression. Uh, for the most part, we won't be using secondaries that much. There's a couple of ones that we kind of dip into. Um, yeah, for some there are two, parts. Two, in, two secondaries that any percent do, does. Yeah. Um, longer categories tend to go into secondaries a lot more because we also have access to a lot more CP, so we can just use that versatility a lot more. And yeah. in the Platinum Trophy speedrun, we need to level everyone fully anyway, <laughs> so... Yeah, the Platinum speedrun currently sits at around 16 hours, like yeah. a bit above 16 hours for PC and for PS3, um, which is very impressive because, like, for those of you who did the Platinum Trophy, it's like kind of feeling like you need to grind a lot, but it's actually not that much if you know exactly what you grind for. I mean, you, you do need to uh, grind a fair amount. You do need to grind but, a lot. Well, but, but, but less than an FF10, for example. You can optimize the grind a lot if you know what, exactly what you're looking for. Yeah. It's like a very, very optimized grind nowadays in the Platinum speedrun. It used to be way longer. Um, just on the grinding part. And I don't know why I ran into that. <laughs> God. You were going to run into them again. Nah, this time it was fine. <laughs> I think. See, like, dodging nowadays for me is kind of like... Breathing. Yeah, it's like... <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that much about, like, how I want to do it. I just do it. With like the amount of experience, like dodging in general is something that like the more experience you have at it, the better you are at it usually. Yeah. Um, at least on a consistent basis. Some of them still suck. Some of them still are random, so you can just not avoid that. That one was obviously my fault. <laughs> um, but yeah. Now, chapter ten is for the most part pretty chill. You have a whole bunch of dodges and two okay-ish fights. Like. Both the fights, are, like, see if you agree with me on this one, Zig. Both the fights on Chapter 10 are way more consistent the better you are at them. But if you're Are we not talking about the last one? Because I hate that one. I, I also, think it's terrible. I also hate that one, <laughs> but if you are fast enough at executing, it's slightly better. I mean, Bahamut is just bad. Bahamut is just bad. Like, sure. Sid is, like, n nowadays with the strat that we use on Sid, as, like, like with we, I mean the, the top runners usually, because it's not a strat that I would recommend for beginners. <laughs> Um, we made Sid significantly harder than he used to be to save 10 seconds, pretty much. <laughs> um, like, we have a strat that is very, very, very safe and comparably easy to learn, and then we have this strat that I'm going to do, which is yeah. extremely hard and very technical. And it saves 10 um, seconds. And it saves 10 seconds, so for, like, beginner runners, it's totally not worth it. Um, yeah, but that's the thing, like, uh, the better you are at Sid, the more you w rewarded you are. And... For Bahamut, it kind of also works that way, but Bahamut is also way more RNG because on Bahamut you are entirely at the mercy of what the pattern you are going to get for him. In Wild Sid, you can actually adapt to what he's doing as well, and if you play well, it doesn't matter what he wants to do anyway. Yeah, you can still have very bad fights though for some reason. Like, especially if you don't uh, cancel the Ruin guy at the beginning, then he does more damage to you, so yeah, you have to do backup. Yeah, can actually die. I died a lot to this Ruin guy. Like, the, the uh, goal is to interrupt him enough early that he will not use a Ruin Gun. If he's using it, then, well, uh, backup time usually. Oh, this dodge is yeah. tricky. Yeah, These they don't even trigger. This dodge is awful. Come on. Uh, we can talk a little bit about cut and keep because that's going to be extremely important for Sid. Yeah. We can do that. We still have like a minute. Mm -hmm. Um, but, but the main reason I'm using strikes instead of spells is because their cut is higher than for spells. Right. Essentially, so they have a higher interruption value. They interrupt better, yeah. yeah. Like with spells, he's not really getting interrupted unless I have like some buffs on myself. Um, so there are two but, interactable yeah. interacting values. You have um, the, the character's keep and an attack's cut. 
They're really uh, weird terms because the, the, the game the, they aren't really officially <laughs> translated because the, like the game never tells you yeah, about these yeah, mechanics. The, the, well, this mechanic is never explained like anywhere. But essentially, the higher a character's keep is, the least likely it is for them to get interrupted by a specific cut. And different attacks have different cut values. Strikes have more cut than uh, spells do, so we are going yeah. to use strikes on this fight to be able to interrupt it more. Vigilance also increases your cut a lot. And cut and keep is also the reason why you want to potion tank a couple of fights, because a potion, the, the act of using a potion just puts your keep on max, so nothing can interrupt you using an item in fight. Yeah, and like on Sid, it's in a way like when I have Vigilance on, as Vero said, like even the spells will interrupt him. Right now, the spells will not interrupt him. Uh, the strikes the spells will. will only interrupt once Sid gets staggered, because when an enemy is staggered, then their um, um, keep value is lowered. All right. So the idea of this fight is uh, pretty interesting. Since Sid is a Lassie, just like our party members, he has access to paradigm shifts just what, like we do. So he changes between a different, uh, few different roles. Uh, the main one that he'll be in is his uh, commando, I guess, offensive shift, uh, where he's going to be attacking us. Uh, but we can keep him interrupted for a lot of it. At the start here, we're using Sentinel, so we're sure that Snow is the one getting hit, but the rest of the fight in this strategy is not going to use Sentinel at all, which is why it's kind of a, a rough, dangerous strategy. And we did get a launch there, which isn't really supposed to happen, so this is already yeah, kind of... very eh. <gasps> Wow. Uh... Should have cancelled the string. That's why I was waiting. <laughs> Dang. Yeah, yeah, this is why you don't want to see Rohingya, because if Lightning gets hit by anything, no, I, I, she will also die to I would have been safe if Rohingya. I cancelled my string there, because Lightning ran into it. Yeah. That was the problem. Like, I I got launched because I did the potion a bit too early. That's the first death of the run, though. Yep, and it was, like, entirely on me. <laughs> like, I, I mean, potioned too early. At least it was early into the fight. I potioned too early, so I got launched, which you're not supposed to, and if Lightning gets launched, it's very bad. Alright, let's pretend that didn't happen. So this is Sid. We are just gonna <laughs> use strikes to keep him interrupted forever. <laughs> <laughs> but you just saw how quickly this fight can go wrong, right? That, that's the thing, like, now you saw perfectly how quickly this can go wrong. Thank you. Yeah, it's a very, very advanced strat. Okay, this looks better. Oh uh -oh. god, dude. Oh no. He is just not wanting to get interrupted yeah, today. He yeah, he is not cooperating at all. And the ruin is also on lightning. This time I have it backed up, like now we're good. So, and we want to alternate the interruption from Snow and Lightning with uh, Saz's using synergies to put on uh, to put on the buffs. We really want both um, Lightning and Snow to have bravery, just because it will make the fight a lot faster. Right now he is in his uh, recovery shift, which means we can just kind of go ham on him for a while. He doesn't even really heal for very much. We, we are hitting him for more damage even like now when he's not staggered yet. Yeah, this looks very good though with the chain. It should be a win. Lightning, nice. So now we should stagger and start interrupting him before his next attack. And then try to shift into a commando and launch yeah, him immediately. So, there's supposed to be a whole second phase to this fight, uh, where he transforms, uh, grows wings... And he becomes very, very scary. Shoots a big laser beam at you, his combos start getting crazy, but we don't see any of that because we... Uh, before we trigger the HP threshold for him to do it, we launch him into the air and then just kill him before he can do anything else. Yeah. If he does get that off... Uh, there is actually a backup for it nowadays because we have enough TP to summon on that fight. Uh, which, uh, using the summon, uh, we can get through that big laser beam without dying. And then afterwards we can uh, chain a bit extra and then kill with Odin's uh, Zantatsken finisher. Because Sid's HP is actually fairly low, so it, it actually works um, yeah. if you chain high enough. Uh, if you have time now for a donation, you can go for it. Yeah. Anonymous donated fifty dollars. Thank you, Anonymous. Oh wow, thank you. <laughs> but yes, it is a very, very difficult fight, and like the first time I died just because of my own fault. As I said, I potioned too early, 
Um, on the second fight, it was totally fine. Lightning was on low HP, but that is always safe. Like, that's routed. Because, like, when he targets Lightning, I'll execute, like, two or three strikes, depending on the timing, uh, to, to just stay on the ground. Because while Lightning attacks, she's not being able to get launched by him. This is the bomb carousel. <laughs> just run around. Hope they don't catch you. Yeah, that was a bit unoptimal. <laughs> yeah. Had to do another tiny circle around them at the end there <laughs> while the elevator was at the bottom. But Yeah, usually you want to be at the end of the elevator already once it's at the bottom so you can just exit it immediately. Yeah, yeah, the, the it was actually good. Like the first time... Well... <laughs> but, but Di the second dying was wasn't great, but... <laughs> yeah. The second fight was clean. There's not really much going on on the rest of the chapter. So, Seed is a cocoonless sea. He, his role was actually to help us. So, um, the entire reason why the plot of this game happens is... Well, the Maker, which is God Almighty, uh, descended upon the world. He made humans and he made Falsy. So, Falsy, you can consider them like supercomputers that are programmed to do a single task, that are very, very good at that single task. Meanwhile, humans, they don't really have a task, so they can do anything they want. In order for Falsy to be able to utilize the power of humans, of their versatility, they make them less see. They give them, hey, I need you to do this job for me. And if you complete the focus, you get turned into Crystal. If you don't, you get turned into a zombie. It's like, it's a lose-lose situation, but it worked for a while. Until humans started turning on each other, because that's what we do. We just go to war, we kill each other, like, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and the Falsy started getting tired of watching the humans do all these fights. And they want to bring the Maker back. In order to do that, you need to sacrifice a whole bunch of humans. At least, that's their theorizing. They, they think that the Maker has gone into, like, the afterlife, and they're like, well, if we just throw the door to the afterlife wide open by having a whole bunch of people go through there all at once, then maybe Daddy maybe will come the, back. The, maybe the, the Maker will come back. And Sid... And Sid knows that we are the tools for the Cocoon's destruction. We are the tools to make that huge sacrifice happen. Because Cocoon has millions of people in there. If we make Cocoon fall, because that's what Paul's Falsy wants, which isn't, it's what every Falsy wants, then they get what they want, but millions are going to die. And Sid's job is literally to help us. Sid's focus was literally to help... Um, this group of people to be able to bring Cocoon down. And he decides to go against us. He, to, okay, so I don't want Cocoon to fall, so I'm gonna go directly against my focus. I'm gonna fight you. I'm gonna try and kill you to make sure that you cannot do this. Yeah. Also, there's like nothing happening, so if there are any donations, you can let them play as well. Like we have. Swift donated $25. Hi. I hope you're having a nice drive, but I couldn't help noticing there's been some crashes and spins. Kind of like Beyblades. For good luck everyone must sing the English opening song of the first season of Beyblade. Let it rip. <laughs> this isn't this was for stream one? Yeah. I don't I don't even know the lyrics. <laughs> Uh, I just know let's be played, let's be played. <laughs> Let it rip. Let it da -da -da -da. rip. The speed of sound. Or that's Sonic. I don't even know. <laughs> okay, fine. Let's, let's be played. Et cetera. Oh, yeah. Okay. That's, that's all we know. <laughs> that's all I know. Yeah. All right. We're about to fight the next Eidolon fight, which is Bahamut, which is by far the one with the most RNG. Uh, that yeah, this can is lose the, your time. This is the one Eidolon fight no one likes. <laughs> like, there are some other Eidolons that have RNG that loses time, but Bahamut has the highest potential. Like, this fight can go anywhere between, like, 40 seconds and a minute 30, uh, depending on what happens. So, we'll have to see. So, the main source of RNG... There are two sources of RNG. You want to land slow as fast as possible to make sure that he's not constantly attacking you. And the second thing is, he actually has two different patterns. You can start with two strings of two physical hits and then whirlwind or you can just go straight to whirlwind the problem with whirlwind is that it launches you if you start with two physicals you have enough time to prepare a potion and make your keep go to max and keep your feet on the ground 
But if you start immediately with Whirlwind, there is no way you can actually prepare the potion on time. Oh, so that's very good. Yeah. Another, another thing he can do is just uh, go to a different party member. So he can tar target Fang, Lightning, or Vanille. If he targets Lightning, Lightning just dies. Yeah, Fang has the Sentinel roll, so she can kind of reduce the damage from that. And we've got our defensive um, buff equipment on Vanille, so she can kind of tank stuff too. But Lightning is just going to die if she gets hit. But this is looking like a very nice fight. Yeah, this is looking like a really good fight. Yeah, that should finish now. Yeah, and it's really interesting because this is one of the few fights where the game gives you... A new set of paradigm, a new paradigm deck because the entire party was changed. But this paradigm deck actually works very well for the Bahamut fight, because usually when the game gives you a completely new paradigm deck, it just does not work. For a download, somehow they are always good though. Well, like not always optimal, but like all of them are like useful to yeah. be able to beat the fight quickly. Except for Odin, maybe there we do a second dual casting. Um, but all of the others I think are fine with the default. Ushu 2, though. Ushu not, Finding Ushu 2 with the default party they that, give you for that's that. It's not is... a summon, though. <laughs> no, I, I know it's not. I'm just giving a, an example of where the, the default paradigm the game gives you are suck. really bad. All right. Uh, welcome to Grand Pulse, guys. This is the planet that we were on the moon of the entire time so far. Yeah. Um, and this chapter will take a while. This is the longest chapter in the game by far. It's not even close. It is It is so long that it is longer than the next two longest chapters combined. Yeah, and if I die on Dahaka a few times, it takes even longer. <laughs> and I'll be fine. <laughs> we got a sub-3 chapter 10. Yeah, we'll see. Yeah, this... this uh, since this is, is effectively uh, one chapter dedicated to an entire world, there are various areas we're going to go through in this chapter, as opposed to the previous chapters, which are mostly like contained to one area. It's kind of sad in any percent we just blitz straight to this, and even then it's one hour long. In every single other category except for Dodgeless, I guess, you have to explore Pulse um, very extensively, and... There is actually a lot of exploration you can do here. There's a lot of areas with a lot of different enemies, a lot of chests, uh, useful things, very, very, very hard fights. Yeah, this is where uh, certain bad faith crit criticism of the game uh, says, <laughs> that, like, this is where the game gets good. I, I would yeah. definitely <laughs> argue against that point, but, you know, this is where the game actually gives you freedom. I mean, yeah. the fights so. are going to be way more fun for me, too, usually in the end game. But they're also way more dangerous and take longer and are significantly harder. All of the yeah, you also have to assume now. that from this point until the end, that we 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 have been under the level under level this entire time. But the game really expects you to explore pulse before you go back into cocoon. So we are very very under leveled by the time we go back to chapter twelve. Okay, so here's Alexander, and since Hope is not really part of our main party, he is incredibly squishy because we have not leveled him up in quite a while. Uh, we've given him a Tungsten Bangle for 150 extra HP, but even with that, he basically gets one shot. Um, so the tricky part here is uh, we use uh, Fang as a Sentinel to target the attacks toward her, and then it's important to time... Uh, certain strings such that Fang stays far away from Hope, so Hope doesn't get clipped by stray punches. And Kai has done it well here. The The hardest part of this is the start. Afterwards, it's fairly simple to just... Yeah, the, like, this is usually a scripted fight once you have Fang not jump at the start. Yeah. Um, as long as you don't do any input mistakes, it should be always a win after that. Like, one of the very few fights where you normally never have to improvise. Yeah, this fight is very, very consistent as long as you don't mess up the sword. Okay, that's, that's pretty much a win now. He switches between patterns where he does a couple of attacks and then he just waits nope. for a while. This is the dangerous one. Yeah, I had to wait a bit for Fang. When he do, whenever he does Lofty Challenge, that means he's just gonna kind of stand there for a while and let you wail on him. 
Yeah, when, when he does Lofty Challenge, that means you can do three strings in Relentless Assault. If he doesn't do it, you can only do two strings. There we go. Clean. <laughs> yeah, only one Eidolon left. Now Which we... is the Eidolon that we're going to use the most? Well, I guess the the most used is really Odin. But yeah, the most, yeah, the uses most used is in really end game is probably Hecaton, but yeah, the one yeah. late game is just Hecaton. Because actually using Bruin Hilder for right. damage. Uh, now the game forces us to lead with Hope, and earlier we said that Hope runs slower, so we immediately changed that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it yeah. didn't like or like wasn't done like here always. Like in older routes, they changed it way very, later. Very, very old routes, but yeah. <laughs> Until they suddenly realized, wait, why do we lose this much time to these other runners who are not leading with hope? And then well, people it, it wasn't. It wasn't really that. It was that um, the 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 Japanese runner who introduced the the new route. He posted like a video comparing uh, the run across this part um, w between hope and and other characters, and we were like, wait, <laughs> wait, wait, this is actually slower. Oh god, what have we done? We, we might have not even realized if, if he hadn't posted specifically a video comparing it. All right, so now that yeah, okay. now that for the first time we're using Saz, Vanilla, and Snow, might as well just go in detail why these... What the hell? What the hell oh is my going god. on Hello. here? <laughs> Hi! <laughs> Where am I running? Oh god. I, I guess that was an incentive. Hello, everyone. That's, that's a Hello. lot of hugs. Oh, yeah. hug. Okay. Thank you. At least I picked a good part to do this in. That's a lot of people. Uh, Hi, Hello. guys. Because. See, we have this perfect, perfect this moment. Perfect. You had yeah, the perfect timing for this. We're just running across this big open field, oh so. This is a fine time How many for are this. Left? Hello. 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 I do have the right. The Final Fantasy community is right there. Even yeah, the tell you. Stream. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. 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 Hi, Hi. 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 <laughs> Whoever right. was responsible for that. <laughs> I need to watch that run. <laughs> Probably argue. <laughs> anyway. Uh, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> we're about to do a quick fight for experience. This is the one time in the run that we specifically do a fight we could easily avoid just to get the experience off of it. Because it helps us hit a couple of really important CP thresholds. Um, and this fight is fairly... Uh, quick for how much it gives because it's two really tough enemies but since they're fighting each other we get an automatic preemptive strike on them i can't stop laughing <laughs> <laughs> yeah we have a better mood now all right swanzik was about to explain sorry yeah the behemoth king in particular is a really tough uh, enemy so we're going to deal with the other guy first and then we'll have to make sure to uh, interrupt the Behemoth King so that he can't stand up. Uh, this this enemy, once they have taken enough damage, they try to stand up. Oh wow! And they completely heal. Wow, this is really good. The new yeah. MVP. All right, easy now. fight. Yeah, and this is the only fight that we actually do for grinding. Everything else we either do because it's a, a gardening and chest that we need. Or there's one more fight later on <laughs> that is theoretically dodgeable, but the dodge setup is very inconsistent and takes like five minutes or more. So we just fight that as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's, it's been said by, I think it was Serena. Uh, logic, I think. Uh, logic the runner that um, <laughs> the reward for fighting um, those rust puddings is not having to not fight the rust puddings. <laughs> <laughs> the dodge is very, very, very weird. Like you have to constantly enter and exit the battle zone and then just pray that they move a bit because they barely move at all. <laughs> uh, and then like hope that they get you, uh, give you a gap. But the fight is like 25 seconds, so why bothering with that, right? Yeah. I don't even want to think and it's worth uh, a few of CP as well, like the Crystarium points. Or, like 
They actually ha are called crystal points, I think. Uh, I think it's crystal Christo points. Christogen points. Christogen points. Christogen points. Yeah. It's yeah. I, I I recently actually like watched the tutorial uh, for the crystarium because I was um, doing a casual playthrough, and they they explained that like the filling in of the nodes they call it Christogenesis, wow. and I'm like, man. Oh. <laughs> this is such a simple level up system really and they're they're out here using words like Christogenesis. <laughs> like come on guys. You could have used that level of detail on the upgrade menu Christo instead. Christogenesis sounds better than Crystarium. <laughs> like <laughs> Yeah, we just have a couple of Oh no, you have the really important menu here. If well, we do a really big upgrade menu here. I will save before this as well. Yeah. <laughs> Like, this is the most important and also the longest menu in the run. Yeah. And it takes, like... You could like, do it blindfolded. No. <laughs> 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 because it, the drops are inconsistent, right? That's the problem. I don't even know if you can do this blindfolded. Like, if you know where your drops are all the time, then probably. Maybe, yeah. Uh, this. So, again, we're just we gonna... We can have a donation read during this, if there are any. CC Gambit donated $20. Hi Kaya, Pharaoh, and Mr. Zwanzig. Thanks for coming and saving the day. Take this little donation to pet that beautiful knight. Keep up the great work. Thank you, Gambit. Thanks, Gambit. So, we just sold a bunch of stuff, and we are gonna buy a bunch of stuff from now on until the end of the run. All we're gonna buy is superconductors because they are the best mechanical component that we have access to by far. Uh, we are going to use all of these materials to f to upgrade the Vegas and the Wild Bear to maximum level, and then we are also going to upgrade a Black Belt that Kaya just bought also to max level. Did I say I saved before the menu? I didn't. You did. You did save you did. before did the I? menu. Yeah, you yeah. did. Okay. I was not sure. <laughs> That's why I play this very slow right now. Uh, other than the weapons, we also bought two Warriors wristbands, and we're also going to upgrade both of them to max level. Uh, and this right, basically safe. skyrockets our our strength. Yeah, we now have two fully maxed uh, warrior's wristbands. Uh, we put those on snow, and that's three hundred and sixty more strength. It's uh, it's a lot. Yeah, we can see it on snow pretty soon when I'm in the. So we are menu. doing crystogenesis now <laughs> in order to get quake on Saz, which is going to be which is going to be important for a couple of fights. Uh, we also just want to start working on this commando for a couple of skills that we want to get later on. For another really important one is jeopardize. Jeopardize is a commando ability. This one. That um, increases chain on a staggered enemy for a little bit more for each uh, commando action. The thing for Saz is that this little um, increase is applied per each bullet. And if you haven't noticed yet, Saz suits a lot of bullets. So this is really, really important for uh, one of the boss fights we're going to do on this chapter. Yeah, it synergizes uh, very well with Blitz. Yeah, it synergizes really well with Blitz. For Vanille, we just want to start dumping everything on her Medic, because this is where her ATB segment is. And she doesn't really need anything else on Saboteur or on Ravager, other than the Ravager level that we're going to get later. And for Snow, we want to work on his Ravager and his Sentinel at the same time, because Ravager has this final accessory slot. While Sentinel has a re some really important abilities, and it has uh, both of his accessory slots. No, 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 no. S uh, Sentinel has an accessory slot, and it has his ATB segment. Yeah. Uh, challenge. <laughs> challenge. Mm, yeah, but uh, the abilities you're going to get. Okay, yeah. the really important abilities we get from Snow was Fringe Ward, which reduces enemy damage on his allies for AoE attacks that are aimed at him. So imagine an AoE attack that is aimed at Snow will deal less damage to his party members. I had to unequip that with exactly the same again to not mess up the slots of my accessories. <laughs> uh, and so. then you also get challenge. So the Sentinels have two uh, abilities that draw aggro, provoke and challenge. Provoke is AoE, but it has a slower infliction rate. Challenge is single target with a very high infliction rate. Yeah. So challenge is significantly better uh, for the fights that we use it on. Yeah. Also and now is the dodge that is 
like not a dodge. <laughs> yeah. Not a dodge. You can dodge these two guys, but if you look at like how they are positioned, like there's no space at all, and they like don't even move, as you can see. So like it's yeah, just this a pain. A, this is a mandatory fight. There's this guy's that is a fight that you can dodge. You can dodge. It. There is technically a way, but the setup takes far, far longer than just fighting them. Yeah, and you lose CP. Yeah, yeah. We, I mean, we really want the CP anyway. Yeah. Like it has been considered we escape the the other fight many a time but it in the end it's just not worth it to skip it ever because you lose so much really important abilities by cutting that fight yeah that just took 23 seconds so like there's literally no reason to even try the dodge so right here we are just barely able to afford Vanille's uh, fourth ATB slot fifth Fourth. Fourth. Fourth, I She's guess. She's going to get yeah. the fifth now. Right. Exactly. Um, and this, uh, since we are coming up to her Eidolon fight, uh, which most of the increase of the Gestalt gauge is going to be done solely by Vanille's uh, abilities, it really speeds up the fight for her to have that fourth ATV slot. So these guys are really interesting to dodge. You can just... Um uh, lure the hoplites and the ambling bellows in order to face you will turn and actually give you enough space to get past them. That's a really funny dodge. All right, who wants? Who talks about Hecaton? You can go ahead. All right. Yeah, Hecaton is really, really difficult if you want Hecat to do him fast, but if you want to do him safe, he's actually pretty easy. <laughs> so it's, it's kind of funny. All right. So Hecaton is Vanille's Eidolon. It's the last Hec the last Eidolon fight. Well, the last two Eidolons we did with three party members, but this one we're gonna go back to two because Vanille and Fang are BFFs and they have to stick together for Vanille's Eidolon. So we have four paradigms. We're only gonna use two. Uh, Hecaton's Gestalt Gauge responds by increasing chain, inflicting debuffs, and uh, hitting a sentinel. Hitting debuffs first is going to be the most important one, because debuff infliction and increasing the chain with a Ravager more or less do the same thing, but inflicting debuffs maintains your chain, so it's way more, it's far more worth to just use debuffs the whole fight than using Ravager. Um, Hecaton hurts, he hurts a lot. So we are going to manipulate Fang. We want her to stay close to Hecaton. Of course, he starts with Quake. Yep. Um, while you stay in the back and just spam him with spam him with debuffs. Yeah, the the general flow of this fight is very similar to the Alexander fight. There's just a little bit more randomness uh, because he his uh, attack strings can really have various lengths based on what he decides to do. Yeah, we really, really, really don't want to see Quake because Quake is very, very strong and Quake is almost always followed by counter if it's um, done at the end of the string, which is also really strong. He does not like me today. <laughs> that yeah. was the second Quake already. Well, it wasn't the third. Yeah, you can see how powerful he is. Fang is in Mediguard. She's, she's stacked with defensive equipment and he's just just deletes half of her HP. Yeah, I have to play the save. And she would have backed off now. He's not attacking. So yeah, um, the Hecaton has seven ATB segments that he depletes. Most of his attacks only use one, but Hecaton is also um, interesting in the sense that his attacks don't really correlate to how much ATB he has because Quake uses four, but I think he it's can three. I think okay three, but he can do it in situations where he does he has two ATB left to use. It's a little weird. Yeah, he just has a few different things he could choose between. Yeah. So you kind of have to react a little bit to what he does, but um, the the general flow of the fight is is always more yeah. or less the same. Yeah, the general flow is just he is in a looming wrath. With looming wrath, you want Fang to be on the offensive, and you want her to be on Sentinel well before he starts using attacks. Because if at any point he chooses to attack Vanille, you just die. Yeah. You don't want to lose Provoke ever. Yeah. 
okay. No shortcut, I guess. Yeah, the rest of the dodges in uh, Mahabara, which is the cave system we are in, are fairly straightforward, except for any dodge where bombs are involved, because bombs are just fast. It's a trend in this game. Fast enemies are hard to dodge with a thunk. <laughs> <laughs> So now that we have a little bit of downtime, I guess we can uh, talk about why exactly our final party for the for the end game is what it is. Um, if you've yeah. been paying attention, you probably have caught on to the fact uh, that Saz and Vanilla are incredibly powerful because they have early access to the offensive buffs and debuffs, stacking all those multipliers that allow us to do the big deeps. Um, you know, Saz's Blitz is really good. Uh, we're going to get Cold Blood later, which is really important. So Saz really is the MVP, and, and Vanille is, like, top support as well. Um, you know, the, the debuffs obviously being very important. You get a powerful Medic. Um, mm -hmm. So between those two, we have most of our bases covered, and what we really want uh, besides that, then, is an additional attacker and someone who can Sentinel for the few fights where we really need that. Now, there's two party members that can kind of fulfill that role. Um, both Snow and uh, Fang are solid commandos and solid Sentinels. Um, the older route, and by old, I'm talking like pre-2015. Very um, old. Really, really old. Yeah, it's quite old by now. Um, <laughs> it used Fang in that final party slot uh, rather than Snow. Uh, eventually, it was uh, deemed that uh, Snow was more optimal because the third role uh, that they have uh, differs a fair bit. Uh, Fang has access to Saboteur, but not really to anything that really helps you go fast necessarily. She mostly gets like slow and curse, which can be handy for some fights to slow down what the enemies can do, um, but it doesn't really speed us up in any meaningful way. Um, Snow just has Ravager, and that gives you access to, you know, triple Ravager paradigms where we can really chain really fast. And with Fang, you just can't really do that unless you invest into her secondary uh, Ravager. And her Ravager is just bad. Yeah. Um, so ultimately, we, we save time on a lot of the endgame fights uh, with Snow over Fang. Um, if, if anything, the big advantage of uh, Fang is that you're forced to use Fang a lot more uh, and, and later into the run. Uh, Snow, the last time you're forced to use him at all is for the first Ashumgal Subjugator fight in Chapter 7. After that, you can completely drop him, and the Fang route does. Um, Fang, we're still forced to use in a bunch of Chapter 9 fights, and then for all of the last three Eidolon fights, she is also forced into the, into the party. So in this route, we still need to level Fang up a decent bit, so she's strong enough for all of that. Yeah, but... Um, like, slow is useful, but it's not offensive. Slow is defensive, and like we've said before, if you want to go fast in this game, you really need to to put the pedal in the metal and just drop all the defensive things unless you really, really need them. Yeah. Uh, Snow, slow was important in order to make Barth 3, Barth Endless 3 a really, really safe fight. And I've done a couple of runs with with an adapted Fang route and yeah, Barth 3 is completely free with her. <laughs> but you lose so much over the fact that you just don't have a good third Ravager because Fang's Ravager role, like you can get two spells fairly early, but you're getting two spells, you're not getting two strikes. Yeah, and Fang is a physical attacker. Uh, Fang is a oh. physical attacker. And then you miss out on Overwhelm, which is an ability that all, th all three of our Ravagers have, which allows them to chain even higher if they have other Ravagers in the party on a staggered enemy. So um, Overwhelm on a Tri Disaster on a staggered enemy just makes the chain go to f like from 500 to 900 in like two seconds flat. It's very, very broken. As for the other two party members, uh, Lightning, she's not a bad party member by any means. She's she's good at attacking, but her only other uh, her only non-attacking um, main uh, primary role is medic, which she's really bad at. She's actually really useful. She's the useful. worst medic. No, yeah. I think the worst medic is Fang. Yeah, but then other, it's other her. than Fang. Yeah. Um, <laughs> She's uh, she's actually amazing in all of her secondaries. If you're running a category like plat percent, where you actually get to develop all those secondaries, lightning becomes amazing. Yeah. Uh, she gets really good support options, but in any percent, there's just no way we can afford to dip into all of that. 
Yeah, she's only really viable when you're forced to play her and then a bit in chapter 10. Yeah, and unfortunately with only her primary roles, she just has no support game. She's just an attacker and that's just not that valuable when other party members can fill those roles just as easily. Nice, we get the good pattern. Uh, Hope is just kind of bad. <laughs> <He's> <laughs> Hope is a very defensive character. He gets very late access into, these, into his offensive abilities. Like, his magic is high, but lightnings and vanilles are high. Um, lightning's magic is higher. She just And lightning is a much faster caster. Yeah. Ho Hope can be quite useful in casual playthroughs uh, because he has the early access to, like, uh, protect and shell, which can be really uh, valuable when you're fighting enemies at a really low level. Oh, wow, we are bold. But the times where we really need defensive buffs, we'll just use, you know, Age of Souls. <laughs> I have a line in the shadows on the Amphis Bana dodge in which I see, like, uh, if I'm past that, it normally doesn't run out. It's like three steps into the shadows. Like when you dodge mm -hmm. the Amphis Bana. Yeah, 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 yeah. Because there are three ways you can use that decept on the, the dodge that Kaya used that decept for. You can either use it very, be forced to use very early, and then you need to cancel it on an encounter that's not these dogs. You can use it like uh, midway, and then you can cancel the decept in front of the dogs. Or if you have, if you can afford to use the decept very, very late, then you can go all the way to the other side of those dogs. But I've tried that like twice, and the two times I've tried, I've lost the decept, so I just never decided to go for it again. <laughs> yeah, they have, they have to be pretty close to the door, and you have to reach a certain point before activating it. Like, I don't always go for that either, but this time I got, like, a good pattern. So this is Tajins. We like to say that no time can be lost on Tajins, but this is a blatant lie. Everybody loses time in Tajins. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> well, on the Haka, maybe. <laughs> well, we'll see. So this is the only situation where we are going to do missions. Missions are basically this game's side quests. In order to progress through Tajins, we are forced to complete uh, six missions. Uh, three on this floor and then three combined between the two floors. Uh, each of these missions have a unique enemy that you need to kill, which is your mark. It's going to be indicated by a star. And um, they, we have very specific strategies for these enemies and almost every single one of them requires a preemptive strike because they are way too strong for us to take no normally. They are also fairly similar, like for Jelly Titan and two fights from now, the strategy is exa almost exactly the same. The, the only difference is Jelly Titan is a much scarier enemy than the one we're gonna fight next. So this guy is weak to Thunder, so we're just gonna buff in Thunder on him. Um, Saz and Snow get debuffs going with Vanille, and because it was a preemptive strike, this guy just dies very quickly because his stagger, natural stagger point is very high. And make no mistake, we need the preempts on these fights. We are at this point very underleveled. Like, don't let the fact that we are still in, still like dealing out really big damage fool you. Our HP is incredibly low. This, I mean, you'll see it right here because uh, you'll typically get one attack off. Yes, yeah. you just deleted half of Snow's HP. And, and Snow is by far our tankiest party member. So, if he's two-shotting Snow effectively, you know, you know we're in trouble if we actually have to fight this guy straight up and not just keep him interrupted during stagger the whole time because we get a preemptive yeah. strike. Like, our offensive stats are not even really weaker than what people usually play with, but uh, as one thing said, like, we are very, very squishy. Like, the defensive stra uh, stats are the issue. The old man still <laughs> But with preempts, these fights are usually working out fine. There's one particularly tricky preempt. Well, technically two, but one we avoid because I have a Deceptor Soul for that. You could um, try go for the preempt list. Oh, but like I have once. the Deceptor Soul. Fine. I'm already forcing you to do to do <laughs> blindfolded. The Hawk. I'm not gonna push anything further. <laughs> I mean, we have coffee here, I think, so I could do it once. If you can, just give him the controller. <laughs> uh, we'll see. But I don't know where to use the decept then. Zwanzig, no hugs. No hugs? <laughs> oh, hugs. Always hugs. <laughs> hugs. <Yeah. laughs> this enemy is named after me for reasons. <laughs> yeah, and why? he loves to hug. Yeah, he loves to hug. 
Yeah, I don't know the exact story either because it was also before my time, but there was like something in a run where like either Maelstrom or Swansig was kind of saying that dodge is like so easy and then like he kept failing it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. So apparently it's not easy. So this fight coming up right here, um, the problem with it is that uh, the main enemy, the Ambling Bellows, uh, resists uh, physical damage, and we are really spec for physical damage at this point. Uh, Vanille's the only kind of magical-based one, and, and her and damage is pretty insignificant compared to the other two. Then we're so, not really using Vanille for his damage here. Yeah, and since physical damage only does 10% against this enemy, we need something else, and that something else is Hecaton, Vanille's Eidolon that we just got. Uh, this, uh, she... Uh, Odin is arguably better in a lot of situations, but the, um, her summons finisher has the highest straight-up damage multiplier out of all the Eidolons. Oh, all the Eidolons, yeah. It's uh, very, very strong. Yeah, and outside of the insta-kill, like, this is the best finisher. Yeah, and Eidolon attacks completely ignore all damage resistances, so just delete it. Bam. I really like Hecaton, actually. I think yeah. it's a yeah. really cool design. Hecaton is great. The fight sometimes isn't, <laughs> but <laughs> the summon is great. Like today, for example, I got a pretty bad Hecaton fight that I had to play super passive to not die to. Yeah. But yeah. So yeah, this is the Gurungach fight. Gurungach is exactly the same strat as Jelly Titan, but instead of doing in thunder, we do in water and and. The Gurungach is like... It dies a lot faster. It, it dies paper. a lot faster and he is also not threatening in any way. Like, you can die to Jolly Titan if you're extremely unlucky. You just never die to this lizard. Please don't turn. Yeah. This that... lizard can just never kill you. We got the perfect preempt. Yeah, that was very nice. Exactly the same thing. Start with haste, bravery, and water on snow. Change to Bully, Bravery, and Water South, and then just blitz this thing. It's like... It's very easy. He was a bit too high at the start. Might still not kill. Oh my god. Oh, yes. that was unlucky. <laughs> yeah, blitzes on, on uh, launched enemies are always a little bit of a... Eh, thing whether they're gonna hit sometimes. Yeah, you have to pay attention that uh, you're not whiffing it. And there I thought I had enough time until it starts, but apparently I didn't. So yeah, those are the three missions we need to do on the first on the first floor. So now we're gonna go to the oh, second floor, and now we're gonna go to floor four and five, four, five, and six. I think the last Something three like missions that. are. Yeah. Those uh, the all between those, those Now we do fours. the three hard missions. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah, they are the three hard missions. I was like, yeah, Vitala, Penangala... No, no, it's Penangala and Mushisu. What was this one? Oh, yeah, Vitala, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, the game intends you to do these missions in numerical order, but um, Kai and a couple of other runners choose to swap the order of two missions. Instead, we always do Mushisu first, because he's... <laughs> This is one's ex-cousins. I call these two one's ex-cousins. Always at the end of the battle zone. <laughs> like, how many times did that happen during this run? Yeah. Every time with the doggos. Mm. Always the doggos. But uh, you always start with Mushisu, and then you can do Vitala and Penangolan in whatever order you want. Um, the game intends you to do Vitala first, but it doesn't really stop you from doing Penangolan first. The thing about Penangolan is that the mission reward for that fight is a Diamond Bangle, which gives a boatload of HP. So we can just use that one in order to increase our survivability against Vitala, which is a very, very scary fight. Yeah, and the, uh, the trade-off is pretty much 3 seconds movement speed. Like, it used to be a bit more, like, we had to do a bunch of extra menus and also a different strat. Uh, so it was not really worth it to try that, in my opinion, before. But now it's pretty much just the movement after a few optimizations, which is 3 seconds time loss for a significantly safer fight. So now it's actually worth it. Because, like, if you're on, like, good pays, uh, like, or in a marathon like today, like you don't want to die on a random mini boss this late. 
Yeah, Vitala is very scary because he has, uh, he only uses an attack called Multicast. Like, his pattern is entirely predictable. What really gets you is that his target is random. So he always uses Multicast, and Multicast is three different things, and you will always use these three, these things in this order. Um, three Rust spells, five single target spells, and three debuffs. And it's the five single target spells that just one shot whoever he targets, unless that someone is snow. Anyway, first coming up though, we have the Mushusu fight. Which um, is the worst preemptive in the game. Because of the birds. <laughs> well, I mean, Penangolin is worse, we just don't generally do <laughs> yeah, that just one. Don't do that one. <laughs> but yeah. So the idea for this is to lure him to the to the edge of like the up path here, uh, and then exit the oh, battle that zone is here. Free. So he now should exit the battle zone on the opposite side, and while he does that, I go back down behind him, turn the camera around, and now wait for him to enter the battle zone again. Oh, but the bird, the bird is looking at you. One of the birds you. sees me. Yeah. So we have to redo this again. And this is why this me. is this is why this is the worst preemptive. Oh my god, run. he's so far outside. Okay, this might actually also be bad because it now takes him a while until he re-enters the zone. Because if you go outside of the battle zone... But now zone, the birds aren't looking. Yeah, okay, that should work. Uh, you have to pe be careful there, because if you technically preemptive him, but are not inside of the battle zone, it doesn't count. So you have to wait until he's inside the battle zone, yep. so you can actually get the preemptive. For a preemptive strike to work, you need to actually be inside a battle zone. The yeah. interesting thing is it doesn't need to be the enemy's battle, that enemy's battle zone. There is an all missions, an all missions fight where the battle zone for the enemy that you want to kill uh, almost overlaps with the battle zone of a random mob that's there. So if you can lure the mission guy that you actually want to kill inside the mob's battle zone, you are guaranteed a preemptive strike. Because even though he's looking at you, he's not inside his own battle zone. So you always get the preemptive strike if you get that to work. The problem is the the random mob is two dogs and they will also try and catch you. That preemptive is a mess to try and get normally. <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty smooth for a preempt to be honest, even though I had to like redo it once, but I didn't enter the fight. So like the actual time loss usually happens when you just cannot preempt it while always entering the fight. Um, so this lo lost like a tiny bit maybe over a perfect one, but not too much. If you ever engage an enemy outside the battle zone, uh, you will never get a preemptive strike. It will always just be a normal fight. Even if the, that particular enemy isn't aggroed, it will always just be All a normal right. fight. And now you'll see what Pharaoh said earlier. Uh, if you pay attention to the arrow on the top right on the minimap, I will completely ignore that for now. <laughs> yeah. That usually tells you what to do next. So, uh, because we can do the next two missions in reverse order, which is a bit safer. But for now, we follow the arrow because we need this elevator still, but after this, it's different. Um, Penangolin is another fight that we are going to use Vanille's Eidolon for. The reason this time being more because it's a very dangerous fight where we just don't want to be like vulnerable um, as much as possible and so just dealing with it with the summon. Penangolin's magic set is actually fairly high and he and the... Um uh, they're a type of Seath that I just call Zubat because it's easier. Uh, they're just bats, and uh, the bats chon do the bats do life sounding in order to charge up their attack, and then they will just do a random attack. It can be a normal physical attack. It can be deep protect. In Penanglan's case, it's Iroga, and Iroga just one shots anyone at our development, so we just really cannot get hit by it. Yeah. Also, fun fact, this bird will not catch you if you wait for a sec because it just dives behind you. <laughs> I oh, always yes. laugh to do that dodge. There was something that Olsen discovered. Uh, that, like, for some reason these hitboxes with the birds are a bit weird, so if you just wait a tiny bit on that one, and then go, he usually just dives behind you, where you have been before. So yeah, we triggered a statue in order to be able to come down here and we are going to open the Penangolin mission before we open the Vitala mission. Just uh, set Vanilla's party well, leader. Eat double gorilla and... 
so we can use Hecaton for this next fight. The a tricky thing about this fight is if you're not fast enough on the inputs, or if you, you're even if you are, but you get unlucky, you really need Saz to hit Blitz on Penangolin. Otherwise, you will not get enough duration to be able to kill it with Hecaton. But Saz can be interrupted by all of the Zubats in this fight. Um, so you either just hope that you stag to that you stagger and interrupt enough people with uh, Vanille's own string, or you open Quake and then work on uh, getting everybody staggered. But most runners these days will just use Vanille and pray that Penangolin doesn't troll and interrupt Saz for forever. Yeah, and this is the first case in which we use the Deceptizol for the preempt instead of for dodging. This uh, um, preempt can be done manually, and that would mean that you have to farm one fewer decept at the start of the run, but it's kind of slow to set up anyway, and it's kind of random. It's not random, it's inconsistent <laughs> at best. It just sucks. <laughs> it depends on who's doing it, I guess. Like, the one who founded it can do it pretty reliably. The one who found it is a god gamer. Yeah, we can only we can only I, try. Did you miss it? I think you missed. I was corrupted. I think you missed it. Oh no! Do you have enough duration? I don't know. For we'll this? see. I don't think you have. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. I just okay. Never mind. This is a retry. <laughs> yeah, this is what I was talking about. So Saz's blitz got interrupted by Penangolin well. and Vanilla as well. So you just don't have enough duration to be able to kill. So if I did it manually now, bats. I would have to do it manually again. <laughs> True. But yeah. They were really aggressive there. Like, normally Vanilla's not getting interrupted that much. Hello. Uh, he's right behind you. I think you're fine. It says hit it this time. I'm I don't sure. know. Yeah, that, no, this, this looks much better. <laughs> Dude, stop! <laughs> uh, does no, I don't this think look this much better? I think you have just enough time. I need two. And then YOLO it. Well, I think mm. now that you, since you didn't do the Aroga, yeah. you might not have enough. Wow, this is super <laughs> this unlucky with the interruptions. really trolls you, man. Normally they are not like that, so I'm happy I have this T-set. <laughs> Maybe if you do it manually, they will be <laughs> permissive. <laughs> they should not interrupt Saz and that's it. Like, there was a turning animation forever, which is why yeah, they were delayed. Yeah, like Penangolin just flew straight <laughs> behind Saz. Okay, like, try three. <laughs> This should be fine be now. Thank okay, you. Yeah. Now Saz yeah. got the blitz going. This looks much better. This is, now this is what this this is supposed to look like. And I'm not getting interrupted. Pog. Look look how how slowly the stagger bar this time is depleting versus what you were seeing before. Yeah. Like yeah. he has so much left now. Need to do three though, I think. Uh, just use cannons. Cannons is way more fun. Nah, he has too much HP. It's three. Right. Hey, but we killed. Hey, it's my try. Yeah, that's just like a bit of RNG that can happen. It's not that likely that it happens, so the fact that I got it twice in a row is extremely unlikely. <laughs> but, yeah. This mission sucks. This mission sucks. And like, it doesn't really matter if you put this mission after Vitala, because this mission before and after Vitala is exactly the same, so... Yeah, more or less. Yeah, you have slightly less HP on Vanilla for this. So it can Vanille's theoretically... Vanille's HP doesn't matter. Well, though. theoretically, I mean, Ozzy posted a clip yesterday. <laughs> oh, <laughs> But he would have happened? also died with the more HP in that case. They he got hit they, by a rogue. They overkilled him for like over two uh, 250 damage or something. Yeah, that's what happens when you get hit by a rogue. And nobody has HP. Uh, um, sure. Okay. Does this work now? Uh, okay. Easy game. Alright, new menu again. So now we're just we're setting up for the Vitala and we're also gonna set up for the Hakka at the same time. Oh, uh, we are going to again sell everything in order to be able to afford a bunch of more upgrading components. And oh yeah yeah yeah. yeah. And um, we are going to use this to fully upgrade. Uh, wait, the, no, yeah, we are gonna use this to upgrade the uh, warriors wristband we got from the Gurungach fight. And uh, to dismantle the last, um, to dismantle the last word is all. The, the last, um, I drew a blank. 
Doctor's code. Doctor's code, yes. Doctor's code. Yeah. We're actually uh, leveling up two more warrior's wristbands here. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we buy the second one. Yeah. All right, and now we have a lot of Crystarium. <laughs> yeah, on this Crystarium, you want to, to start developing Saz's Ravager. Right now, the goal for Saz is getting Cold Blood. Yeah. Cold Blood is one of the most important abilities for late game, basically. And it's very, very strong uh, for reasons we are going to explain later on when we actually get it. For now, it's not really important. On the way there, we are going to grab Aurora, which is a good raw spell for Saz. And we also get Renew, um, which is fairly important. I think because you have extra Kasharim, you can also get the roll level. Yep, we yeah. go past it a yeah. few notes. We are now at the point of the game where uh, the, the Doctor's Code potions early on in the game were extremely OP. They were essentially full party heals. Um, at this point, uh, since the, they don't really scale, um, our HP has kind of outpaced the usefulness of potions. Um, so luckily at this point we get access to Renew, which is just half of your entire uh, party's HP restored at the cost of 2 TP. And that's going to be a lot of our in-battle healing from now on. Um, due to this, we've, we've kept most of the uh, Aether Souls that we've gotten throughout the run. And uh, the late game also gives you quite a few more. Um, so we'll be using a lot of Ether Souls from this point on so that we can use Renews and other stuff where necessary. All right, not don't do a mistake. <laughs> this is the last crucial upgrade, I think. Uh, you have the please don't dismantle the power glove. <laughs> yeah, okay, that, that one too. <laughs> Yeah, we did it. I don't think we mentioned this before, but when you dismantle a Doctor's Code, you get a bunch of Shrouds and an Elixir. Um, the Elixirs are very, very important. Yeah, and so are the Shrouds, really. <laughs> it's, well, uh, everything is. Like, the Doctor's... The, the, even, even after we use them for the potions, the Doctor's Code are still incredibly useful after you dismantle them, just because they give you so much good stuff. Yeah. They will give you a Fortisol, an Aesol, an Aethersol, and then the Elixir on top of, every, of, on top of it all. And you only have access to four Elixirs in the entire game. Three of which are from dismantling Doctor's Codes. Exactly. There's one in a chest in the last chapter. Yeah, like if you saw the the fa the si the string of six uh, single target spells that those were on Vanille. If she didn't have the diamond bangle, she would be dead. So there, there's the advantage of the Penangolin first route right there. Vanille would have died there otherwise, and it's still possible to win the fight at that point, but it gets scary. Yeah, it gets yeah. way if, harder. If Vanille dies and you have to revive her, Vitala gets to do way more strings, and that's very dangerous then for Saz as well. Here, with this HP, she like 90% of the time survives that, or like even more. I don't know, maybe she's guaranteed to survive. I think she's guaranteed to survive. But her not dying there is like very, very, very helpful. <laughs> All right, and that is part of why this route, I think, is superior, even though you have more movement, because that's, like, just that fight is significantly less of a threat. But there are still advantages to the other route as well, because you have less movement, <laughs> if you want to go for it. All right, and now we can essentially get to the top of the tower, now that we've done all these little missions. And uh, then we're going to fight Dahaka once we're at the top. Try to fight him. Uh, wait a sec. Uh, this is Mystic Tower. Mystic so. Tower, Sentinel. Why did I change this? <laughs> no. You're the one with the controller. I'm just shitposting. <laughs> 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 All right. As I said, like I tried three times during this. And if I not, don't get it, then I just do it after the we'll run. We'll do fine. It's just the hawk. What's the worst that can happen? Well, I haven't done it in a while. And, like, I haven't even planned on running this before the event, so I haven't prepared that too much, right? <laughs> so. did, did you practice this at all recently? No. Okay, cool. This is gonna be fun! The last time I did it, practice was for the GG2 run. <laughs> this is gonna be fun. But it's fine. Like, it's a consistent fight as long as you don't miss input. So let's just don't miss the input for a half. We'll see. <laughs> I 
Yay. Uh, maybe you should talk a little bit about the Bata Huckabee yeah, before yeah, that he gets yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense, because he's going to need to hear the audio cues yeah. without us talking over yeah. it. Well, he... well, that's the problem, because sometimes he's so loud with his animations that you don't even hear that. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so the, um, the idea here is um, the Haka's attacks are really powerful, so we're going to need a Sentinel for most of the fight. Uh, so Snow's just kind of going to sit there and tank the hits. Uh, meanwhile, we're gonna, you know, do the usual buff up, um, try to get in peril early on. Um, I guess with this safety strat, you do it a little bit differently with the debuffs. Yeah, but it's also a bit more dangerous because you stagger later, so he gets to do more stuff usually. Mm. And the oh. the idea is to stagger him before he gets to, to do his big moves because his big moves will just one shot us, no questions asked. Yeah. Like um, the one thing he can do is Fulminous Firestorm or something like that. Yeah. That that removes every single one of our buffs, puts a bunch of debuffs on the party. And also just kills us. And also just kills us. <laughs> <laughs> the Haka is a fun fight. But uh, the All the right. nice thing is that once uh, once he staggers, can you put it? Do you want to put it now? Yeah, or? put it now, okay. but uh, not over the eyes. Yeah. <laughs> All right. We'll see. Like, if, if I don't have the wrong setup when I stagger, just tell me, right? So that's quicker. Mm -hmm. When I have the wrong setup when I stagger, like not all everyone buffed and whatever. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. sure. So if I don't do the entire stagger wrong. for no reason. Yeah, yeah. If I don't see anything right now. Okay. <laughs> yeah. The um. So w once he's staggered, he's not gonna do anything. So by Wait, at that point, yeah. it's just a matter of uh, DPSing him down. And since he's huge, Blitz is going to do like major numbers against them. Okay, I also put the head down. Ugh. So let's see. Also, this has a bit lower FPS, I think. You'll do fine. Time to get serious. Wow, Seth got hit. Seth got hit again. <laughs> this is bad. I'll handle this. Thanks. I've forgotten which aggression I have. You guessed right. Okay. <laughs> He should be down pretty soon. Why did he get up? Just continue. Uh oh, uh oh. Continue. <laughs> oh, hey! Okay. <laughs> easy, easy. I was so afraid when Saz got knocked down twice. <laughs> yeah, they were both on red. Both Saz and Snow were on red. Because I don't see my red. HP, I don't know when I renew, so it's just like between the two Matador strings you renew the second time. Yeah, Snow's um, HP got very, very low. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I don't see that. I don't know if... Okay, it worked out. It's fine. <laughs> uh, you did it first try without any practice. Well, I practiced that for hours when I did it for like last ESA. Take this off. And also try to Put this your for glasses GDQ. back on. Are you going to do Barty without no, your glasses? No, but I, I don't want to lose time, so we do this. Right <laughs> <now>. <laughs> okay. This man is dedicated. <laughs> now we can. <laughs> okay, so. Okay, oh god. Thank you. All right, fixed. 
Okay, I'm happy that worked. But oh, I mean, I practiced that for a lot of hours, and if like nothing goes super wrong, it's a very consistent. Spread. Wasn't used on GDQ. Was, um, was on the superior event. Yeah, I did it for ESA 2020 back then. I tried to do it for GDQ, but unfortunately, it wasn't met. But I still did you practiced do it during it. the run on, on ESA. No, I did it after. This is way better. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is also on site and not from home. Last time was from home. Um, because it was ESA Summer Online. But yeah. Pretty happy that it worked actually, even though apparently it was close. <laughs> you don't know what you can do now? No. Because we are almost at 40k, you can just grab the props, cut into the magma prop. No! <laughs> <laughs> I mean, with notes, maybe I would, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so there's a there's an alternative route that is uh, used by some runners nowadays. Um, there's a <laughs> there's a particular weapon for Saz called the High 80s Magnums. Now this weapon is ridiculous. The strength gains if you fully upgrade it is like twice as high as any other tier two weapon in the game. It's ridiculous. The trade off is uh, you only have 60% of your HP. That's, that's not that, a, that's 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 a trade-off, though. That's the only thing that I think makes the fight somehow <laughs> more dangerous when it goes offhand and makes the route a bit more dangerous. Gotta like, risk it for the biscuit. I personally think the route in an optimal way is a bit faster, like the Magnum's route, but it just has less backups when stuff goes wrong. Like, yeah. the Magnum's are so strong that the only <laughs> category that they aren't used is any percent. Well, they, they are they used can in be used. every single other category. They can be used. It's just the yeah. being uh, being at sixty percent of your HP when we already have little HP is just yeah. Not the that thing good. about the magnums is every single other category has way a better and more efficient means of upgrading it. Any percent doesn't really have much, so you lose a lot of time just trying to upgrade it. Whereas other categories just have a lot more. Um, um, more money or just more choices as to what and, they can do with it. And them. also, yeah, just more opportunity to use it because by this point we're like an hour away from finishing the run, so getting a really strong weapon for that last hour, yeah, it can help a bit, but you also have to invest in it, so it's... Yeah. You, you have know. to invest both time and money the, in it. The, the effectiveness in any percent is just pretty little compared to what we do normally um, because of how short it is. Like, like seven boss fights or something, the way matters a bit like, though again to be clear um, it's still a totally viable route like oh, it's yeah, they're, it is they're still practically totally equal yeah, um but, it's just it's not like the the guaranteed you should actually absolutely be using this that it is in other categories and i'm also yeah. way better practice at this route so <laughs> yeah when stuff goes out of hand which could happen on the next fight um yeah so the next fight is yeah. like proto this is a major wall for uh, b b before runners. that we can quickly mention the dodge because that's one Pretty oh, interesting yeah. one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so there's a dodge coming up where you have two enemies that kind of look like hands. They're called Seekers. And they are effectively blocking your way. But you can lure them towards you. And you can make the one on the left tilt slightly to the right. And if you use a Deceptizol for whatever reason, um, your hitbox actually gets narrowed. So if Kaya does this correctly and he gets lucky, he's just going to barely be able to get past this guy. It's so dumb. This actually also works without a Deceptisol. The, the main reason why we use the Deceptisol is this guy. <laughs> yeah. Like, the other one is also possible without. It's just a bit less consistent because the birds are still the thing. Yeah, so the next um, fight is a another major wall, but not really because he's hard to execute, but because it's a very heavy RNG fight that requires you to do a lot of improvisation on the fly, depending on what happens. Um, because this guy, he has a laser attack. The laser attack itself can also inflict debuffs on you. It inflicts fog and uh, pain. It's, it's rare that it happens, it hap but it, it's it can. rare, but it can We are happen. at a marathon, so... <laughs> Fair. Uh, so fog stops the character from using magic spells. If fog hits vanilla, you're in a really bad bind. Then pain stops characters from using physical attacks. So if pain hits snow, um, he's just going to start casting ruins, which is nothing compared to his attacks. And then you have once his heads are completely separated, he can use poison go, which we don't care about. Curse go, which is annoying if curse go actually hits. And um, Days Ga, which is very fun. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Days is, is effectively like sleep. Uh, it makes your character unable to do anything, and the next hit on them will wake them up, but do double damage. 
Yeah, another thing about this fight is that the lasers are random and they can target whomever the hell Bart chooses to target and in some situations he will always target the same characters. This is always bad because then you are forced to heal early nice and, yeah, and it becomes really awkward to manage your healing at that point. Like what he's doing right now, he's just only going on Vanille. We really need Imperil here. I don't. I don't think we've talked that much about how Imperil works. We talked like early, yeah. way before. I think it was right. Office okay. We talked about so Imperil. just to reiterate, Imperil uh, gives you um, gives the enemy uh, lowered resistances to uh, certain to all elements. In a lot of fights, we use it in order to induce a weakness. In this case, we just do it to drop his resistances. He's normally uh, halving all elements, and. Without uh, with, without that, we can chain him a lot higher because all our chaining is uh, elemental attack based. That should be push. Uh, so yeah, we're yeah, we're doing this fight with the Fortisol. Usually, if you don't use a Fortisol, you are forced to to use an entire paradigm shift in order to apply haste and bravery on haste and bravery on Saz, haste on Van haste and faith on Vanille, and then just bravery on the snow because we use the fortress always keep that entire process uh before and after the first and the first stagger so we can just uh, go fully on the offensive go to buffs and just chain at the same time and then just go ham on the blitzes the attack he just uh tried to use apoptosis it Gets rid of all his debuffs and also all of our buffs. Now that last part is really bad, and we can't afford to get rid of the buffs because we can't recast a lot of them, um, or really any of them with this setup. But um, by going into Gestalt with our summon uh, right oh, wow. when he's doing it, we are immune to those effects, and we get to keep our buffs for the second phase. Um, because he did a lot of damage in the first phase, Bart immediately did his big uh, Thanatosian laughter attack. Um, that means we won't have to worry about it in the second phase. It's a little bit less optimal because you have to wait longer uh, for the apoptosis to hit, but it makes this second part of the fight relatively free because we don't have to worry about him doing laughter during the second stagger. With the Fortisol, the fight is already significantly quicker because you don't buff, so you usually just go for the push. And it's also a lot safer with the Fort. Yay! Pretty right. clean part two. So this fight, learning this fight, uh, I don't, I, half of what you said I didn't remember. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you were you were paying attention to the yeah, fight as um, you should have been. But like this is like one of the two biggest beginner walls when you learn the run. Like yeah. this fight is really really difficult to get down. Yeah, because yeah. you, ca you can't um, just follow the same exact pattern every time. You gotta kind of adapt to how like, stuff goes and when you need to go to a healing paradigm, etc, um, etc. Yeah, when you need to go to healing paradigm, when you are going to get your next ATB refresh in order to push your offensive, when you have to go on the defensive and actually use Vanille's medic in order to survive, when you... Even, even finding the elixir can make you lose the fight. That's why I usually look before where my elixir is. I didn't do it this fight, but I usually do it like when you wait for apoptosis. And we are at last into chapter 12, starting off with another uh, automatic Gestalt fight. This one's pretty straightforward. We just kind of hit him and then kill him. Not much to go over here. This threat actually differs between console and PC, because on PC, uh, Lightning can whiff some hits sometimes if you don't wait between her attacks. Um, so mashing this can actually lead to not killing without the finisher, which is what we want. We want to kill with the finisher, uh, without the finisher. Without the finisher. Like this. <laughs> because the finisher takes long. If you have a donation, then go forward. Knock Frost donated five dollars. Please no magnums, my ears will die. <laughs> also good job on the blindfolded Dahaka, Zwanzig crowd. <laughs> Yeah, that's well. the one thing we didn't mention about the the Hyades Magnums is they make a really loud sound whenever Sass shoots them. What are you talking about? Them. It's the sound of victory. <laughs> <laughs> I also personally don't like the sound, to be honest. Like it, it, it just like sounds like toy weapons, kind of. So I don't know. <laughs> But yeah, it's like a lot of people love the sound. So. I love the sound. Too. <laughs> <laughs>
All right, welcome to chapter 12. Now we're back to Cocoon. That was all of the experience we have on Grand Pulse. Um, and now we actually like make our way to like the big evil person. Um, the big evil person. The <laughs> big evil person. It's not the villain, it's the big <laughs> evil person. <laughs> Um, I mean, we just fought the big evil person. Well, I know, but, but he, we're gonna fight it again. Yeah, he, he exactly. just he just avoided us because he's scared, and now we just follow him. Kind of. Basically. I mean, we don't directly follow him, but we kind of know where he but yeah, was, in case you wanted didn't, to go. In, in, like <laughs> we were in pulse, we fought. Like, but after defeating Barthelos in Urba, he just gives us the means to go into Cocoon, go back into Cocoon, and teases us to follow him. We're just like, yeah, we're gonna do exactly what you want to. You're the villain. That's gonna be perfectly fine. That was... He did not actually turn around just when I was past that. Yeah, he did. <laughs> this is called being trolled. Yeah. This dodge on retries is possible, but it's way worse because this guy is standing right here. Okay, this should work now. Yeah. Dude! <laughs> <laughs> the dog knew. The dog knew. Alright. Third time. Oh god. Uh, this, this is actually the... Yeah. No. Then, then I have to reset because they are not supposed to jump <laughs> over that. Okay, this dodge is like, not fun. The, yeah, this dodge on retries is significantly worse you want than to if get you get this it first on the first try. try. You want to get this first try. But the you can't really fight these guys either. Don't turn. <laughs> Dude, what the hell? <laughs> there, there's there's people who swear by doing this without a decept, and it, yeah, it can be done, but it, it feels really just luck based to me. Yeah, it's so luck based I, I in like general. It. It's like, just luck based in general. It. Okay, this time I'm fast enough. Hey, <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> you have to be fast because they turn around after a few seconds, but I didn't think it would take that long. Oh, you're not fighting bulwark. Okay, I'm doing that. Imagine fighting Bulwark with lightning. No, I could do the Kellet with lightning. You I feel could. like you could probably make it work with Odin. Yeah. But I need Odin for the fight after. So you're using Hecaton here, what's the difference? <laughs> True. <laughs> also not the fight after, but the... Yeah, we still have a the couple Kellet of fights I guess the, the main... Though. Well, no. <laughs> I feel like it should be doable with lightning. I don't know. There's not really that any reason is super to. Low, and Hecaton is not attacking the Bulwark. Nice. Great. Great job, Hackathon. You also have Guy in Selva level 2 now? Yeah, that's why I did the Force Blaster. Yeah. Yeah, because he didn't target the Bulwarker. Odin didn't Warfare. target the Bulwarker, he was just yeah. going on a random soldier. Oh well. Yeah, uncontrollable AI sometimes has its disadvantages. <laughs> <laughs> like, half the game we're fighting against the enemies, and the other half of the game we're fighting against our own party members. <laughs> All right, now we get the first secondary role, and it's Vanille's Commando, and that is not because Vanille is that strong, but it's just because we get a better multiplier for three Cerberuses, and because Vanille can do some magic damage. Yeah, yeah the particular <laughs> reason is there's going to be two boss fights in this chapter with an enemy called the Proud Clad, and it halves all elements, and unlike what we did on the Bard just now, we can't use Imperil to get rid of those um, resistances because he is also just immune to all debuffs. So, as a result, any chaining done in Ravager um, is just kind of halved as well. And so, Vanille, uh, during Stagger, is contributing more if she's in Commando than if she just stays in Ravager the whole time, like she does for most fights. Um, this is particularly important for these fights, because both of them are really tight kills, so... Uh, we've tried to do it without Vanille's Commando, but it just isn't really worth it. It's only worth it when you have the Magnums equipped, because yeah. then you can actually skip it, because Cess does enough damage. Yeah. But with, with this route, you don't do enough damage. Like, PC1 will still be very, very tight, because the strat that I'm doing is a tiny bit tighter. But I can always adjust to the other strat if I die too much, so we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the strat that he's going to do... Like, there are two strats you can do for PC1. You can do Manalevalon strat, which is what Kai is going to do, and you can do console... Like, uh, what's the name? Coordination. Coordination, yeah. Or you can do coordination. Coordination is way more um, consistent, but it's just a tiny Oops. bit slower. That was the wrong paradigm. Just go to coordination now. No. <laughs> Be a scrub like me, come on. You're not a scrub. I am. About any percent, I'm the biggest scrub in the world. That's not true. I don't like any percent. I died three times. <laughs> I don't like any percent. <laughs> I'm here to fight every single enemy in the game. <laughs> Alright. This is fun. Uh, fun. Yeah, this fight is fun. 
Yeah, we fought a behemoth in addition to another enemy before, if you remember that little fight after we all got hugs. Um, <laughs> but, uh, yeah. but in that one, we got an immediate preemptive strike on it automatically. This time, we actually have to fight it straight up, and this enemy is a serious threat. It does a lot of damage, and we have to worry about uh, once we do a certain amount of damage to it, it's going to stand up and uh, basically kill us. We can't let it get to that point. So this entire uh, fight is just setting up, setting up, setting up, and then doing all of our damage in like one string to kill him from like three quarters health or so yeah, to I dead. Really, yeah, I really like this round. If Vanille would be able to debuff, this threat would be way better. Oh my god. Am I fast enough? This might be risky. You can play. Yeah, That's this the key. Good. Yeah, okay. yeah, this is good. He's trying to get up there, but yeah. You just, like... That was a very good fight because I got fast debuffs. Yeah, for yeah. those of you who play League of Legends, I like to look at this fight like LeBlanc, one of LeBlanc's lines. It's just like, for my next trick, I will make your, rape, your health bar disappear. That's exactly <laughs> what happens on this fight. Yeah, the, the problem of him getting up is like not only that he heals, but also that the fight becomes very, very dangerous to survive yeah. with the stat that we have. Yeah, he's, he's strong in his regular form, but in his uh, standing form, he just... One shots people. Good job, Caillou got cold blood. Yes, it did not <laughs> mess it up. Yay. Uh, not getting cold blood here is either like very, 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 very slow fight, or depending on how much you messed up, pretty much run over too. Yeah. So um, I, I mentioned earlier that uh, the proud clad um, resists elements, and as a result, our chaining against them is really slow. Uh, this is where cold blood, Saz's full ATB skill, really comes in handy. So we're not even really going to do much chaining with the other characters once we stagger um, this boss. Um, but Saz's cold blood by itself can just shoot the chain of a staggered enemy up into the stratosphere really, really, really quickly. Yeah. But you also have to execute it early enough for the first time that you get enough time to damage later on. <laughs> Yeah, because, this uh, PC one is yeah. an extremely technical tight. fight because the timings around both proud class fights are really tight actually. But PC one is really the fight that will test you in order to to, to for you to know if you got down ATB refresh timings correctly or not. Because if you miss this AT this upcoming ATB refresh. You just cannot finish the fight. Yeah, in, in a lot of fights, there are like ways to recover. You know, you, you might, worst case, you stagger an enemy another time. Usually, you know, there's, there's, as long as you can survive, it's, yeah, it's usually fine. fine. This enemy, after he recovers from stagger, he does an attack that just kills us full stop yeah, there yeah. we e don't e survive even casually you die a lot to that honestly yeah it's incredibly strong he just starts firing a bunch of rockets at you yeah. for like yeah, he 15 seconds, seconds. And, yeah. he regains hp he gains bravery haste and something else and he just starts pelting you down all right so let's see uh, i will probably do the attack blitz just to get a tiny bit extra damage in stagger um attack blitz opening normally i just do an, a single blitz on pc yeah but we'll see yeah, so then the trick about this ATB refresh and why it's important that you know when your timing is, because there's. Um, Saz's Cold Blood is a full ATB skill. Uh, which means that it will utilize his entire ATB bar no matter what. Uh, no matter how much ATB you have. So right now he has four, but if he has five, it will use five ATB. Um, and. Um, the way an ATB refresh works is, and the way this um, works with an ATB refresh is sometimes you can utilize cold blood and then change to a different paradigm. And I don't that, like this. What is this I, HP? Yeah, what is this HP? This is scary. The problem is I have to go to this now as I'm not doing enough chaining. Get in my sights. So here we're hoping to have the first bullet hit just as the proud cloud gets staggered. We, get, we shift for this ATB refresh here, and we get it correctly. Watch what? how fast the chain shoots up yeah. here, by the way. So the chain it just almost max from two, from two. Okay, now it might actually be a bit scary because I'm in the refresh. We'll see. And snow has no adrenaline. This will get very tight now. Should work? I think it works. I have time for Blitz, not as a string now. Mm. 
Okay. Oh, nice. barely. <laughs> yeah, I messed up one card. Uh, I missed that one refresh, which lost me like two seconds or something. Uh, on PS3, that would have fa failed. Uh, that was like Vanille's last ruin that killed there. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, slightly after Stega, you can still kill. Yeah. Until he yeah, you have like two seconds, and then he <laughs> heals himself, and then he kills you. So yeah, but th that was because I did one mistake and missed that one refresh, and that's how tight the fight is. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. So one thing you can do here, and you have to be really careful with, there's a certain ATB refresh that you are going to do almost immediately after using a Cold Blood. If you use it too soon, you are going to utilize the ATB from the... Uh, to utilize the Cold Blood, you are going to use the bar from the ATB refresh instead of the old one that you used to select Cold Blood. And that's just... The, that sh you just eat a turn on that. Yeah, I, sh I shifted very, very early to Thaumaturgy during Stega, and that messed up everything else, I think, because I was a bit afraid about my HP. And that's how um, tight this fight can be. Oh my god, that's an early one. So this is a turtle. Turtles are scary. Yeah, he's doing quick stomps. Good thing I'm doing the jump. You can also do this without jumping, but with jumping you just avoid the stomps. So it's a bit safer. Turtles are weak to ice, so we just use Shiva, and she will, she will kill it. We want to stagger the Khalid with snow, and then we just use the, um, the just alt mode in order to, um, uh, whittle down his HP and then finally kill. Just do a bit more, but definitely overkill. And then you saw him wait for a little second there. If you go at the wrong time uh, with that first like going forward attack um, it can happen that uh, the bike kind of shoots off to the side um, and then all of these wheelie wo wheelies won't hit all of their hits and you won't actually kill um, it's like depending on where his animation is like his idle animation his head kind of bobs up and down and you need it to be down when you hit it because otherwise you just kind of like veer off it's it's a little bit of a weird thing but Th this is another fight that casually is super hard at least for me it was. Yeah, casually this um, fight is insanely hard. Because like, they kind of want you to use the summons, but they don't really tell you, obviously, and if you don't, it's... Uh... Sum summons are hard to use, man. Yeah. Summons like, are very hard lot of, to use. A lot of casual players get the, the well, they don't want you to... idea that they're not that It's another thing that the game good. just does not tell you how they, to they, use. They how, do you use to... Uh, how do you know how to use this stop mode for Shiva? I mean, they don't, don't want you to one-shot the boss. That's not what I meant. I just meant that they kind of... Like, this guy does so much damage that you need to find ways to survive it, right? With still dealing damage. Mm -hmm. right. So that's kind of a hint that you should use something else than just your party alone. Um, let, yeah. let, let percent has close contact. Hello? <laughs> yeah. I took a very, very wide path there. <laughs> Hello there, Mr. Humbaba. Uh, so plat percent will have a lot of close com uh, a lot of close encounters with a lot of different different turtles, but we're also way better equipped to dealing with them in plat percent. Right, birds looking good. Now I don't have a deceptor anymore. I would like to have a decept for this, but it's just not worth it usually, because these work often enough that you don't want to cancel it. Just to dodge um, this. Or that. And then you have to fight everything anyway. <laughs> Yeah, the problem is the second one. The like, first one is usually free, and now I get a really big gap that I'm actually a bit afraid. Uh, it should work. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. Nice. Easy. Yeah, because those flying enemies, they they will just catch you if they want to. There's really nothing you can do to avoid them. Other than pray they are far enough away from you that they don't notice you on time. Yeah, now we actually have a very fun uh, dodge coming up that a lot of people don't even know it's possible to dodge. <laughs> yeah, this uh, is my favorite dodge in the game. Um, <laughs> the idea here is that there's going to be two huge enemies completely blocking our path. Uh, they're too busy staring at staring each other down to really notice us, so we can't get them to move uh, by luring them out or anything. And like I said, they're completely blocking the path. There's, there's no path through. So how do we actually get through? Well... Um, You'll have noticed that our party members are with us on the field, and they are kind of following us around. Um, and they actually have collision with the enemies, but when they run into an enemy, because it would be really dumb otherwise, it doesn't start a battle, right? Just um, imagine. Yeah, you, just imagine you're running like with snow, and then Vanille just runs into a random city, you get like, thrown yeah, into a fight. Especially in this segment where they just follow you, and I have no impact at all what they do. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so. 
uh, we can make use of these facts um, by manipulating them to kind of run into the enemies and push them out of the way. Uh, and that kind of takes a specific setup that he's going to try to do once he gets Thanks. past these couple dodges here. Yeah, these usually don't fail, but sometimes Birds they do. and dogs, these are birds. Yeah. Birds are jerks. I could wait for the re- oh god. Uh, this looks terrible. Okay. Yeah, they do that. Outside of the battle zone? <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, great dodge. And we don't have a decep. Um, so let's go back immediately. Okay, that, that should work. Yeah. You just need to get the gap, even in, when they outspeed you. Even in LR, we hate those species. All right, so right up here. There they are. Like, this looks undodgeable, right? Like, there's no way past this. Well, there is, hopefully. He's going to stand here. Uh, wait. Um, have to wait for Saz. Oh, yeah, you actually do this. Um, PC stuff. <laughs> yeah, so he's he's um, doing the paradigm menu that we would normally do a little bit later. He's doing that uh, here because it also swaps the party leader Tireless back to... instead of solidarity. Yep. Oh, okay. That's on purpose. Oh, okay. You'll see later why. <laughs> and it's yeah. from, from zero. Snow just ran kind of into that guy and pushed him out of the way, and there you go. The 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 reason of doing the the party swap there already is because apparently it after after you do that it spawns your party member a little bit closer to you and it makes it easier to get him to run in. I guess is that is that something that on only PC works on PC? It works and on console not for some reason. But if you wait for Sass to be close enough to you, like uh, you guys can check out the VOD later or something. Um, oh, I don't um, care, I run PS3. Yeah, <laughs> yeah true. I don't care, I don't um, run this garbage category. Well, it's maybe useful for the other two because you have to dodge that. Um, but yeah, basically, once you switch the party and leave the menu, the second party member, in this case Snow, will walk a few steps closer to Saz, which then makes it way easier to like the, have him push the um, Bulbasaur out of the way because he's like already very close to him. So when you go over, he like almost cannot miss him. Um, whereas when you don't do that, he's far enough away that sometimes he just completely hey, misses and runs really past. this looks really good. You al almost always have to lure that guy somehow. Yep. But yeah, Tireless uh, is also a change that Zero found last year. Uh, it makes PC2 a bit more dangerous when you fail the kill. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. <laughs> but it uh, speeds up the Chapter 13 menu by quite a lot because you just do Malevolence in the first slot instead. Yeah. And then you just do Smart Bomb in slot 5 and that's it. Uh, because you already have the tireless. Oh, oh, so that's why your final paradigm deck is completely different than what I'm used to. Yeah, that's not because of uh, me liking that order more. It's just because it's way faster to menu it that way. In comparison, because we keep Cerberus and uh, Mystic Tower for B and J, and then change the second and third paradigm before Vlad. Yeah, but that means you have to get to kill on PC too, otherwise you die. Eh, you can still do it with tireless. It's just yeah, a little I bit mean, scarier. Yeah, I mean, you can do it. You just have to f sometimes potion. I I failed to kill quite a bunch on PS3 with it. Like I don't know how much the Sentinel reduces the All damage. All right, so there's but, two chests yeah. here. You really want the left chest. That's it. Yep. <laughs> In order for you to be able to get both chests, you have to run dodgeless. Uh, this actually looks bad if he turns left now. I think you're fine. Okay, and these I want to kind of make run into each other. Which partially worked. I mean, we're through, so it's yeah, fine. Yeah, you're fine. <laughs> but yeah, we used to have, like for the next boss fight, that's what we are talking about. We used to have a solidarity paradigm, which has Snow and Sentinel, Assassin Commando, and Vanilla and Medic, in case we fail the kill. Um, I just do that with Double Commando and Medic, so we don't have the damage reduction. Hey, I've been talking about Dodgeless a lot. I think I should shout out Wally, who is the <laughs> one who roped me into doing Dodgeless in the yeah. first place. Yes, Wally won one, one yeah. of the routers of Dodgeless. Actually, the first router. So Dodgeless, just, just to be clear, is a category where you fight every enemy that you run into its battle zone. You're not allowed to dodge yeah. anything. Yeah. <laughs> because the dodge is defined by what we said earlier, like... The battle zone. We dodge these enemies that we enter the battle zones of. Which in dodgeless you're not allowed to, so whenever you enter a battle zone... Like, you're allowed to dodge battle zones. You're yeah. not allowed to dodge, dodge an enemy. encounter once you enter, enter its battle zone. Exactly. It's not an official category, but it's like a for it's fun, fun category. Yeah, it's fun. You are so overpowered on those. It's basically like the casual plus experience, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> because it's kind of like a casual playthrough where you just fight everything, right? Yeah, it's true. <laughs> you want to put it that way. But yeah, the last three dodges of this chapter that should be possible to fail. 
recently I failed one that is basically impossible to fail. So. <laughs> but yeah, normally I shouldn't fail anymore now. Okay, and one last menu for upgrades. Yeah, we get to pick up uh, a power glove here, which is the even stronger version of the warrior's wristband. So we're going to upgrade that to max and also catalyze one of our maxed warrior's wristbands into also, a second power glove. Also try really hard not to dismantle this power glove. I've yep. personally never done it, but I've heard horror stories about it. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'll try to. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I have the Tesla turbine that I can also use for this. Uh... Yeah, the the maxed um, goddess's favor dismantles into several different things, including a Scarletite, which is used to upgrade one of the max warrior spends into yet another power glove. So our damage just it's it gets an exponential growth. And now that we have Saz's Cold Blood, we don't really need to go into the Ravager uh, tree anymore. So we're just going into into his commando to get his own adrenaline skill and uh, just more stats overall. Here for Snow, we're also just going to develop his commando because we really want his, his roll level 4. And there's also some good stats to have in here. And Vanilla is just going to develop her medic because she doesn't need anything else. Slide equipment shuffle to give Snow, uh, Snow more strength because he only had the Warriors Respawn 8 equipped as third accessory and I give Vanille overall defensive instead of just physical defensive. Or actually like more defensive, uh, I mean. That was actually cool. Yeah. I managed to fail this guy and I have no idea how. That's what I said, like this you were, guy. You were looking at chat, that's why you <laughs> missed it. <laughs> Alright, PC2, uh, have fun. All right, this fight is incredibly tricky. His damage output is pretty insane, but luckily we can stagger him very quickly. Um, once he's staggered, the order of business is to keep him interrupted constantly. We cannot let this guy get any more attacks off, partially because his damage is huge, but also partially because after doing, I believe it's six or seven, I always forget the exact number. Oh, but I think it's seven. seven. Yeah, after seven attacks, uh, he is going to go into his aerial mode, which is essentially what um, the previous fight with this guy was. Um, and we don't want him to go into that. I already messed up once, but it's fine. It wasn't Should you, it was Snow who refused to launch again. Should be recoverable. Yeah, yeah, you're fine. So the whole, um, yeah, the whole gist of this fight is just constantly trying to keep him interrupted, keeping everybody's ATVs lined up in such a way that you can accomplish that, and dealing as much damage as possible along the way. We, be close. we want to hit a certain HP threshold, so you can force him into limiters. This might uh, be close. This looks. This doesn't look good. Yeah, though. I said I messed up one side. So I, I think it's so just enough. Right. It yep. was just enough. All right. You want to see that? If you don't see that, it's pretty much a loss. Yeah, he now has gotten even stronger. He starts pulling out this really powerful move, which we can renew tank through. Luckily, um, he's got offensive buffs, but he's also just debuffed himself defensively. So even though he also fully healed himself, we now have enough juice in the tank, in theory, uh, that we can kill him in one more stagger. So that's now the goal, is to kill him before the stagger ends. Again, yeah. Cold Blood being used as the majority of our chaining post-stagger. Right now we already have uh, Snow and Vanille both in commando, so they're not chaining at all. Saz is doing that all by himself. They're just getting a head start on the damage. And then once we have him at max chain, we go to Cerberus. Oh, wow! Yeah. Snow! Snow doing a jump there is not ideal, but it should be fine. Oh, yeah, okay. okay. He didn't get a move off, so that's actually fine. Yeah. I should actually kill without extend. Yeah, that looks good. Yeah. yeah. All right, G -G. very nice. Nice PC too. So this and the second Barthendless fight are like usually the hardest fights to learn in the run. Yeah. Oh, really tough. And both went pretty well. I mean, for Bart, I had the fort, but still. Yeah. And now we're in the final chapter. Time flies when you're having fun. Yeah. <laughs> I'm actually pretty happy so far. Yeah, it's been, oh, it's been a pretty really solid good run. run. E except for Penangalan. <laughs> <laughs> like, that was a bit weird, right? But... 
Hey, you too can submit this run for the real way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> but I already submitted six, so... Alright, so at this point, uh, another shop opens up where we can actually buy the shrouds that are really powerful that we've been using throughout the run. Uh, so, since we don't really need anything else for upgrading at this point, we are just pooling all of our money into buying a bunch of these. Uh, they'll give us, uh, we, we get three Fortisols and three Aegisols here for the three bosses coming up immediately after this, and two Deceptisols just to uh, speed up the dodges in this chapter. This is going to be set up for the next couple of fights. We want to set up a Malevolent so we have Sazus Synergist again because we're not gonna, because we are. No, we, are, we still need him to be synergist for a couple of fights, even though we are going to use shrouds. And uh, we set up a smart bomb because we finally get to use Vanille's debuffs again, even though it's arguable if that's a good thing or not, because we are submitting ourselves yeah. to RNG now. <laughs> we'll, we'll need our debuffs on literally every fight from now on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there are six of them. And uh, we just... To finish setting up uh, this Crystarium. Just this is just for stats and also for a level for a level four on snow. And for Saz, we finally unlock his adrenaline. So Saz's HP is finally important now as well to keep track of. I don't think we ever explained adrenaline. No, we but did now not. it's a good time because now it's important. <laughs> yeah. So adrenaline is a skill that uh, commandos can have that is a passive 20% damage boost when the character is in green HP. So. In uh, certain fights, it's important to keep your HP in green to maximize your damage. Yeah, so adrenaline is important to keep on snow. Snow has had it since... Since forever. Since chapter 7. Since chapter 7, yeah, since he has one. it. For Sal, it's only really important for chapter 13. But for the few fights where it's important for you to keep it, it is extremely important. I actually like the fact that PC1 was more tight than PC2. Yeah. <laughs> Just thinking about it. Because usually it's like slightly the other way around that you sometimes have to extend the stagger on PC2. Alright, let's see what the birds will do. Yeah, more birds. So more terrible dodges. Okay, that should work now. Unless I mess up these, but usually that's these fine. These look fine. Yeah, alright. Yeah, as long as no! Oh! <laughs> that was like the end of the battle zone again for these guys, but I think they all have one together, right? Or, like, where do I get reset now? Uh, yeah. Yikes. Okay, second try. Uh, usually... If okay, never mind. I just that, was, that was ambitious. That was bold. Yeah, that was ambitious. <laughs> I couldn't do it on the right side, though. I didn't have space. Okay, I just decept this. Um, so as Don't long, have to force this like, here. Most of the time, as long as the birds... <laughs> that was perfect! <laughs> <laughs> I should uh. not have decepted this. Uh, is that enough? Yeah, yeah you can get by. Yeah, you can get by that guy. <laughs> so usually, if that group of three isn't facing towards Vanilla, you can get past them. But sometimes you just get trolled, because this is FF13. Everything can troll you. It's still a fun game. It is a very fun game. And you should learn it. It's a good <laughs> game. <laughs> like, um, 13 gets compared a lot to the other Final Fantasy games because it's just inherently oh, yeah. very different from the rest. Um, in ter but it doesn't get compared as much in terms of a speed game, it's more compared as a casual game. But in terms of a speed game, like, a lot of people, even who speedrun other Final Fantasies, agree that this is one of the best Final Fantasy speed games. It's a very, very good speedrun. I, per I personally think the entire trilogy are good speedruns. Yeah, they uh, are. 13 2 has like some stupid RNG. <laughs> not as all, stupid all as not as stupid as FF9, because FF9 is like <laughs> takes the crown. <laughs> yeah. Alright, we're about to do the Actually, next boss. Actually, both games that we showcased today have, have are really good speed games. Okay, so where's my ether soul that I don't accidentally use it? Alright. <laughs> That's not something I did recently. Because I usually want to activate the shrouds during these jumps for optimization. Oops. Okay, but now I have I no idea if my decep lasts long enough. So we're about to fight Bandersnatch and Jabberwocky, okay. which are essentially a powered up version of the Chapter 6 boss, Enki and Enlil. Um, one of them heavily uh, resists magic, and one of them is completely immune to physical. Now, you're 
probably aware by now of which one of those is the bigger problem. <laughs> um, so the one that's immune to physical, uh, we just have to deal with with another summon. So we're going to imperil it to boost our chaining, stagger it. Oh, he actually doesn't have enough uh, TP right it's now. Fine. Okay, there. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes if you if you get a really good PC2 fight, sometimes you don't you don't have enough. You, when you, you don't regenerate to. enough TP, but you can just barely make up the difference in the fight before I you actually breath. need I it. Play, I play this very safe now because he does a big move. This one that I do not want to tank. <laughs> <laughs> like the main goal is usually to like not have this happen at all and like leave the summon early enough that it's fine to do so. But with how late I had to summon, yeah. That's just the safer way. Yeah, Jabberwocky, he he is on it. We are, we have to deal with him on a timer because he's going to do two physicals again and then Breath of the Beast again. Yeah. And Breath of the Beast will kill Vanilla P. Targus there. Thankfully, he's targeting Snow, so this is a completely free fight. I love the string, by the way. <laughs> so after after use yeah, you have a really good chain you just queue up Aurora to lock him in the air and make sure he is not allowed oh. to use oh well then it he survives well yeah, yeah. Sentinel. yeah so a little backup but it's fine that's and why I keep the mystic just, tower yeah yeah yeah, yeah. and we need us at actually attacking <laughs> <laughs> I really like her weapon, actually. I think it's yeah, it's super a shame cool. we don't get to see her physical attack much. If you want to see her physical attack, yeah, we saw do all missions. <laughs> <laughs> you have a whole lot of seven minutes of Vanille's physical <laughs> attacks. <laughs> but yeah, uh, the, the advantage of doing the, the tireless is that I don't have to do tireless now because I already have it, as I said. So I could do the first slot and the fifth slot in the previous menu. And now when I have to go to the third anyways, I just do the second on, while I'm on it. So that way it's just like significantly better because I don't just like now do this and this and then we default this. So it basically does not really lose your inputs. And Zero found that out. <laughs> Again. Uh, do so we shout him out already? So Zero is one of the wizards of Final Fantasy XIII running. I mean, he's starting to run last, last year. He's an extremely good RPG player. He runs... 13, he also runs oh. Suikoden, I think that's yeah, how you pronounce Suikoden. that. Yeah, does not work. Yeah. Oh, it does work. Okay. Read. Here's oh, a hard. cool hitbox. You can actually just run through his legs. <laughs> <laughs> the first time I saw that, I was also a, a bit baffled because, like, how? But it makes sense because Vanilla is small enough and you have a decept, so he's not really noticing your presence. <laughs> All right. Like, this fight can be very scary if you're unlucky. We need debuffs. We need deep protect. Yeah. If we get deep protect, the fight is easy. If you don't get deep protect, you might die. This is also the reason we lead Vanille, because that is just to maximize the chance for deep protect. Yeah, she, if she was left to her own devices, she would try to inflict both deep protect and D shell. We only care about deep protect, so. This is good. Got it. We wait for Saz to cast in fire on all three. We just heal Snow and Saz back up to make sure they both have adrenaline, and now it's just a matter of um, whittling down his HP. You just use Mountain Contempt again, you nice. reapply Deep Protect with it, and hope he doesn't one-shot Snow. That actually looks and very good. Yeah. Got this Deep Protect quickly so again. Far. That should be a kill, because I can renew now to keep him in Adrenaline after this. And then they should kill. Yeah. So that's, that's basically how you always want this fight to go. Yeah, that was smooth. This fight can troll you very, very, very hard. <laughs> and it likes to happen on PB pace as well. Same <laughs> as for the next guy. <laughs> Same for the next guy. This, like, this, out of these three fights, the next one, it, it used to be kind of free, and now it's actually really, really scary. Yeah, so um, we're going to fight another one of these uh, kind of palette swaps of the uh, the Proud Clad slash Ushum Gull Subjugator. Yeah, we call this guy Ushu 7. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's just recolorings, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so he starts out in his aerial form. Uh, in his aerial form, he is completely immune to debuffs. Um, in... Hey, Continue, continue. Um, and so we can't really do all that much damage to him. Uh, the current strat is thereby to 
stagger him really quickly without much chain duration so that the stagger ends as quickly as possible because after this, uh, you've staggered him once and he's recovered from it, he actually triggers to go into his ground form. And then since in that form we can debuff him, um, we can kill him even without doing much damage in that first stagger. Um, the downside of this is that it does become actually kind of hard to kill him in, in the stagger afterwards, whereas before when we were actually doing a bunch of damage in the first stagger, it was relatively free. Um, other than that, uh, ideally we try to keep a lot of interruption on this guy. Hopefully. Um, he actually... I ideally we s just stun lock him from start to finish. We have a full finish. interruption strat, but it's not completely consist consistent yeah. because it heavily depends on debuffs. But yeah. And also, if he slows me or not, I don't want to see slows at all. Yeah, his regular attack here, Ice Grenades, can uh, cast slow on your party members, which will dispel your haste. Uh, or actually, sometimes just straight up inflict slow. Yeah. yeah. I have to do two attacks now, and I don't want them to slow me, and then it's fine. Okay, nice, that should work now. From now on, it's pretty much just get debuffs and don't mess up. So, he is going to keep you to use blitz and attack in order to make sure that uh, he keeps Tiamat interrupted until Snow's next string. Because attack keeps him interrupted for a fair bit of time, actually. Uh, after this tiger runs out, he's going to coordinate cold blood with Snow strikes. Like, again, it's like, just like in Sith. Uh, magic doesn't really interrupt anything, but strikes do as long as you have vigilance. So this is very precise timing with ATB refreshes, just general shifts, trying to coordinate how many strikes Snow does in with uh, the start of the... Uh, oh, he broke But he got all debuffs, so it's fine. Okay, funny. yeah, this is still good. Yeah, once you lose the stun lock, it's almost impossible to get it yeah, back. Yeah, but this is a kill. Like, I got all debuffs that I need. Yeah. yeah. Getting um, getting the interruption is especially nice because his attacks here dispel your buffs. Uh, if you get to keep the buffs for the damaging part here, it's really nice, but we don't really have them. We still have our defensive buffs. Yeah, <laughs> but those are not <laughs> really matter. They don't really so. matter. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, the first ones that get dispelled are the most important ones, so... But uh, that way, like, if he didn't break out, like, actually with the way that I got the debuffs, if he didn't break out, like, in that, like, half of a second where I got breathing room, that would have been a perfect fight. Yeah, that would have been really, really good. <laughs> oh, well. Almost had it. You can just play Marunji. A bad game. <laughs> it's still a really good fight. Way yeah, better than cool. I get in my PB attempts. <laughs> yeah, we, abs we absolutely take those. 100%. All right, so this is the final menu in the game. We are going to sell the Imperial Armlet that we just got to buy the Shrouds that we need to complete the game and two Libra Scopes that we're go also going to need just so we can save the TP uh, for Libra. We're going to use it to do something else. And um, uh, yeah, sometimes you can do an extra Crystarium here to get more stats. Obviously, Kai is a pro, pro gamer, so he's not going to do any of that. I might get it if I'm walled here. But uh. should not happen. <laughs> <laughs> right. And now it is once again time to fight, as Kaya called him, the big evil guy. The big evil guy. This is actually the, the uh, tightest fight of the three. Like, it's the one that's technically the most scripted, but also the one that uh, is the most likely to be not killed during the stagger. <laughs> yeah, I think this is the hardest fight in the run. Yeah. <laughs> personally. Well, for, for probably for runners who have learned the game already, this is the hardest, yes. Um, it's not the hardest to learn, but it's like the hardest to execute. Sure. All right, so again, this guy is a resistance to all elements. We need to seek in peril on him so we can actually chain effectively. Uh, so Vanille has to land in peril and deprotect before uh, a certain time passes. Otherwise, we either have to retry the fight or take a much slower fight. This is not fight. looking this good. This is not looking Vanille, good. Vanille, you are great as always. Yeah. Thanks, Vanille. Yeah, we're gonna go for the backup here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we got the shell though. <laughs> nice. The one we don't care about. <laughs> That's totally useful. I also have to renew here. What a roll. Uh, okay. This looks very bad. Don't and now, you know, we need Vanille to land both these debuffs before he staggers. Otherwise, okay. okay. That, that should be fine. So we need to stay here in the tireless for a bit. Okay. Uh, because 
Uh, he has two attacks that he can use. Ultima and, Tyl and um, Thanatosian, Thanatosian laughter. laughter. And he will use Thanatosian Laughter only if you can put, uh, drop his HP a certain amount before this timer ticks down. Ooh. No fair. Okay, okay, okay. That's no fringe ward. That was a mess up. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, that's this. this uh, uh, Phoenix down. You've got the extra damage, it yeah, might yeah. be workable. I try this. We'll see. So now that uh, we have. Hopefully, you have enough duration. We'll see. But yeah. The idea is with. If I, don't, if I die here, then whatever. I can get better orange in the next try. Yeah, I was really unlucky. And I missed this refresh. Okay, I don't think I kill now, but we'll see. So the idea is with Imperial, you just cold blood. And uh, now we push him past the tar the, the Thanatosian laughter threshold. Um, th this will look very scary, but this is a percentage yeah, type move. Uh, yeah, this does uh, not yeah, look good. Elixir is orphan. <laughs> really? Yep. We're not dying here. Alright, so <laughs> we are going to do another backup for Orphan 2, for Orphan 1. This is going to be very interesting endgame now. It's got quite a lot of health left though, so this is still going to take a Yeah, I think bit. you do need to restagger. But I, I inflict debuffs late, so they will not expire. Yeah, they won't expire, but you need to restagger this. And maybe tank the next Ultima as well. Oh god. Don't no. die now. It will be so anticlimactic. Yeah. Come on, Bart, help. It's fine. Oh, he should die now. Yeah, he's dead now. After this. Once again, this attack can't kill us. It's percentage based. Yeah. Hey, we lost deep protect. <laughs> uh, okay. <laughs> that was a fight. <laughs> I mean, it's better than dying, even with Elixilis now. Um, I'm one of the few who practiced the Elixilis strat uh, here. Yeah, just be careful not to muscle memory Elixir fight. Um, I might die here to be Do honest not because this fight summon. is hard. This fight is hard. This fight is pretty hard. All right, so usually we would tank Merciless Judgment by summoning Green Hilder because we are on a completely different fight now. We just don't do that. We are going to coordinate um, shifts to Consolidation in order to tank Orphan's attacks with the uh, shifts to Malevolence in order to set up our buffs. Uh, and then we are going to work on um, chaining, applying debuffs on Orphan, and um, working on staggering, uh, staggering it, and um, hopefully by the time we're done we have all the debuffs that we need and we can just go to Tireless Charge and try to kill that it. That was a very late provoke, I don't know if I should play the safe now. Normally we would have an elixir for this fight and we would be able to, in this part of the fight, kind of use some of our TP. Um, to heal us up and then use the elixir to get the TP back for the latter part of the fight. In this version, because we don't have the elixir, we need to play a lot more defensive, uh, get more heals in via Vanille's uh, medic, and then uh, keep all of our TP for the second part of the fight. Yeah, it looks good if I get debuffs. So we have haste on everybody, we have bravery and an, and an end spell on Saz and Snow. So now we just really want Vanille to land um, Deep Protect. I was yeah. Deep, yeah, we want Deep Protect, in Peril, and Poison. Do you want to explain why Poison is so broken in this fight? So Poison uh, kills an enemy from I full HP in exactly five minutes. So it does 1% uh, every three seconds. Is that math correct? Yes. Um, so that's pretty good, and this is a really long fight. And he has a lot of HP. I want poison now. Vanille help. Okay. Okay. So that we should be good now. Have to send buffer blitz probably, but yeah, we didn't mention it by the way, but we uh, we got um, we got Saz as Sentinel in this chapter to tank some of these final boss attacks because they really do so much damage that having two Sentinels is just kind of nice. It's very worth it. Nice. That's an oh, insta-kill so move. Nice. 
That, uh, that right there is an insta-kill move. He did it on Vanille. He will always do it on Vanille there, as long as we make sure to keep her in medic role. It's just a weird quirk of his AI. Uh, it's a good thing that it works like that, because otherwise there would be a risk of him just doing it on Saz, and then there's a 50% chance of just dying and there's nothing you can do. Well then. Mm. Uh, at this point of the fight, we no longer really have the resources to keep up with his damage, so we now summon... No DZ Ray. No DZ Ray. Dude! Oh, no. Oh, boy. This is going to be fun. This is going to be fun. <laughs> this is the only move that is really bad to get with this. I think I killed because I have 21, but... Okay, so that that <laughs> attack... Uh, we are doing backups over backups yeah. over backups, basically. <laughs> so at this point, it would have probably been quicker to die on Bard. Yeah, so th th that attack yeah. right there would have just killed uh, Saz and gotten rid of the summon, and then we would have had to deal with his regular attacks for too long for us to reasonably be able to survive. At this point, we are just waiting for Poison to damage him down. We aren't really doing much with this. We're just stalling and trying to stay in the Gestalt as yeah. long as and possible. This, and this is why Poison is so important in this fight. Okay, yeah. he, might, he gets to do like one or two attacks. Yeah, it's, it's not going to be so. quite enough to completely stall him out, but uh, hopefully we'll make it work. It, we'll, we'll see. Well, this takes a bit. Like, he gets to do one attack. If that's Progentory Wrath on Saz, it's a 50-50 if I survive. Everything else, I'm killing him. So, we'll see. This is the big Monka moment. Like, look at this. It's not on Saz, okay. Okay, we it's win. on Vanille, you're we fine. And it didn't kill, okay, so we would have won anyway. Yay! Hey, it's dead. Four minute fight! <laughs> Honestly, that, that might have still been faster than dying on Bart 3 that late. Maybe. <laughs> Four Maybe. minute fight there. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty right. bad, though. So yeah. the, th the very last fight of the game is a victory lap compared to the other two. Um, the gimmick, This is a gimmicky fight. It opens up by d using Doom on Saz, on your party leader, and it's completely immune to damage until you stagger it. So our goal here is just we use an attack to show that it's immune to physical and force no to stay in the back because this red aura it uses inflicts slow on proximity so we are far enough right now that it doesn't slow anybody and we want to stay this far including dumbass no we will just run straight forward <laughs> if we don't tell him that it's immune to physical yep and like many bosses in the run uh, we basically stagger him and start interrupting him before he starts doing any of his really dangerous attacks he got that off that's bad he got that off though that's unfortunate normally you stagger consulate it's fine when you got one debuff out i just play the safe you up here uh, then get the second one be careful you still need in peril yeah I mean, so, I just played it safe yeah, not die This first. guy is very, very frail, so as soon as Vanille gets in peril going, we have uh, end bu we have end buffs on both Saz and Snow, and we are just hit it's not like, the oh, both of them are hitting for a cap, so this, die die this guy dies very yeah, fast as soon as you have debuffs going on him. All right, we did it, and that is Final Fantasy 13 any percent. Yeah. GG. So, and time. time. <laughs> oh, sub 444. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, you were underestimate with a blindfolded fight. Very happy about that. <laughs> <laughs> that that was a good run. That we just run. like that put in on the fly. Yeah, that's a pretty good run. Like this is better than three out of my practice runs that I did for the relay. <laughs> Nice. So, um, do you sing? Do you do you want to sing? I my think hand? we have. I you think have, we have a copyright you ha you have to sing loud enough to completely no. kill the boss. <laughs> <laughs> I also think it takes too long because there's still a run after us, right? Yeah, let's. Yeah. Uh, um, I think we'll just throw it over. But yeah, thank you very much for uh, giving us the opportunity to do this instead of FF8, because <laughs> FF8 is on stream one. Um, yeah, we, we, Kaya and I kind of had to rush Phil in for this. Yeah. Luckily, we had some runs that we were both in practice yeah, with. Yeah, because we practiced for the upcoming Final Fantasy really? relay, so we didn't really have to yeah, do this. Yeah, if you really um, like Final Fantasy games and you want to watch them being played back to back to back, <laughs> 
on a relay team setting, like the Final Fantasy Relay is amazing. You get to see a lot of talented runners just showcasing the very best that they can do. Yeah. There's a lot of friendly banter. It's seriously just a whole lot of it's fun. It's organized by the Final Fantasy community. It happens at the end of August and everyone who wants to can check that out too. Yeah. And yeah, thank you to ESA for giving me the opportunity. I hope you guys enjoyed that. Uh, I tried my best. And yeah. Okay. Your best was pretty good. That's it for us, I guess. Yeah. Good night, everybody. Yeah. Bye, everybody.